The Book of Alma, the Son of Alma, the account of Alma, who was the son of Alma, the first and chief judge over the people of Nephi, and also the high priest over the church, an account of the reign of the judges, and the wars and contentions among the people, and also an account of a war between the Nephites and the Lamanites, according to the record of Alma, the first and chief judge. Chapter 1 Nehor teaches false doctrines, establishes a church, introduces priestcraft, and slays Gideon. Nehor is executed for his crimes. Priestcrafts and persecutions spread among the people. The priests support themselves, the people care for the poor, and the church prospers. About 91 through 88 B.C. Now it came to pass that in the first year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, from this time forward, King Mosiah, having gone the way of all the earth, having warred a good warfare, walking uprightly before God, leaving none to reign in his stead, nevertheless he had established laws, and they were acknowledged by the people. Therefore they were obliged to abide by the laws which he had made. And it came to pass that in the first year of the reign of Alma in the judgment seat, there was a man brought before him to be judged a man who was large, and was noted for his much strength, and he had gone about among the people, preaching to them that which he termed to be the word of God, bearing down against the church, declaring unto the people that every priest and teacher ought to become popular, and they ought not to labor with their hands, but that they ought to be supported by the people. And he also testified unto the people that all mankind should be saved at the last day, and that they need not fear nor tremble, but that they might lift up their heads and rejoice. For the Lord had created all men, and had also redeemed all men, and in the end all men should have eternal life. And it came to pass that he did teach these things so much that many did believe on his words even so many that they began to support him and give him money. And he began to be lifted up in the pride of his heart and to wear very costly apparel, yea, and even began to establish a church after the manner of his preaching. And it came to pass, as he was going, to preach to those who believed on his word. He met a man who belonged to the church of God, yea, even one of their teachers. And he began to contend with him sharply, that he might lead away the people of the church. But the man withstood him, admonishing him with the words of God. Now the name of the man was Gideon, and it was he who was an instrument in the hands of God in delivering the people of Limhi out of bondage. Now because Gideon withstood him with the words of God, he was wroth with Gideon, and drew his sword and began to smite him. Now Gideon, being stricken with many years, Therefore he was not able to withstand his blows. Therefore he was slain by the sword. And the man who slew him was taken by the people of the church and was brought before Alma to be judged according to the crimes which he had committed. And it came to pass that he stood before Alma and pled for himself with much boldness. But Alma said unto him, Behold, this is the first time that priestcraft has been introduced among this people. And behold, thou art not only guilty of priestcraft, but hast endeavored to enforce it by the sword. And were priestcraft to be enforced among this people, it would prove their entire destruction. And thou hast shed the blood of a righteous man, yea, a man who has done much good among this people. And were we to spare thee, his blood would come upon us for vengeance. Therefore, thou art condemned to die, according to the law which has been given us by Mosiah, our last king. And it has been acknowledged by this people. Therefore, this people must abide by the law. And it came to pass that they took him, and his name was Nehor, and they carried him upon the top of the hill Manti, and there he was caused, or rather did acknowledge, between the heavens and the earth, that what he had taught to the people was contrary to the word of God. And there he suffered an ignominious death, 
Nevertheless, this did not put an end to the spreading of priestcraft through the land, for there were many who loved the vain things of the world, and they went forth preaching false doctrines. And this they did for the sake of riches and honor. Nevertheless, they durst not lie, if it were known, for fear of the law, for liars were punished. Therefore, they pretended to preach according to their belief. And now the law could have no power on any man for his belief. And they durst not steal for fear of the law, for such were punished. Neither durst they rob, nor murder, for he that murdered was punished unto death. But it came to pass that whosoever did not belong to the church of God began to persecute those that did belong to the church of God, and had taken upon them the name of Christ. Yea, they did persecute them, and afflict them with all manner of words, and this because of their humility, because they were not proud in their own eyes, and because they did impart the word of God, one with another, without money, and without price. Now there was a strict law among the people of the church, that there should not any man, belonging to the church, arise and persecute those that did not belong to the church, and that there should be no persecution among themselves. Nevertheless, there were many among them who began to be proud, and began to contend warmly with their adversaries, even unto blows. Yea, they would smite one another with their fists. Now this was in the second year of the reign of Alma, and it was a cause of much affliction to the church. Yea, it was the cause of much trial with the church, for the hearts of many were hardened, and their names were blotted out, that they were remembered no more among the people of God. And also, many withdrew themselves from among them. Now this was a great trial to those that did stand fast in the faith. Nevertheless, they were steadfast and immovable in keeping the commandments of God. And they bore with patience the persecution which was heaped upon them. And when the priests left their labor to impart the word of God unto the people, the people also left their labors to hear the word of God. And when the priest had imparted unto them the word of God, they all returned again diligently unto their labors. And the priest, not esteeming himself above his hearers, for the preacher was no better than the hearer, neither was the teacher any better than the learner. And thus they were all equal, and they did all labor, every man according to his strength. And they did impart of their substance, every man according to that which he had, to the poor and the needy, and the sick and the afflicted. And they did not wear costly apparel, yet they were neat and comely. And thus they did establish the affairs of the church, and thus they began to have continual peace again, notwithstanding all their persecutions. And now, because of the steadiness of the church, they began to be exceedingly rich, having abundance of all things whatsoever they stood in need, an abundance of flocks and herds, and fatlings of every kind, and also abundance of grain, and of gold, and of silver, and of precious things, and abundance of silk and fine twined linen, and all manner of good homely cloth. And thus, in their prosperous circumstances, they did not send away any who were naked, or that were hungry, or that were athirst, or that were sick, or that had not been nourished. And they did not set their hearts upon riches. Therefore, they were liberal to all, both old and young, both bond and free, both male and female, whether out of the church or in the church, having no respect to persons as to those who stood in need. And thus, they did prosper and become far more wealthy than those who did not belong to their church. For those who did not belong to their church did indulge themselves in sorceries, and in idolatry or idleness, and in babblings, and in envyings and strife, wearing costly apparel, being lifted up in the pride of their own eyes, persecuting, lying, thieving, robbing, committing whoredoms, and murdering, and all manner of wickedness. Nevertheless, the law was put in force upon all those who did transgress it, inasmuch as it was possible. And it came to pass that by thus exercising the law upon them, 
every man suffering according to that which he had done, they became more still, and durst not commit any wickedness if it were known. Therefore there was much peace among the people of Nephi until the fifth year of the reign of the judges. Chapter 2 Amlicai seeks to be king, and is rejected by the voice of the people. His followers make him king. The Amlicites make war on the Nephites and are defeated. The Lamanites and Amlicites join forces and are defeated. Alma slays Amlicai, about 87 B.C. And it came to pass, in the commencement of the fifth year of their reign, there began to be a contention among the people. For a certain man, being called Amlicai, he being a very cunning man, yea, a wise man as to the wisdom of the world, he being after the order of the man that slew Gideon by the sword, who was executed according to the law. Now this Amlicai had, by his cunning, drawn away much people after him, even so much that they began to be very powerful, and they began to endeavor to establish Amlicai to be a king over the people. Now this was alarming to the people of the church, and also to all those who had not been drawn away after the persuasions of Amlicai. For they knew that according to their law, that such things must be established by the voice of the people. Therefore, if it were possible that Amlicai should gain the voice of the people, he, being a wicked man, would deprive them of their rights and privileges of the church, for it was his intent to destroy the church of God. And it came to pass that the people assembled themselves together throughout all the land, every man according to his mind, whether it were for or against Amlicai, in separate bodies, having much dispute and wonderful contentions one with another. And thus they did assemble themselves together to cast in their voices concerning the matter, and they were laid before the judges. And it came to pass that the voice of the people came against Amlicai, that he was not made king over the people. Now this did cause much joy in the hearts of those who were against him, but Amlicai did stir up those who were in his favor to anger against those who were not in his favor. And it came to pass that they gathered themselves together and did consecrate Amlicai to be their king. Now when Amlicai was made king over them, he commanded them that they should take up arms against their brethren. And this he did, that he might subject them to him. Now the people of Amlicai were distinguished by the name of Amlicai, being called Amlicites and the remainder were called Nephites, or the people of God. Therefore the people of the Nephites were aware of the intent of the Amlicites, and therefore they did prepare to meet them. Yea, they did arm themselves with swords, and with scimitars, and with bows, and with arrows, and with stones, and with slings, and with all manner of weapons of war, of every kind. And thus they were prepared to meet the Amlicites at the time of their coming. And there were appointed captains, and higher captains, and chief captains, according to their numbers. And it came to pass that Amlicai did arm his men with all manner of weapons of war of every kind. And he also appointed rulers and leaders over his people, to lead them to war against their brethren. And it came to pass that the Amlicites came upon the hill Amnihu, which was east of the river Sidon, which ran by the land of Zarahemla, and there they began to make war with the Nephites. Now Alma, being the chief judge and the governor of the people of Nephi, therefore he went up with his people, yea, with his captains and chief captains, yea, at the head of his armies, against the Amlicites to battle. And they began to slay the Amlicites upon the hill east of Sidon, and the Amlicites did contend with the Nephites with great strength, insomuch that many of the Nephites did fall before the Amlicites. Nevertheless, the Lord did strengthen the hand of the Nephites, that they slew the Amlicites with great slaughter, that they began to flee before them. And it came to pass that the Nephites did pursue the Amlicites all that day, and did slay them with much slaughter, insomuch that there were slain of the Amlicites twelve thousand five hundred thirty and two souls, and there were slain of the Nephites six thousand five hundred sixty and two souls.
And it came to pass that when Alma could pursue the Amlicites no longer, he caused that his people should pitch their tents in the valley of Gideon, the valley being called after that Gideon who was slain by the hand of Nehor with the sword. And in this valley the Nephites did pitch their tents for the night. And Alma sent spies to follow the remnant of the Amlicites, that he might know of their plans and their plots, whereby he might guard himself against them, that he might preserve his people from being destroyed. Now those whom he had sent out to watch the camp of the Amlicites were called Zeram and Amnor and Manti and Limher. These were they who went out with their men to watch the camp of the Amlicites. And it came to pass that on the morrow they returned into the camp of the Nephites in great haste, being greatly astonished and struck with much fear, saying, Behold, we followed the camp of the Amlicites, and to our great astonishment, in the land of Minan, above the land of Zarahemla, in the course of the land of Nephi, we saw a numerous host of the Lamanites, and behold, the Amlicites have joined them, and they are upon our brethren in that land, and they are fleeing before them with their flocks and their wives and their children towards our city. And except we make haste, they obtain possession of our city, and our fathers and our wives and our children be slain. And it came to pass that the people of Nephi took their tents and departed out of the valley of Gideon towards their city, which was the city of Zarahemla. And behold, as they were crossing the river Sidon, the Lamanites and the Amlicites, being as numerous almost as it were, as the sands of the sea, came upon them to destroy them. Nevertheless, the Nephites being strengthened by the hand of the Lord, having prayed mightily to him that he would deliver them out of the hands of their enemies, therefore the Lord did hear their cries and did strengthen them. And the Lamanites and the Amlicites did fall before them. And it came to pass that Alma fought with Amlici with the sword face to face, and they did contend mightily one with another. And it came to pass that Alma, being a man of God, being exercised with much faith, cried, saying, O Lord, have mercy and spare my life, that I may be an instrument in thy hands to save and preserve this people. Now when Alma had said these words, he contended again with Amlici, and he was strengthened, insomuch that he slew Amlici with the sword. And he also contended with the king of the Lamanites. But the king of the Lamanites fled back from before Alma, and sent his guards to contend with Alma. But Alma, with his guards, contended with the guards of the king of the Lamanites until he slew and drove them back. And thus he cleared the ground, or rather the bank, which was on the west of the river Sidon, throwing the bodies of the Lamanites who had been slain into the waters of Sidon, that thereby his people might have room to cross and contend with the Lamanites and the Amlicites on the west side of the river Sidon. And it came to pass that when they had all crossed the river Sidon, that the Lamanites and the Amlicites began to flee before them, notwithstanding they were so numerous that they could not be numbered. And they fled before the Nephites towards the wilderness which was west and north, away beyond the borders of the land. And the Nephites did pursue them with their might, and did slay them. Yea, they were met on every hand, and slain and driven, until they were scattered on the west and on the north, until they had reached the wilderness which was called Hermounts. And it was that part of the wilderness which was infested by wild and ravenous beasts. And it came to pass that many died in the wilderness of their wounds, and were devoured by those beasts, and also the vultures of the air. And their bones have been found, and have been heaped up on the earth. Chapter 3 The Amlicites had marked themselves according to the prophetic word. The Lamanites had been cursed for their rebellion. Men bring their own curses upon themselves. The Nephites defeat another Lamanite army about 87 through 86 B.C. And it came to pass that the Nephites who were not slain by the weapons of war, after having buried those who had been slain, now the number of the slain were not numbered because of the greatness of their number, after they had finished burying their dead, they all returned to their lands and to their houses 
and their wives, and their children. Now many women and children had been slain with the sword, and also many of their flocks and their herds, and also many of their fields of grain were destroyed, for they were trodden down by the hosts of men. And now, as many of the Lamanites and the Amlicites who had been slain upon the bank of the river Sidon were cast into the waters of Sidon, and behold, their bones are in the depths of the sea, and they are many. And the Amlicites were distinguished from the Nephites, for they had marked themselves with red in their foreheads after the manner of the Lamanites. Nevertheless, they had not shorn their heads like unto the Lamanites. Now the heads of the Lamanites were shorn, and they were naked, save it were skin which was girded about their loins, and also their armor which was girded about them, and their bows, and their arrows, and their stones, and their slings, and so forth. And the skins of the Lamanites were dark, according to the mark which was set upon their fathers, which was a curse upon them because of their transgression and their rebellion against their brethren, who consisted of Nephi, Jacob, and Joseph, and Sam, who were just and holy men. And their brethren sought to destroy them, therefore they were cursed. And the Lord God set a mark upon them, yea, upon Laman and Lemuel, and also the sons of Ishmael, and Ishmaelitish women. And this was done, that their seed might be distinguished from the seed of their brethren, that thereby the Lord God might preserve his people, that they might not mix and believe in incorrect traditions which would prove their destruction. And it came to pass, that whosoever did mingle his seed with that of the Lamanites, did bring the same curse upon his seed. Therefore, whosoever suffered himself to be led away by the Lamanites was called under that head, and there was a mark set upon him. And it came to pass, that whosoever would not believe in the tradition of the Lamanites, but believed those records which were brought out of the land of Jerusalem, and also in the tradition of their fathers, which were correct, who believed in the commandments of God and kept them, were called the Nephites, or the people of Nephi, from that time forth. And it is they who have kept the records which are true of their people, and also of the people of the Lamanites. Now we will return again to the Amlicites, for they also had a mark set upon them. Yea, they set the mark upon themselves. Yea, even a mark of red upon their foreheads. Thus the word of God is fulfilled. For these are the words which he said to Nephi, Behold, the Lamanites have I cursed, and I will set a mark on them, that they and their seed may be separated from thee and thy seed, from this time henceforth and forever, except they repent of their wickedness, and turn to me that I may have mercy upon them. And again, I will set a mark upon him that mingleth his seed with thy brethren, that they may be cursed also. And again, I will set a mark upon him that biteth against thee and thy seed. And again, I say he that departeth from thee shall no more be called thy seed. And I will bless thee, and whomsoever shall be called thy seed, henceforth and forever. And these were the promises of the Lord unto Nephi and to his seed. Now the Amlicites knew not that they were fulfilling the words of God when they began to mark themselves in their foreheads. Nevertheless, they had come out in open rebellion against God. Therefore, it was expedient that the curse should fall upon them. Now I would that ye should see that they brought upon themselves the curse. And even so doth every man that is cursed bring upon himself his own condemnation. Now it came to pass that not many days after the battle which was fought in the land of Zarahemla by the Lamanites and the Amlicites, that there was another army of the Lamanites came in upon the people of Nephi, in the same place where the first army met the Amlicites. And it came to pass that there was an army sent to drive them out of their land. Now Alma, himself being afflicted with a wound, did not go up to battle at this time against the Lamanites, but he sent up a numerous army against them. And they went up and slew many of the Lamanites, and drove the remainder of them out of the borders of their land. And then they returned again, and began to establish peace in the land, being troubled no more for a time with their enemies. Now all these things were done, yea, 
All these wars and contentions were commenced and ended in the fifth year of the reign of the judges. And in one year were thousands and tens of thousands of souls sent to the eternal world, that they might reap their rewards according to their works, whether they were good or whether they were bad, to reap eternal happiness or eternal misery, according to the spirit which they listed to obey, whether it be a good spirit or a bad one. For every man receiveth wages of him whom he listeth to obey, and this according to the words of the Spirit of prophecy. Therefore, let it be according to the truth. And thus ended the fifth year of the reign of the judges. Chapter 4 Alma baptizes thousands of converts. Iniquity enters the church, and the church's progress is hindered. Nephiha is appointed chief judge. Alma, as high priest, devotes himself to the ministry. About 86 through 83 B.C. Now it came to pass, in the sixth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, there were no contentions nor wars in the land of Zarahemla, but the people were afflicted, yea, greatly afflicted for the loss of their brethren, and also for the loss of their flocks and herds, and also for the loss of their fields of grain, which were trodden underfoot and destroyed by the Lamanites. And so great were their afflictions that every soul had cause to mourn. And they believed that it was the judgments of God sent upon them because of their wickedness and their abominations. Therefore, they were awakened to a remembrance of their duty. And they began to establish the church more fully. Yea, and many were baptized in the waters of Sidon and were joined to the church of God. Yea, they were baptized by the hand of Alma who had been consecrated the high priest over the people of the church by the hand of his father, Alma. And it came to pass, in the seventh year of the reign of the judges, there were about 3,500 souls that united themselves to the church of God and were baptized. And thus ended the seventh year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And there was continual peace in all that time. And it came to pass, in the eighth year of the reign of the judges, that the people of the church began to wax proud because of their exceeding riches and their fine silks and their fine twined linen and because of their many flocks and herds and their gold and their silver and all manner of precious things which they had obtained by their industry. And in all these things were they lifted up in the pride of their eyes, for they began to wear very costly apparel. Now this was the cause of much affliction to Alma. Yea, and to many of the people whom Alma had consecrated to be teachers and priests and elders over the church. Yea, many of them were sorely grieved for the wickedness which they saw had begun to be among their people. For they saw, and beheld with great sorrow, that the people of the church began to be lifted up in the pride of their eyes, and to set their hearts upon riches and upon the vain things of the world, that they began to be scornful one towards another and they began to persecute those that did not believe according to their own will and pleasure. And thus, in this eighth year of the reign of the judges, there began to be great contentions among the people of the church. Yea, there were envyings and strife and malice and persecutions and pride, even to exceed the pride of those who did not belong to the church of God. And thus ended the eighth year of the reign of the judges. And the wickedness of the church was a great stumbling block to those who did not belong to the church. And thus the church began to fail in its progress. And it came to pass, in the commencement of the ninth year, Alma saw the wickedness of the church. And he saw also that the example of the church began to lead those who were unbelievers on from one piece of iniquity to another, thus bringing on the destruction of the people. Yea, he saw great inequality among the people, some lifting themselves up with their pride, despising others, turning their backs upon the needy and the naked and those who were hungry and those who were athirst and those who were sick and afflicted. Now this was a great cause for lamentations among the people, while others were abasing themselves, succoring those who stood in need of their succor, such as imparting their substance to the poor and the needy, feeding the hungry, 
and suffering all manner of afflictions for Christ's sake, who should come according to the spirit of prophecy, looking forward to that day, thus retaining a remission of their sins, being filled with great joy because of the resurrection of the dead, according to the will and power and deliverance of Jesus Christ from the bands of death. And now it came to pass that Alma, having seen the afflictions of the humble followers of God, and the persecutions which were heaped upon them by the remainder of his people, and seeing all their inequality, began to be very sorrowful. Nevertheless, the Spirit of the Lord did not fail him, and he selected a wise man who was among the elders of the church, and gave him power according to the voice of the people, that he might have power to enact laws according to the laws which had been given, and to put them in force according to the wickedness and the crimes of the people. Now this man's name was Nephiha, and he was appointed chief judge, and he sat in the judgment seat to judge and to govern the people. Now Alma did not grant unto him the office of being high priest over the church, but he retained the office of high priest unto himself, but he delivered the judgment seat unto Nephiha. And this he did, that he himself might go forth among his people, or among the people of Nephi, that he might preach the word of God unto them, to stir them up in remembrance of their duty, and that he might pull down, by the word of God, all the pride and craftiness, and all the contentions which were among his people, seeing no way that he might reclaim them, save it were in bearing down in pure testimony against them. And thus, in the commencement of the ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, Alma delivered up the judgment seat to Nephiha, and confined himself wholly to the high priesthood of the holy order of God, to the testimony of the word, according to the spirit of revelation and prophecy. The words which Alma, the high priest according to the holy order of God, delivered to the people in their cities and villages throughout the land. Beginning with Chapter 5 Chapter 5 To gain salvation, men must repent and keep the commandments, be born again, cleanse their garments through the blood of Christ, be humble and strip themselves of pride and envy, and do the works of righteousness. The Good Shepherd calls His people. Those who do evil works are children of the devil. Alma testifies of the truth of his doctrine and commands men to repent. The names of the righteous will be written in the Book of Life. About 83 B.C. Now it came to pass that Alma began to deliver the word of God unto the people, first in the land of Zarahemla, and from thence throughout all the land. And these are the words which he spake to the people in the church which was established in the city of Zarahemla, according to his own record, saying, I, Alma, having been consecrated by my father, Alma, to be a high priest over the church of God, he having power and authority from God to do these things, behold, I say unto you that he began to establish a church in the land which was in the borders of Nephi, yea, the land which was called the land of Mormon, yea, and he did baptize his brethren in the waters of Mormon. And behold, I say unto you, they were delivered out of the hands of the people of King Noah by the mercy and power of God. And behold, after that, they were brought into bondage by the hands of the Lamanites in the wilderness. Yea, I say unto you, they were in captivity. And again, the Lord did deliver them out of bondage by the power of his word. And we were brought into this land. And here we began to establish the church of God throughout this land also. And now behold, I say unto you, my brethren, you that belong to this church, have you sufficiently retained in remembrance the captivity of your fathers? Yea, and have you sufficiently retained in remembrance his mercy and long suffering towards them? And moreover, have ye sufficiently retained in remembrance that he has delivered their souls from hell? Behold, he changed their hearts. Yea, he awakened them out of a deep sleep, and they awoke unto God. Behold, they were in the midst of darkness. Nevertheless, their souls were illuminated by the light of the everlasting word. Yea, 
they were encircled about by the bands of death and the chains of hell, and an everlasting destruction did await them. And now I ask of you, my brethren, were they destroyed? Behold, I say unto you, Nay, they were not. And again I ask, Were the bands of death broken, and the chains of hell which encircled them about, were they loosed? I say unto you, Yea, they were loosed, and their souls did expand, and they did sing redeeming love. And I say unto you that they are saved. And now I ask of you, on what conditions are they saved? Yea, what grounds had they to hope for salvation? What is the cause of their being loosed from the bands of death, yea, and also the chains of hell? Behold, I can tell you. Did not my father Alma believe in the words which were delivered by the mouth of Abinadi? And was he not a holy prophet? Did he not speak the words of God? And my father Alma believed them? And according to his faith, there was a mighty change wrought in his heart. Behold, I say unto you that this is all true. And behold, he preached the word unto your fathers, and a mighty change was also wrought in their hearts, and they humbled themselves and put their trust in the true and living God. And behold, they were faithful until the end. Therefore, they were saved. And now behold, I ask of you, my brethren of the church, have ye spiritually been born of God? Have ye received his image in your countenances? Have ye experienced this mighty change in your hearts? Do ye exercise faith in the redemption of him who created you? Do you look forward with an eye of faith and view this mortal body raised in immortality and this corruption raised in incorruption to stand before God to be judged according to the deeds which have been done in the mortal body? I say unto you, Can you imagine to yourselves that ye hear the voice of the Lord, saying unto you in that day, Come unto me, ye blessed, for behold, your works have been the works of righteousness upon the face of the earth? Or do ye imagine to yourselves that ye can lie unto the Lord in that day, and say, Lord, our works have been righteous works upon the face of the earth, and that he will save you? Or otherwise, can ye imagine yourselves brought before the tribunal of God with your souls filled with guilt and remorse, having a remembrance of all your guilt, yea, a perfect remembrance of all your wickedness, yea, a remembrance that ye have set at defiance the commandments of God? I say unto you, can ye look up to God at that day with a pure heart and clean hands? I say unto you, can you look up, having the image of God engraven upon your countenances? I say unto you, can ye think of being saved when you have yielded yourselves to become subjects to the devil? I say unto you, ye will know at that day that ye cannot be saved. For there can no man be saved except his garments are washed white. Yea, his garments must be purified until they are cleansed from all stain through the blood of him of whom it has been spoken by our fathers, who should come to redeem his people from their sins. And now I ask of you, my brethren, how will any of you feel if you shall stand before the bar of God, having your garments stained with blood and all manner of filthiness? Behold, what will these things testify against you? Behold, will they not testify that ye are murderers? Yea, and also that ye are guilty of all manner of wickedness? Behold, my brethren, do ye suppose that such an one can have a place to sit down in the kingdom of God, with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob, and also all the holy prophets, whose garments are cleansed and are spotless, pure, and white? I say unto you, Nay, except ye make our Creator a liar from the beginning, or suppose that he is a liar from the beginning, Ye cannot suppose that such can have place in the kingdom of heaven. But they shall be cast out, for they are the children of the kingdom of the devil. And now behold, I say unto you, my brethren, if ye have experienced a change of heart, and if ye have felt to sing the song of redeeming love, I would ask, 
Can he feel so now? Have you walked, keeping yourselves blameless before God? Could ye say, if ye were called to die at this time, within yourselves, that ye have been sufficiently humble, that your garments have been cleansed and made white through the blood of Christ, who will come to redeem his people from their sins? Behold, are ye stripped of pride? I say unto you, if ye are not, ye are not prepared to meet God. Behold, ye must prepare quickly, for the kingdom of heaven is soon at hand, and such an one hath not eternal life. Behold, I say, is there one among you who is not stripped of envy? I say unto you that such an one is not prepared, and I would that he should prepare quickly, for the hour is close at hand, and he knoweth not when the time shall come for such an one is not found guiltless. And again I say unto you, Is there one among you that doth make a mock of his brother, or that heapeth upon him persecutions? Woe unto such an one, for he is not prepared, and the time is at hand that he must repent, or he cannot be saved. Yea, even woe unto all ye workers of iniquity. Repent, repent. For the Lord God hath spoken it. Behold, he sendeth an invitation unto all men, for the arms of mercy are extended towards them, and he saith, Repent, and I will receive you. Yea, he saith, Come unto me, and ye shall partake of the fruit of the tree of life. Yea, ye shall eat and drink of the bread and the waters of life freely. Yea, Come unto me, and bring forth works of righteousness, and ye shall not be hewn down, and cast into the fire. For behold, the time is at hand, that whosoever bringeth forth not good fruit, or whosoever doeth not the works of righteousness, the same have cause to wail and mourn. O ye workers of iniquity, ye that are puffed up in the vain things of the world, Ye that have professed to have known the ways of righteousness, nevertheless have gone astray, as sheep, having no shepherd. Notwithstanding, a shepherd hath called after you, and is still calling after you, but ye will not hearken unto his voice. Behold, I say unto you, that the good shepherd doth call you. Yea, and in his own name he doth call you, which is the name of Christ. And if ye will not hearken unto the voice of the good shepherd, to the name by which ye are called. Behold, ye are not the sheep of the good shepherd. And now, if ye are not the sheep of the good shepherd, of what fold are ye? Behold, I say unto you, that the devil is your shepherd, and ye are of his fold. And now who can deny this? Behold, I say unto you, whosoever denieth this is a liar and a child of the devil. For I say unto you, that whatsoever is good cometh from God, and whatsoever is evil cometh from the devil. Therefore, if a man bringeth forth good works, he hearkeneth unto the voice of the good shepherd, and he doth follow him. But whosoever bringeth forth evil works, the same becometh a child of the devil, for he hearkeneth unto his voice, and doth follow him. And whosoever doeth this must receive his wages of him. Therefore, for his wages he receiveth death, as to things pertaining unto righteousness, being dead unto all good works. And now, my brethren, I would that ye should hear me, for I speak in the energy of my soul. For behold, I have spoken unto you plainly that ye cannot err, or have spoken according to the commandments of God. For I am called to speak after this manner, according to the holy order of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Yea, I am commanded to stand and testify unto this people the things which have been spoken by our fathers concerning the things which are to come. And this is not all. Do ye not suppose that I know of these things myself? Behold, I testify unto you that I do know that these things whereof I have spoken are true. And how do ye suppose that I know of their surety? Behold, I say unto you, they are made known unto me by the Holy Spirit of God. Behold, I have fasted and prayed many days that I might know these things of myself. 
and now I do know of myself that they are true. For the Lord God hath made them manifest unto me by his Holy Spirit. And this is the spirit of revelation which is in me. And moreover, I say unto you that it has thus been revealed unto me that the words which have been spoken by our fathers are true, even so according to the spirit of prophecy which is in me, which is also by the manifestation of the Spirit of God. I say unto you that I know of myself that whatsoever I shall say unto you concerning that which is to come is true. And I say unto you that I know that Jesus Christ shall come, yea, the Son, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and mercy and truth. And behold, it is he that cometh to take away the sins of the world, yea, the sins of every man who steadfastly believeth on his name. And now I say unto you that this is the order after which I am called, yea, to preach unto my beloved brethren, yea, and every one that dwelleth in the land, yea, to preach unto all, both old and young, both bond and free. Yea, I say unto you, the aged, and also the middle aged, and the rising generation, yea, to cry unto them that they must repent and be born again. Yea, thus saith the Spirit, Repent, all ye ends of the earth, for the kingdom of heaven is soon at hand. Yea, the Son of God cometh in his glory, in his might, majesty, power, and dominion. Yea, my beloved brethren, I say unto you that the Spirit saith, Behold the glory of the King of all the earth, and also the King of heaven shall very soon shine forth among all the children of men. And also the Spirit saith unto me, Yea, crieth unto me with a mighty voice, saying, Go forth and say unto this people, Repent, for except ye repent, ye can in no wise inherit the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, The Spirit saith, Behold, the axe is laid at the root of the tree. Therefore every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit shall be hewn down and cast into the fire, yea, a fire which cannot be consumed, even an unquenchable fire. Behold, and remember, the Holy One hath spoken it. And now, my beloved brethren, I say unto you, Can ye withstand these sayings? Yea, can ye lay aside these things, and trample the Holy One under your feet? Yea, can ye be puffed up in the pride of your hearts? Yea, will ye still persist in the wearing of costly apparel, and setting your hearts upon the vain things of the world, upon your riches? Yea, will ye persist in supposing that ye are better one than another? Yea, will ye persist in the persecution of your brethren, who humble themselves and do walk after the holy order of God, wherewith they have been brought into this church, having been sanctified by the Holy Spirit, and they do bring forth works which are meet for repentance? Yea, and will you persist in turning your backs upon the poor and the needy, and in withholding your substance from them? And finally, all ye that will persist in your wickedness, I say unto you that these are they who shall be hewn down and cast into the fire, except they speedily repent. And now I say unto you, all you that are desirous to follow the voice of the Good Shepherd, come ye out from the wicked, and be ye separate, and touch not their unclean things. And behold, their names shall be blotted out, that the names of the wicked shall not be numbered among the names of the righteous, that the word of God may be fulfilled, which saith, The names of the wicked shall not be mingled with the names of my people, for the names of the righteous shall be written in the book of life, and unto them will I grant an inheritance at my right hand. And now, my brethren, what have ye to say against this? I say unto you, if ye speak against it, it matters not for the word of God must be fulfilled. For what shepherd is there among you, having many sheep, doth not watch over them, that the wolves enter not and devour his flock? And behold, if a wolf enter his flock, doth he not drive him out? 
yea, and at the last, if he can, he will destroy him. And now I say unto you, that the good shepherd doth call after you. And if ye will hearken unto his voice, he will bring you into his fold, and ye are his sheep. And he commandeth you that ye suffer no ravenous wolf to enter among you, that ye may not be destroyed. And now I, Alma, do command you in the language of him who hath commanded me, that ye observe to do the words which I have spoken unto you. I speak by way of command unto you that belong to the church, and unto those who do not belong to the church, I speak by way of invitation, saying, Come, and be baptized unto repentance, that ye also may be partakers of the fruit of the tree of life. Chapter 6 The church in Zarahemla is cleansed and set in order. Alma goes to Gideon to preach. About 83 B.C. And now it came to pass that after Alma had made an end of speaking unto the people of the church, which was established in the city of Zarahemla, he ordained priests and elders by laying on his hands according to the order of God to preside and watch over the church. And it came to pass that whosoever did not belong to the church who repented of their sins were baptized unto repentance and were received into the church. And it also came to pass that whosoever did belong to the church that did not repent of their wickedness and humble themselves before God, I mean those who were lifted up in the pride of their hearts, the same were rejected, and their names were blotted out, that their names were not numbered among those of the righteous. And thus they began to establish the order of the church in the city of Zarahemla. Now I would that ye should understand that the word of God was liberal unto all, that none were deprived of the privilege of assembling themselves together to hear the word of God. Nevertheless, the children of God were commanded that they should gather themselves together oft, and join in fasting and mighty prayer in behalf of the welfare of the souls of those who knew not God. And now it came to pass that when Alma had made these regulations, he departed from them, yea, from the church which was in the city of Zarahemla, and went over upon the east of the river Sidon, into the valley of Gideon, there having been a city built, which was called the city of Gideon, which was in the valley that was called Gideon, being called after the man who was slain by the hand of Nehor with the sword. And Alma went, and began to declare the word of God under the church which was established in the valley of Gideon, according to the revelation of the truth of the word, which had been spoken by his fathers, and according to the spirit of prophecy which was in him, according to the testimony of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who should come to redeem his people from their sins, and the holy order by which he was called. And thus it is written, Amen. The words of Alma, which he delivered to the people in Gideon, according to his own record. Comprising Chapter 7 Chapter 7 Christ will be born of Mary. He will loose the bands of death and bear the sins of his people. Those who repent, are baptized, and keep the commandments will have eternal life. Filthiness cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Humility, faith, hope, and charity are required. About 83 B.C. Behold, my beloved brethren, seeing that I have been permitted to come unto you, therefore I attempt to address you in my language, yea, by my own mouth, seeing that it is the first time that I have spoken unto you by the words of my mouth, I, having been wholly confined to the judgment seat, having had much business that I could not come unto you, and even I could not have come now at this time, were it not that the judgment seat hath been given to another to reign in my stead. And the Lord in much mercy hath granted that I should come unto you, and behold, I have come having great hopes and much desire that I should find that ye had humbled yourselves before God, and that ye had continued in the supplicating of his grace, that I should find that ye were blameless before him, that I should find that ye were not in the awful dilemma that our brethren were in at Zarahemla. But blessed be the name of God, that he hath given me to know 
yea, hath given unto me the exceedingly great joy of knowing that they are established again in the way of his righteousness. And I trust, according to the Spirit of God which is in me, that I shall also have joy over you. Nevertheless, I do not desire that my joy over you should come by the cause of so much afflictions and sorrow which I have had for the brethren at Zarahemla. For behold, my joy cometh over them after waiting through much affliction and sorrow. But behold, I trust that ye are not in a state of so much unbelief as were your brethren. I trust that ye are not lifted up in the pride of your hearts. Yea, I trust that ye have not set your hearts upon riches and the vain things of the world. Yea, I trust that ye do not worship idols, but that ye do worship the true and the living God, and that ye look forward for the remission of your sins with an everlasting faith which is to come. For behold, I say unto you, there be many things to come. And behold, there is one thing which is of more importance than they all. For behold, the time is not far distant that the Redeemer liveth and cometh among his people. Behold, I do not say that he will come among us at the time of his dwelling in his mortal tabernacle. For behold, the Spirit hath not said unto me that this should be the case. Now as to this thing I do not know, but this much I do know, that the Lord God hath power to do all things which are according to his word. But behold, the Spirit hath said this much unto me, saying, Cry unto this people, saying, Repent ye, and prepare the way of the Lord, and walk in his paths which are straight. For behold, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and the Son of God cometh upon the face of the earth. And behold, he shall be born of Mary. At Jerusalem, which is the land of our forefathers, she being a virgin, a precious and chosen vessel, who shall be overshadowed and conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost, and bring forth a son, yea, even the Son of God, and he shall go forth, suffering pains and afflictions and temptations of every kind, and this, that the word might be fulfilled, which saith he will take upon him the pains and the sicknesses of his people, and he will take upon him death, that he may loose the bands of death which bind his people, and he will take upon him their infirmities, that his bowels may be filled with mercy, according to the flesh, that he may know, according to the flesh, how to succor his people, according to their infirmities. Now the Spirit knoweth all things. Nevertheless, the Son of God suffereth according to the flesh, that he might take upon him the sins of his people, that he might blot out their transgressions according to the power of his deliverance. And now behold, this is the testimony which is in me. Now I say unto you that ye must repent and be born again. For the Spirit saith, If ye are not born again, ye cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, come and be baptized unto repentance, that ye may be washed from your sins, that ye may have faith on the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world, who is mighty to save and to cleanse from all unrighteousness. Yea, I say unto you, Come, and fear not, and lay aside every sin which easily doth beset you, which doth bind you down to destruction. Yea, come and go forth, and show unto your God that ye are willing to repent of your sins, and enter into a covenant with him to keep his commandments, and witness it unto him this day by going into the waters of baptism. And whosoever doeth this, and keepeth the commandments of God from thenceforth, the same will remember that I say unto him, Yea, he will remember that I have said unto him, he shall have eternal life, according to the testimony of the Holy Spirit, which testifieth in me. And now, my beloved brethren, do you believe these things? Behold, I say unto you, Yea, I know that ye believe them. And the way that I know that ye believe them is by the manifestation of the Spirit which is in me. And now, because your faith is strong concerning that, 
yea, concerning the things which I have spoken. Great is my joy. For as I said unto you from the beginning, that I had much desire that ye were not in the state of dilemma like your brethren, even so I have found that my desires have been gratified, for I perceive that ye are in the paths of righteousness. I perceive that ye are in the path which leads to the kingdom of God. Yea, I perceive that ye are making his path straight. I perceive that it has been made known unto you, by the testimony of his word, that he cannot walk in crooked paths, neither doth he vary from that which he hath said. Neither hath he a shadow of turning from the right to the left, or from that which is right to that which is wrong. Therefore his course is one eternal round. And he doth not dwell in unholy temples, neither can filthiness or anything which is unclean be received into the kingdom of God. Therefore I say unto you, the time shall come, yea, and it shall be at the last day, that he who is filthy shall remain in his filthiness. And now, my beloved brethren, I have said these things unto you, that I might awaken you to a sense of your duty to God, that ye may walk blameless before him, that ye may walk after the holy order of God, after which ye have been received. And now I would that ye should be humble, and be submissive and gentle, easy to be entreated, full of patience and long-suffering, being temperate in all things, being diligent in keeping the commandments of God at all times, asking for whatsoever things ye stand in need, both spiritual and temporal, always returning thanks unto God for whatsoever things ye do receive, and see that ye have faith, hope, and charity, and then ye will always abound in good works. And may the Lord bless you, and keep your garments spotless, that ye may at last be brought to sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the holy prophets who have been ever since the world began, having your garments spotless, even as their garments are spotless, in the kingdom of heaven, to go no more out. And now, my beloved brethren, I have spoken these words unto you according to the Spirit which testifieth in me. And my soul doth exceedingly rejoice because of the exceeding diligence and heed which ye have given unto my word. And now may the peace of God rest upon you and upon your houses and lands and upon your flocks and herds and all that you possess, your women and your children, according to your faith and good works from this time forth and forever. And thus I have spoken. Amen. Chapter 8 Alma preaches and baptizes in Melech. He is rejected in Ammonihah and leaves. An angel commands him to return and cry repentance unto the people. He is received by Amulek, and the two of them preach in Ammonihah. About 82 B.C. And now it came to pass that Alma returned from the land of Gideon, after having taught the people of Gideon many things which cannot be written, having established the order of the church, according as he had before done in the land of Zarahemla. Yea, he returned to his own house at Zarahemla to rest himself from the labors which he had performed. And thus ended the ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And it came to pass, in the commencement of the tenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, that Alma departed from thence, and took his journey over into the land of Melech, on the west of the river Sidon, on the west by the borders of the wilderness. And he began to teach the people in the land of Melech, according to the holy order of God, by which he had been called. And he began to teach the people throughout all the land of Melech. And it came to pass that the people came to him throughout all the borders of the land which was by the wilderness side, and they were baptized throughout all the land. So that when he had finished his work at Melech, he departed thence, and traveled three days' journey on the north of the land of Melech. And he came to a city which was called Ammonihah. Now it was the custom of the people of Nephi to call their lands, and their cities, and their villages, yea, even all their small villages, after the name of him who first possessed them. 
And thus it was with the land of Ammonihah. And it came to pass that when Alma had come to the city of Ammonihah, he began to preach the word of God unto them. Now Satan had gotten great hold upon the hearts of the people of the city of Ammonihah. Therefore they would not hearken unto the words of Alma. Nevertheless, Alma labored much in the spirit, wrestling with God in mighty prayer, that he would pour out his spirit upon the people who were in the city, that he would also grant that he might baptize them unto repentance. Nevertheless, they hardened their hearts, saying unto him, Behold, we know that thou art Alma, and we know that thou art high priest of the church which thou hast established in many parts of the land, according to your tradition. And we are not of thy church, and we do not believe in such foolish traditions. And now we know that because we are not of thy church, we know that thou hast no power over us, and thou hast delivered up the judgment seat unto Nephi. Therefore, thou art not the chief judge over us. Now when the people had said this, and withstood all his words, and reviled him, and spit upon him, and caused that he should be cast out of their city, he departed thence, and took his journey towards the city which was called Aaron. And it came to pass that while he was journeying thither, being weighed down with sorrow, waiting through much tribulation and anguish of soul, because of the wickedness of the people who were in the city of Ammonihah, it came to pass while Alma was thus weighed down with sorrow, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him, saying, Blessed art thou, Alma. Therefore lift up thy head and rejoice, for thou hast great cause to rejoice. For thou hast been faithful in keeping the commandments of God from the time which thou receivest thy first message from him. Behold, I am he that delivered it unto you. And behold, I am sent to command thee that thou return to the city of Ammonihah and preach again unto the people of the city. Yea, preach unto them. Yea, say unto them, except they repent, the Lord God will destroy them. For behold, they do study at this time that they may destroy the liberty of thy people. For thus saith the Lord, which is contrary to the statutes and judgments and commandments which he has given unto his people. Now it came to pass that after Alma had received his message from the angel of the Lord, he returned speedily to the land of Ammonihah, and he entered the city by another way, yea, by the way which is on the south of the city of Ammonihah. And as he entered the city, he was unhungered, and he said to a man, Will ye give to an humble servant of God something to eat? And the man said unto him, I am a Nephite, and I know that thou art a holy prophet of God, for thou art the man whom an angel said in a vision, Thou shalt receive. Therefore, go with me into my house, and I will impart unto thee of my food. And I know that thou wilt be a blessing unto me and my house. And it came to pass that the man received him into his house. And the man was called Amulek. And he brought forth bread and meat, and set before Alma. And it came to pass that Alma ate bread, and was filled. And he blessed Amulek and his house, and he gave thanks unto God. And after he had eaten and was filled, he said unto Amulek, I am Alma, and am the high priest over the church of God throughout the land. And behold, I have been called to preach the word of God among all this people, according to the spirit of revelation and prophecy. And I was in this land, and they would not receive me. But they cast me out, and I was about to set my back towards this land forever. But behold, I have been commanded that I should turn again and prophesy unto this people, yea, and to testify against them concerning their iniquities. And now, Amulek, because thou hast fed me and taken me in, thou art blessed. For I was an hungered, for I had fasted many days. And Alma tarried many days with Amulek before he began to preach unto the people. And it came to pass that the people did wax more gross in their iniquities. And the word came to Alma, saying, Go. And also say unto my servant Amulek, Go forth, and prophesy unto this people, saying, Repent ye, for thus saith the Lord, 
except ye repent, I will visit this people in mine anger. Yea, and I will not turn my fierce anger away. And Amma went forth, and also Amulek, among the people, to declare the words of God unto them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they had power given unto them, insomuch that they could not be confined in dungeons. Neither was it possible that any man could slay them. Nevertheless, they did not exercise their power until they were bound in bands and cast into prison. Now this was done that the Lord might show forth his power in them. And it came to pass that they went forth and began to preach and to prophesy unto the people according to the spirit and power which the Lord had given them. The words of Alma, and also the words of Amulek, which were declared unto the people who were in the land of Ammonihah. And also they are cast into prison, and delivered by the miraculous power of God which was in them, according to the record of Alma. Comprising chapters 9 through 14. Chapter 9. Alma commands the people of Ammonihah to repent. The Lord will be merciful to the Lamanites in the last days. If the Nephites forsake the light, they will be destroyed by the Lamanites. The Son of God will come soon. He will redeem those who repent, are baptized, and have faith in His name. About 82 B.C. And again, I, Alma, having been commanded of God that I should take Amulek and go forth and preach again unto this people, or the people who were in the city of Ammonihah, it came to pass, as I began to preach unto them, they began to contend with me, saying, Who art thou? Suppose ye that we shall believe the testimony of one man, although he should preach unto us that the earth should pass away. Now they understood not the words which they spake, for they knew not that the earth should pass away. And they said also, We will not believe thy words, if thou shouldst prophesy that this great city should be destroyed in one day. Now they knew not that God could do such marvelous works, for they were a hard-hearted and a stiff-necked people. And they said, Who is God, that sendeth no more authority than one man among this people, to declare unto them the truth of such great and marvelous things? And they stood forth to lay their hands on me. But behold, they did not. And I stood with boldness to declare unto them, Yea, I did boldly testify unto them, saying, Behold, O ye wicked and perverse generation, how have ye forgotten the tradition of your fathers? Yea, how soon ye have forgotten the commandments of God. Do ye not remember that our father Lehi was brought out of Jerusalem by the hand of God? Do ye not remember that they were all led by him through the wilderness? And have ye forgotten so soon how many times he delivered our fathers out of the hands of their enemies and preserved them from being destroyed? even by the hands of their own brethren. Yea, and if it had not been for his matchless power and his mercy and his long suffering towards us, we should unavoidably have been cut off from the face of the earth long before this period of time, and perhaps been consigned to a state of endless misery and woe. Behold, now I say unto you that he commandeth you to repent, and except ye repent, ye can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. But behold, this is not all. He has commanded you to repent, or he will utterly destroy you from off the face of the earth. Yea, he will visit you in his anger, and in his fierce anger he will not turn away. Behold, do ye not remember the words which he spake unto Lehi, saying that inasmuch as ye shall keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land? And again it is said that inasmuch as ye will not keep my commandments, ye shall be cut off from the presence of the Lord. Now I would that ye should remember that inasmuch as the Lamanites have not kept the commandments of God, they have been cut off from the presence of the Lord. Now we see that the word of the Lord has been verified in this thing, and the Lamanites have been cut off from his presence, from the beginning of their transgressions in the land. Nevertheless, I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for them in the day of judgment than for you, if ye remain in your sins, yea, and even more tolerable for them in this life than for you, except ye repent. For there are many promises which are extended to the Lamanites, 
for it is because of the traditions of their fathers that caused them to remain in their state of ignorance. Therefore, the Lord will be merciful unto them and prolong their existence in the land. And at some period of time they will be brought to believe in his word and to know of the incorrectness of the traditions of their fathers. And many of them will be saved, for the Lord will be merciful unto all who call on his name. But behold, I say unto you, that if ye persist in your wickedness, that your day shall not be prolonged in the land, for the Lamanites shall be sent upon you. And if ye repent not, they shall come in a time when you know not, and ye shall be visited with utter destruction, and it shall be according to the fierce anger of the Lord. For he will not suffer you that ye shall live in your iniquities to destroy his people. I say unto you, Nay, he would rather suffer that the Lamanites might destroy all his people who are called the people of Nephi, if it were possible that they could fall into sins and transgressions, after having had so much light and so much knowledge given unto them of the Lord their God. Yea, after having been such a highly favored people of the Lord. Yea, after having been favored above every other nation, kindred, tongue, or people. After having had all things made known unto them, according to their desires and their faith and prayers of that which has been, and which is, and which is to come. Having been visited by the Spirit of God, having conversed with angels, and having been spoken unto by the voice of the Lord, and having the spirit of prophecy, and the spirit of revelation, and also many gifts, the gift of speaking with tongues, and the gift of preaching, and the gift of the Holy Ghost, and the gift of translation. Yea, and after having been delivered of God out of the land of Jerusalem by the hand of the Lord, having been saved from famine, and from sickness, and all manner of diseases of every kind, and they, having waxed strong in battle, that they might not be destroyed, having been brought out of bondage time after time, and having been kept and preserved until now, and they have been prospered until they are rich in all manner of things. And now, behold, I say unto you, that if this people, who have received so many blessings from the hand of the Lord, should transgress contrary to the light and knowledge which they do have, I say unto you that if this be the case, that if they should fall into transgression, it would be far more tolerable for the Lamanites than for them. For behold, the promises of the Lord are extended to the Lamanites, but they are not unto you if ye transgress. For has not the Lord expressly promised and firmly decreed that if ye will rebel against him, that ye shall utterly be destroyed from off the face of the earth? And now for this cause, that he may not be destroyed, the Lord has sent his angel to visit many of his people, declaring unto them that they must go forth and cry mightily unto this people, saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is nigh at hand. And not many days hence, the Son of God shall come in his glory, and his glory shall be the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, equity, and truth, full of patience mercy, and long-suffering, quick to hear the cries of his people, and to answer their prayers. And behold, he cometh to redeem those who will be baptized unto repentance through faith on his name. Therefore, prepare ye the way of the Lord, for the time is at hand that all men shall reap a reward of their works, according to that which they have been. If they have been righteous, they shall reap the salvation of their souls according to the power and deliverance of Jesus Christ. And if they have been evil, they shall reap the damnation of their souls, according to the power and captivation of the devil. Now behold, this is the voice of the angel, crying unto the people. And now, my beloved brethren, for ye are my brethren, and ye ought to be beloved, and ye ought to bring forth works which are meet for repentance, seeing that your hearts have been grossly hardened against the word of God, and seeing that ye are a lost and a fallen people. Now it came to pass that when I, Alma, had spoken these words, behold, the people were wroth with me, because I said unto them that they were a hard-hearted and a stiff-necked people, and also because I said unto them that they were a lost and a fallen people, they were angry with me. 
and sought to lay their hands upon me, that they might cast me into prison. But it came to pass that the Lord did not suffer them that they should take me at that time, and cast me into prison. And it came to pass that Amulek went and stood forth, and began to preach unto them also. And now the words of Amulek are not all written. Nevertheless, a part of his words are written in this book. Chapter 10 Lehi Descended from Manasseh Amulek recounts the angelic command that he care for Alma. The prayers of the righteous cause the people to be spared. Unrighteous lawyers and judges lay the foundation of the destruction of the people. About 82 B.C. Now these are the words which Amulek preached unto the people who were in the land of Ammonihah, saying, I am Amulek, I am the son of Gedona, who was the son of Ishmael, who was a descendant of Amminadi. And it was that same Amminadi who interpreted the writing which was upon the wall of the temple, which was written by the finger of God. And Amminadi was a descendant of Nephi, who was the son of Lehi, who came out of the land of Jerusalem, who was a descendant of Manasseh, who was the son of Joseph, who was sold into Egypt by the hands of his brethren. And behold, I am also a man of no small reputation among all those who know me. Yea, and behold, I have many kindreds and friends, and I have also acquired much riches by the hand of my industry. Nevertheless, after all this, I never have known much of the ways of the Lord and his mysteries and marvelous power. I said I never had known much of these things. But behold, I mistake, for I have seen much of his mysteries and his marvelous power, yea, even in the preservation of the lives of this people. Nevertheless, I did harden my heart, for I was called many times, and I would not hear. Therefore, I knew concerning these things, yet I would not know. Therefore, I went on rebelling against God in the wickedness of my heart, even until the fourth day of this seventh month, which is in the tenth year of the reign of the judges, as I was journeying to see a very near kindred, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto me and said, Amulek, return to thine own house, for thou shalt feed a prophet of the Lord, yea, a holy man, who is a chosen man of God, for he has fasted many days because of the sins of this people, and he is unhungered, and thou shalt receive him into thy house and feed him, and he shall bless thee and thy house, and the blessing of the Lord shall rest upon thee and thy house. And it came to pass that I obeyed the voice of the angel and returned towards my house. And as I was going thither, I found the man whom the angel said unto me, Thou shalt receive into thy house. And behold, it was this same man who has been speaking unto you concerning the things of God. And the angel said unto me, He is a holy man. Wherefore I know he is a holy man, because it was said by an angel of God. And again, I know that the things whereof he hath testified are true. For behold, I say unto you, that as the Lord liveth, even so has he sent his angel to make these things manifest unto me. And this he has done while this Alma hath dwelt at my house. For behold, he hath blessed mine house. He hath blessed me, and my women, and my children, and my father, and my kinsfolk. Yea, even all my kindred hath he blessed. And the blessing of the Lord hath rested upon us according to the words which he spake. And now, when Amulek had spoken these words, the people began to be astonished, seeing there was more than one witness who testified of the things whereof they were accused, and also of the things which were to come, according to the spirit of prophecy which was in them. Nevertheless, there were some among them who thought to question them, that by their cunning devices they might catch them in their words, that they might find witness against them that they might deliver them to their judges, that they might be judged according to the law, and that they might be slain or cast into prison, according to the crime which they could make appear or witness against them. Now it was those men who sought to destroy them, who were lawyers, who were hired or appointed by the people to administer the law at their times of trials, or at the trials of the crimes of the people before the judges. 
Now these lawyers were learned in all the arts and cunning of the people, and this was to enable them that they might be skillful in their profession. And it came to pass that they began to question Amulek, that thereby they might make him cross his words, or contradict the words which he should speak. Now they knew not that Amulek could know of their designs. But it came to pass, as they began to question him, he perceived their thoughts, and he said unto them, O ye wicked and perverse generation, ye lawyers and hypocrites, for ye are laying the foundations of the devil, for ye are laying traps and snares to catch the holy ones of God. Ye are laying plans to pervert the ways of the righteous and to bring down the wrath of God upon your heads, even to the utter destruction of this people. Yea, well did Mosiah say, who was our last king, when he was about to deliver up the kingdom, having no one to confer it upon, causing that this people should be governed by their own voices. Yea, well did he say that if the time should come that the voice of this people should choose iniquity, that is, if the time should come that this people should fall into transgression, they would be ripe for destruction. And now I say unto you, that well doth the Lord judge of your iniquities. Well doth he cry unto this people by the voice of his angels, Repent ye, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yea, well doth he cry by the voice of his angels, that I will come down among my people with equity and justice in my hands. Yea, and I say unto you that if it were not for the prayers of the righteous who are now in the land, that ye would even now be visited with utter destruction. Yet it would not be by flood, as were the people in the days of Noah, but it would be by famine, and by pestilence, and the sword. But it is by the prayers of the righteous that ye are spared. Now therefore, if ye will cast out the righteous from among you, then will not the Lord stay his hand. But in his fierce anger he will come out against you, then ye shall be smitten by famine, and by pestilence, and by the sword. And the time is soon at hand, except ye repent. And now it came to pass that the people were more angry with Amulek, and they cried out, saying, This man doth revile against our laws which are just, and our wise lawyers whom we have selected. But Amulek stretched forth his hand, and cried the mightier unto them, saying, O ye wicked and perverse generation, why hath Satan got such great hold upon your hearts? Why will ye yield yourselves unto him, that he may have power over you, to blind your eyes, that ye will not understand the words which are spoken, according to their truth? For behold, have I testified against your law? Ye do not understand. Ye say that I have spoken against your law, but I have not but I have spoken in favor of your law, to your condemnation. And now behold, I say unto you, that the foundation of the destruction of this people is beginning to be laid by the unrighteousness of your lawyers and your judges. And now it came to pass that when Amulek had spoken these words, the people cried out against him, saying, Now we know that this man is a child of the devil, for he hath lied unto us, for he hath spoken against our law. And now he says that he has not spoken against it. And again, he has reviled against our lawyers and our judges. And it came to pass that the lawyers put it into their hearts that they should remember these things against him. And there was one among them whose name was Zeezrom. Now he was the foremost to accuse Amulek and Alma, he being one of the most expert among them, having much business to do among the people. Now the object of these lawyers was to get gain, and they got gain according to their employ. Chapter 11 The Nephite Monetary System is set forth. Amulek contends with Zeezrom. Christ will not save people in their sins. Only those who inherit the kingdom of heaven are saved. All men will rise in immortality. There is no death after the resurrection about 82 B.C. Now it was in the law of Mosiah that every man who was a judge of the law, or those who were appointed to be judges, should receive wages according to the time which they labored, 
to judge those who were brought before them to be judged. Now if a man owed another, and he would not pay that which he did owe, he was complained of to the judge. And the judge executed authority, and sent forth officers that the man should be brought before him. And he judged the man according to the law and the evidences which were brought against him. And thus the man was compelled to pay that which he owed, or be stripped, or be cast out from among the people as a thief and a robber. And the judge received for his wages, according to his time, a senine of gold for a day, or a senum of silver, which is equal to a senine of gold. And this is according to the law which was given. Now these are the names of the different pieces of their gold, and of their silver, according to their value. And the names are given by the Nephites, for they did not reckon after the manner of the Jews who were at Jerusalem, neither did they measure after the manner of the Jews, but they altered their reckoning and their measure according to the minds and the circumstances of the people in every generation until the reign of the judges, they having been established by King Mosiah. Now the reckoning is thus, a senine of gold, a seon of gold, a shum of gold, and a limna of gold, a senum of silver, an amnor of silver, an ezram of silver, and an ontai of silver. A senum of silver was equal to a senine of gold, and either for a measure of barley, and also for a measure of every kind of grain. Now the amount of a seon of gold was twice the value of a senine, and a shum of gold was twice the value of a seon and a limna of gold was the value of them all, and an amnor of silver was as great as two senums, and an ezram of silver was as great as four senums, and an ontai was as great as them all. Now this is the value of the lesser numbers of their reckoning. A shiblin is half of a senum, therefore a shiblin for half a measure of barley, and a shiblum is a half of a shiblin, and a leah is the half of a shiblum. Now this is their number, according to their reckoning. Now an antian of gold is equal to three shiblins. Now it was for the sole purpose to get gain, because they received their wages according to their employ. Therefore they did stir up the people to riotings, and all manner of disturbances and wickedness, that they might have more employ, that they might get money according to the suits which were brought before them. Therefore they did stir up the people against Alma and Amulek. And this Seezrim began to question Amulek, saying, Will ye answer me a few questions which I shall ask you? Now Zeezrom was a man who was expert in the devices of the devil, that he might destroy that which was good. Therefore he said unto Amulek, Will ye answer the questions which I shall put unto you? And Amulek said unto him, Yea, if it be according to the Spirit of the Lord, which is in me for I shall say nothing which is contrary to the Spirit of the Lord. And Zeezrom said unto him, Behold, here are six ontis of silver, and all these will I give thee if thou wilt deny the existence of a supreme being. Now Amulek said, O thou child of hell, why tempt ye me? Knowest thou that the righteous yieldeth to no such temptations? Believest thou that there is no God? I say unto you, Nay, thou knowest that there is a God, but thou lovest that lucre more than him. And now thou hast lied before God unto me. Thou saidst unto me, Behold, these six ontis which are of great worth, I will give unto thee, when thou hadst it in thy heart to retain them from me and it was only thy desire that I should deny the true and living God, that thou mightest have cause to destroy me. And now behold, for this great evil thou shalt have thy reward. And Zeezrom said unto him, Thou sayest there is a true and living God? And Amulek said, Yea, there is a true and living God. Now Zeezrom said, Is there more than one God? And he answered, No. Now Zeezrom said unto him again, How knowest thou these things? And he said, An angel hath made them known unto me. And Zeezrom said again, Who is he that shall come? Is it the Son of God? And he said unto him, Yea. 
And Zeezrom said again, Shall he save his people in their sins? And Amulek answered, and said unto him, I say unto you, he shall not, for it is impossible for him to deny his word. Now Zeezrom said unto the people, See that ye remember these things. For he said there is but one God, yet he saith that the Son of God shall come, but he shall not save his people, as though he had authority to command God. Now Amulek saith again unto him, Behold, thou hast lied, for thou sayest that I spake as though I had authority to command God, because I said he shall not save his people in their sins, and I say unto you again that he cannot save them in their sins, for I cannot deny his word. And he hath said that no unclean thing can inherit the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, how can ye be saved, except ye inherit the kingdom of heaven? Therefore, ye cannot be saved in your sins. Now Zeezrom saith again unto him, Is the Son of God the very eternal Father? And Amulek said unto him, Yea, he is the very eternal Father of heaven and of earth and all things which in them are. He is the beginning and the end, the first and the last, and he shall come into the world to redeem his people. And he shall take upon him the transgressions of those who believe on his name. And these are they that shall have eternal life, and salvation cometh to none else. Therefore the wicked remain as though there had been no redemption made, except it be the loosing of the bands of death, for behold, the day cometh that all shall rise from the dead, and stand before God, and be judged according to their works. Now there is a death which is called a temporal death, and the death of Christ shall loose the bands of this temporal death, that all shall be raised from this temporal death. The spirit and the body shall be reunited again in its perfect form. Both limb and joint shall be restored to its proper frame even as we now are at this time. And we shall be brought to stand before God, knowing, even as we know now, and have a bright recollection of all our guilt. Now this restoration shall come to all, both old and young, both bond and free, both male and female, both the wicked and the righteous. And even there shall not so much as a hair of their heads be lost, but everything shall be restored to its perfect frame, as it is now, or in the body, and shall be brought and be arraigned before the bar of Christ the Son, and God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, which is one eternal God, to be judged according to their works, whether they be good or whether they be evil. Now behold, I have spoken unto you concerning the death of the mortal body, and also concerning the resurrection of the mortal body. I say unto you that this mortal body is raised to an immortal body, that is from death, even from the first death, unto life, that they can die no more, their spirits uniting with their bodies, never to be divided, thus the whole becoming spiritual and immortal, that they can no more see corruption. Now when Amulek had finished these words, the people began again to be astonished. And also, Zeezrom began to tremble. And thus ended the words of Amulek, or this is all that I have written. Chapter 12 Alma Speaks to Zeezrom The mysteries of God can be given only to the faithful. Men are judged by their thoughts, beliefs, words, and works. The wicked will suffer a spiritual death. This mortal life is a probationary state. The plan of redemption brings to pass the resurrection and, through faith, a remission of sins. The repentant have a claim on mercy through the only begotten Son. About 82 B.C. Now Alma, seeing that the words of Amulek had silenced Zeezrom, for he beheld that Amulek had caught him in his lying and deceiving to destroy him, and seeing that he began to tremble under a consciousness of his guilt, he opened his mouth and began to speak unto him, and to establish the words of Amulek, and to explain things beyond, or to unfold the scriptures beyond that which Amulek had done. 
Now the words that Alma spake unto Zeezrom were heard by the people round about, for the multitude was great. And he spake on this wise, Now, Zeezrom, seeing that thou hast been taken in thy lying and craftiness, for thou hast not lied unto men only, but thou hast lied unto God. For behold, he knows all thy thoughts, and thou seest that thy thoughts are made known unto us by his Spirit. And thou seest that we know that thy plan was a very subtle plan, as to the subtlety of the devil, for to lie and to deceive this people that thou mightest set them against us, to revile us and to cast us out. Now this was a plan of thine adversary, and he hath exercised his power in thee. Now I would that ye should remember that what I say unto thee, I say unto all. And behold, I say unto you all, that this was a snare of the adversary, which he has laid to catch this people, that he might bring you into subjection unto him, that he might encircle you about with his chains, that he might chain you down to everlasting destruction, according to the power of his captivity. Now when Alma had spoken these words, Zeezrom began to tremble more exceedingly, for he was convinced more and more of the power of God. And he was also convinced that Alma and Amulek had a knowledge of him, for he was convinced that they knew the thoughts and intents of his heart. For power was given unto them, that they might know of these things, according to the spirit of prophecy. And Zeezrom began to inquire of them diligently, that he might know more concerning the kingdom of God. And he said unto Alma, What does this mean which Amulek hath spoken concerning the resurrection of the dead, that all shall rise from the dead, both the just and the unjust, and are brought to stand before God to be judged according to their works? And now Alma began to expound these things unto him, saying, It is given unto many to know the mysteries of God. Nevertheless, they are laid under a strict command that they shall not impart only according to the portion of his word which he doth grant unto the children of men, according to the heed and diligence which they give unto him. And therefore, he that will harden his heart, the same receiveth the lesser portion of the word. And he that will not harden his heart, to him is given the greater portion of the word, until it is given unto him to know the mysteries of God, until he know them in full. And they that will harden their hearts, to them is given the lesser portion of the word, until they know nothing concerning his mysteries. And then they are taken captive by the devil, and led by his will down to destruction. Now this is what is meant by the chains of hell. And Amulek hath spoken plainly concerning death, and being raised from this mortality to a state of immortality, and being brought before the bar of God, to be judged according to our works, then if our hearts have been hardened, yea, if we have hardened our hearts against the word, insomuch that it has not been found in us, then will our state be awful, for then we shall be condemned, for our words will condemn us, yea, all our works will condemn us, we shall not be found spotless, and our thoughts will also condemn us. And in this awful state we shall not dare to look up to our God, and we would fain be glad if we could command the rocks and the mountains to fall upon us, to hide us from his presence. But this cannot be. We must come forth and stand before him in his glory and in his power and in his might, majesty, and dominion, and acknowledge to our everlasting shame that all his judgments are just, that he is just in all his works, and that he is merciful unto the children of men, and that he has all power to save every man that believeth on his name and bringeth forth fruit meet for repentance. And now behold, I say unto you, then cometh a death, even a second death, which is a spiritual death. Then is a time that whosoever dieth in his sins, as to a temporal death, shall also die a spiritual death. Yea, he shall die as to things pertaining unto righteousness. Then is the time when their torments shall be as a lake of fire and brimstone whose flame ascendeth up for ever and ever. And then is the time that they shall be chained down to an everlasting destruction, according to the power and captivity of Satan, 
he having subjected them according to his will. Then I say unto you, they shall be as though there had been no redemption made, for they cannot be redeemed according to God's justice, and they cannot die, seeing there is no more corruption. Now it came to pass that when Alma had made an end of speaking these words, the people began to be more astonished. But there was one Antiana, who was a chief ruler among them, came forth and said unto him, What is this that thou hast said, that man should rise from the dead and be changed from this mortal to an immortal state, that the soul can never die? What does the scripture mean, which saith that God placed cherubim and a flaming sword on the east of the Garden of Eden, lest our first parents should enter and partake of the fruit of the tree of life, and live forever? And thus we see that there was no possible chance that they should live forever. Now Alma said unto him, This is the thing which I was about to explain. Now we see that Adam did fall by the partaking of the forbidden fruit, according to the word of God. And thus we see that by his fall, all mankind became a lost and fallen people. And now behold, I say unto you, that if it had been possible for Adam to have partaken of the fruit of the tree of life at that time, there would have been no death, and the word would have been void, making God a liar. For he said, If thou eat, thou shalt surely die. And we see that death comes upon mankind, yea, the death which has been spoken of by Amulek, which is the temporal death. Nevertheless, there was a space granted unto man in which he might repent. Therefore, this life became a probationary state, a time to prepare to meet God, a time to prepare for that endless state which has been spoken of by us, which is after the resurrection of the dead. Now if it had not been for the plan of redemption, which was laid from the foundation of the world, there could have been no resurrection of the dead. But there was a plan of redemption laid, which shall bring to pass the resurrection of the dead, of which has been spoken. And now, behold, if it were possible that our first parents could have gone forth and partaken of the tree of life, they would have been forever miserable, having no preparatory state. And thus, the plan of redemption would have been frustrated, and the word of God would have been void, taking none effect. But behold, it was not so. But it was appointed unto men that they must die and after death they must come to judgment, even that same judgment of which we have spoken, which is the end. And after God had appointed that these things should come unto man, behold, then he saw that it was expedient that man should know concerning the things whereof he had appointed unto them. Therefore he sent angels to converse with them, who caused men to behold of his glory and they began from that time forth to call on his name. Therefore, God conversed with men, and made known unto them the plan of redemption, which had been prepared from the foundation of the world. And this he made known unto them, according to their faith and repentance and their holy works. Wherefore, he gave commandments unto men, they having first transgressed the first commandments as to things which were temporal, and becoming as gods, knowing good from evil, placing themselves in a state to act, or being placed in a state to act, according to their wills and pleasures, whether to do evil or to do good. Therefore, God gave unto them commandments, after having made known unto them the plan of redemption, that they should not do evil, the penalty thereof being a second death, which was an everlasting death, as to things pertaining unto righteousness. For on such the plan of redemption could have no power, for the works of justice could not be destroyed, according to the supreme goodness of God. But God did call on men, in the name of his Son, this being the plan of redemption which was laid, saying, If ye will repent, and harden not your hearts, then will I have mercy upon you, through mine only begotten Son, Therefore, whosoever repenteth, and hardeneth not his heart, he shall have claim on mercy through mine only begotten Son, unto a remission of his sins, and these shall enter into my rest.
and whosoever will harden his heart and will do iniquity. Behold, I swear in my wrath that he shall not enter into my rest. And now, my brethren, behold, I say unto you, that if ye will harden your hearts, ye shall not enter into the rest of the Lord. Therefore, your iniquity provoketh him that he sendeth down his wrath upon you, as in the first provocation, yea, according to his word in the last provocation, as well as the first, to the everlasting destruction of your souls. Therefore, according to his word, unto the last death, as well as the first. And now, my brethren, seeing we know these things, and they are true, let us repent, and harden not our hearts, that we provoke not the Lord our God to pull down his wrath upon us and these his second commandments which he has given unto us. But let us enter into the rest of God, which is prepared according to his word. Chapter 13 Men are called as high priests because of their exceeding faith and good works. They are to teach the commandments. Through righteousness they are sanctified and enter into the rest of the Lord. Melchizedek was one of these. Angels are declaring glad tidings throughout the land. They will declare the actual coming of Christ. About 82 B.C. And again, my brethren, I would cite your minds forward to the time when the Lord God gave these commandments unto his children. And I would that ye should remember that the Lord God ordained priests after his holy order, which was after the order of his Son, to teach these things unto the people. And those priests were ordained after the order of his Son, in a manner that thereby the people might know in what manner to look forward to his Son for redemption. And this is the manner after which they were ordained, being called and prepared from the foundation of the world, according to the foreknowledge of God, on account of their exceeding faith and good works, in the first place being left to choose good or evil. Therefore, they, having chosen good, and exercising exceedingly great faith, are called with a holy calling, yea, with that holy calling which was prepared with and according to a preparatory redemption for such, and thus they have been called to this holy calling on account of their faith, while others would reject the Spirit of God on account of the hardness of their hearts and blindness of their minds, while, if it had not been for this, they might have had as great privilege as their brethren, or in fine, in the first place, they were on the same standing with their brethren. Thus, this holy calling, being prepared from the foundation of the world for such as would not harden their hearts, being in and through the atonement of the only begotten Son, who was prepared, and thus being called by this holy calling, and ordained unto the high priesthood of the holy order of God, to teach his commandments unto the children of men, that they also might enter into his rest, this high priesthood being after the order of his Son, which order was from the foundation of the world, or in other words, being without beginning of days or end of years, being prepared from eternity to all eternity, according to his foreknowledge of all things. Now they were ordained after this manner, being called with a holy calling and ordained with a holy ordinance, and taking upon them the high priesthood of the holy order, which calling and ordinance and high priesthood is without beginning or end. Thus they become high priests forever, after the order of the Son, the only begotten of the Father, who is without beginning of days or end of years, who is full of grace, equity, and truth. And thus it is. Amen. Now, as I said concerning the holy order, or this high priesthood, there were many who were ordained and became high priests of God. And it was on account of their exceeding faith and repentance, and their righteousness before God, they choosing to repent and work righteousness, rather than to perish. Therefore they were called after this holy order, and were sanctified, and their garments were washed white through the blood of the Lamb. Now they, after being sanctified by the Holy Ghost, having their garments made white, being pure and spotless before God, could not look upon sin, save it were with abhorrence. 
And there were many, exceedingly great many, who were made pure, and entered into the rest of the Lord their God. And now, my brethren, I would that ye should humble yourselves before God, and bring forth fruit meet for repentance, that ye may also enter into that rest. Yea, humble yourselves even as the people in the days of Melchizedek, who was also a high priest after this same order which I have spoken, who also took upon him the high priesthood forever. And it was this same Melchizedek to whom Abraham paid tithes. Yea, even our father Abraham paid tithes of one-tenth part of all he possessed. Now these ordinances were given after this manner, that thereby the people might look forward on the Son of God, it being a type of his order, or it being his order, and this that they might look forward to him for a remission of their sins, that they might enter into the rest of the Lord. Now this Melchizedek was a king over the land of Salem, and his people had waxed strong in iniquity and abomination. Yea, they had all gone astray. They were full of all manner of wickedness. But Melchizedek, having exercised mighty faith, and received the office of the high priesthood according to the holy order of God, did preach repentance unto his people. And behold, they did repent, and Melchizedek did establish peace in the land in his days. Therefore he was called the Prince of Peace, for he was the king of Salem, and he did reign under his father. Now there were many before him, and also there were many afterwards, but none were greater. Therefore, of him they have more particularly made mention. Now I need not rehearse the matter. What I have said may suffice. Behold, the scriptures are before you. If ye will rest them, it shall be to your own destruction. And now it came to pass, that when Alma had said these words unto them, he stretched forth his hand unto them, and cried with a mighty voice, saying, Now is the time to repent, for the day of salvation draweth nigh. Yea, and the voice of the Lord, by the mouth of angels, doth declare it unto all nations. Yea, doth declare it, that they may have glad tidings of great joy. Yea, and he doth sound these glad tidings among all his people. Yea, even to them that are scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. Wherefore they have come unto us. And they are made known unto us in plain terms, that we may understand, that we cannot err and this because of our being wanderers in a strange land. Therefore, we are thus highly favored, for we have these glad tidings declared unto us in all parts of our vineyard. For behold, angels are declaring it unto many at this time in our land, and this is for the purpose of preparing the hearts of the children of men to receive his word at the time of his coming in his glory. And now, we only wait to hear the joyful news declared unto us by the mouth of angels of his coming. For the time cometh, we know not how soon. Would to God that it might be in my day. But let it be sooner or later, in it I will rejoice. And it shall be made known unto just and holy men, by the mouth of angels, at the time of his coming, that the words of our fathers may be fulfilled, according to that which they have spoken concerning him which was according to the spirit of prophecy which was in them. And now, my brethren, I wish from the inmost part of my heart, yea, with great anxiety even unto pain, that ye would hearken unto my words, and cast off your sins, and not procrastinate the day of your repentance, but that ye would humble yourselves before the Lord, and call on his holy name, and watch and pray continually that ye may not be tempted above that which ye can bear, and thus be led by the Holy Spirit, becoming humble, meek, submissive, patient, full of love and all long-suffering, having faith on the Lord, having a hope that ye shall receive eternal life, having the love of God always in your hearts, that ye may be lifted up at the last day and enter into his rest. And may the Lord grant unto you repentance, that ye may not bring down his wrath upon you, that ye may not be bound down by the chains of hell, that ye may not suffer the second death. And Alma spake many more words unto the people, 
which are not written in this book. Chapter 14 Alma and Amulek are imprisoned and smitten. The believers and their holy scriptures are burned by fire. These martyrs are received by the Lord in glory. The prison walls are rent and fall. Alma and Amulek are delivered, and their persecutors are slain. About 82 through 81 B.C. And it came to pass, after he had made an end of speaking unto the people, many of them did believe on his words, and began to repent, and to search the scriptures. But the more part of them were desirous that they might destroy Alma and Amulek, for they were angry with Alma, because of the plainness of his words unto Zeezrom. And they also said that Amulek had lied unto them, and had reviled against their law, and also against their lawyers and judges. And they were also angry with Alma and Amulek, and because they had testified so plainly against their wickedness, they sought to put them away privily. But it came to pass that they did not. But they took them, and bound them with strong cords, and took them before the chief judge of the land, and the people went forth and witnessed against them, testifying that they had reviled against the law, and their lawyers and judges of the land, and also of all the people that were in the land, and also testified that there was but one God, and that he should send his Son among the people, but he should not save them. And many such things did the people testify against Alma and Amulek. Now this was done before the chief judge of the land, and it came to pass that Zeezrom was astonished at the words which had been spoken, and he also knew concerning the blindness of the minds, which he had caused among the people by his lying words. And his soul began to be harrowed up under a consciousness of his own guilt. Yea, he began to be encircled about by the pains of hell. And it came to pass that he began to cry unto the people, saying, Behold, I am guilty, and these men are spotless before God. And he began to plead for them from that time forth. But they reviled him, saying, Art thou also possessed with the devil? And they spit upon him, and cast him out from among them, and also all those who believed in the words which had been spoken by Alma and Amulek. And they cast them out, and sent men to cast stones at them. And they brought their wives and children together, and whosoever believed, or had been taught to believe in the word of God, they caused that they should be cast into the fire. And they also brought forth their records which contained the holy scriptures, and cast them into the fire also, that they might be burned and destroyed by fire. And it came to pass that they took Alma and Amulek, and carried them forth to the place of martyrdom, that they might witness the destruction of those who were consumed by fire. And when Amulek saw the pains of the women and children who were consuming in the fire, he also was pained. And he said unto Alma, How can we witness this awful scene? Therefore, let us stretch forth our hands, and exercise the power of God which is in us, and save them from the flames. But Alma said unto him, The Spirit constraineth me, that I must not stretch forth mine hand. For behold, the Lord receiveth them up unto himself in glory. And he doth suffer that they may do this thing, or that the people may do this thing unto them, according to the hardness of their hearts, that the judgments which he shall exercise upon them in his wrath may be just, and the blood of the innocent shall stand as a witness against them, yea, and cry mightily against them at the last day. Now Amulek said unto Alma, Behold, perhaps they will burn us also. And Alma said, Be it according to the will of the Lord. But behold, our work is not finished, therefore they burn us not. Now it came to pass that when the bodies of those who had been cast into the fire were consumed, and also the records which were cast in with them, the chief judge of the land came and stood before Alma and Amulek, as they were bound. And he smote them with his hand upon their cheeks, and said unto them, After what ye have seen, will ye preach again unto this people, that they shall be cast into a lake of fire and brimstone? Behold, 
ye see that ye had not power to save those who had been cast into the fire. Neither has God saved them, because they were of thy faith. And the judge smote them again upon their cheeks, and asked, What say ye for yourselves? Now this judge was after the order and faith of Nehor, who slew Gideon. And it came to pass that Alma and Amulek answered him nothing. And he smote them again, and delivered them to the officers to be cast into prison. And when they had been cast into prison three days, there came many lawyers and judges and priests and teachers who were of the profession of Nehor. And they came in unto the prison to see them, and they questioned them about many words. But they answered them nothing. And it came to pass that the judge stood before them and said, Why do ye not answer the words of this people? Know ye not that I have power to deliver you up unto the flames? And he commanded them to speak. But they answered nothing. And it came to pass that they departed and went their ways, but came again on the morrow. And the judge also smote them again on their cheeks. And many came forth also, and smote them, saying, Will ye stand again and judge this people, and condemn our law? If ye have such great power, why do ye not deliver yourselves? And many such things did they say unto them, gnashing their teeth upon them, and spitting upon them, and saying, How shall we look when we are damned? And many such things, yea, all manner of such things did they say unto them. And thus they did mock them for many days. And they did withhold food from them that they might hunger, and water that they might thirst. And they also did take from them their clothes, that they were naked. And thus they were bound with strong cords, and confined in prison. And it came to pass, after they had thus suffered for many days, and it was on the twelfth day, in the tenth month, in the tenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, that the chief judge over the land of Ammonihah, and many of their teachers, and their lawyers, went in unto the prison where Alma and Amulek were bound with cords. And the chief judge stood before them, and smote them again, and said unto them, If ye have the power of God, deliver yourselves from these bands. And then we will believe that the Lord will destroy this people, according to your words. And it came to pass that they all went forth and smote them, saying the same words, even until the last. And when the last had spoken unto them, the power of God was upon Alma and Amulek, and they rose and stood upon their feet. And Alma cried, saying, How long shall we suffer these great afflictions, O Lord? O Lord, give us strength according to our faith which is in Christ, even unto deliverance. And they broke the cords with which they were bound. And when the people saw this, they began to flee, for the fear of destruction had come upon them. And it came to pass that so great was their fear that they fell to the earth, and did not obtain the outer door of the prison. And the earth shook mightily, and the walls of the prison were rent in twain, so that they fell to the earth. And the chief judge, and the lawyers, and priests, and teachers, who smote upon Alma and Amulek, were slain by the fall thereof. And Alma and Amulek came forth out of the prison, and they were not hurt. For the Lord had granted unto them power, according to their faith which was in Christ. And they straightway came forth out of the prison, and they were loosed from their bands. And the prison had fallen to the earth, and every soul within the walls thereof, save it were Alma and Amulek, was slain and they straightway came forth into the city. Now the people, having heard a great noise, came running together by multitudes to know the cause of it. And when they saw Alma and Amulek coming forth out of the prison, and the walls thereof had fallen to the earth, they were struck with great fear, and fled from the presence of Alma and Amulek, even as a goat fleeth with her young from two lions. And thus they did flee from the presence of Alma and Amulek. Chapter 15 Alma and Amulek go to Sidom and establish a church. Alma heals Zeezrom, who joins the church. Many are baptized, and the church prospers. Alma and Amulek go to Zarahemla, about 81 B.C.
And it came to pass that Alma and Amulek were commanded to depart out of that city. And they departed, and came out even into the land of Sidom. And behold, there they found all the people who had departed out of the land of Ammonihah, who had been cast out and stoned, because they believed in the words of Alma. And they related unto them all that had happened unto their wives and children, and also concerning themselves, and of their power of deliverance. And also, Zeezrom lay sick at Sidom with a burning fever, which was caused by the great tribulations of his mind on account of his wickedness. For he supposed that Alma and Amulek were no more, and he supposed that they had been slain because of his iniquity. And this great sin, and his many other sins, did harrow up his mind until it did become exceedingly sore, having no deliverance. Therefore he began to be scorched with a burning heat. Now when he heard that Alma and Amulek were in the land of Sidom, his heart began to take courage, and he sent a message immediately unto them, desiring them to come unto him. And it came to pass that they went immediately, obeying the message which he had sent unto them. And they went in under the house unto Zeezrom, and they found him upon his bed, sick, being very low with a burning fever. And his mind also was exceedingly sore because of his iniquities. And when he saw them, he stretched forth his hand, and besought them that they would heal him. And it came to pass that Alma said unto him, taking him by the hand, Believest thou in the power of Christ unto salvation? And he answered and said, Yea, I believe all the words that thou hast taught. And Alma said, If thou believest in the redemption of Christ, thou canst be healed. And he said, Yea, I believe according to thy words. And then Alma cried unto the Lord, saying, O Lord our God, have mercy on this man, and heal him according to his faith which is in Christ. And when Alma had said these words, Zeezrom leaped upon his feet and began to walk. And this was done to the great astonishment of all the people. And the knowledge of this went forth throughout all the land of Sidom. And Alma baptized Zeezrom unto the Lord. And he began from that time forth to preach unto the people. And Alma established a church in the land of Sidom, and consecrated priests and teachers in the land, to baptize unto the Lord whosoever were desirous to be baptized. And it came to pass that they were many, for they did flock in from all the region round about Sidom, and were baptized. But as to the people that were in the land of Ammonihah, they yet remained a hard-hearted and a stiff-necked people, and they repented not of their sins ascribing all the power of Alma and Amulek to the devil, for they were of the profession of Nehor, and did not believe in the repentance of their sins. And it came to pass that Alma and Amulek, Amulek having forsaken all his gold and silver and his precious things which were in the land of Ammonihah for the word of God, he being rejected by those who were once his friends and also by his father and his kindred, Therefore, after Alma having established the church at Sidom, seeing a great check, yea, seeing that the people were checked as to the pride of their hearts, and began to humble themselves before God, and began to assemble themselves together at their sanctuaries to worship God before the altar, watching and praying continually that they might be delivered from Satan and from death and from destruction. Now, as I said, Alma having seen all these things, therefore he took Amulek and came over to the land of Zarahemla, and took him to his own house, and did administer unto him in his tribulations, and strengthened him in the Lord. And thus ended the tenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Chapter 16 The Lamanites Destroy the People of Ammonihah Zoram leads the Nephites to victory over the Lamanites. Alma and Amulek and many others preach the word. They teach that after his resurrection, Christ will appear to the Nephites. About 81 through 77 B.C.
And it came to pass, in the eleventh year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, on the fifth day of the second month, there having been much peace in the land of Zarahemla, there having been no wars nor contentions for a certain number of years, even until the fifth day of the second month in the eleventh year, there was a cry of war heard throughout the land. For behold, the armies of the Lamanites had come in upon the wilderness side, into the borders of the land, even into the city of Ammonihah, and began to slay the people and destroy the city. And now it came to pass, before the Nephites could raise a sufficient army to drive them out of the land, they had destroyed the people who were in the city of Ammonihah, and also some around the borders of Noah, and taken others captive into the wilderness. Now it came to pass that the Nephites were desirous to obtain those who had been carried away captive into the wilderness. Therefore, he that had been appointed chief captain over the armies of the Nephites, and his name was Zoram, and he had two sons, Lehi and Ahah. Now Zoram and his two sons, knowing that Alma was high priest over the church, and having heard that he had the spirit of prophecy, therefore they went unto him, and desired of him to know whither the Lord would, that they should go into the wilderness in search of their brethren, who had been taken captive by the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Alma inquired of the Lord concerning the matter. And Alma returned, and said unto them, Behold, the Lamanites will cross the river Sidon in the south wilderness, away up beyond the borders of the land of Manti. And behold, there shall ye meet them, on the east of the river Sidon. And there the Lord will deliver unto thee thy brethren, who have been taken captive by the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Zoram and his sons crossed over the river Sidon with their armies, and marched away beyond the borders of Manti into the south wilderness, which was on the east side of the river Sidon. And they came upon the armies of the Lamanites, and the Lamanites were scattered and driven into the wilderness. And they took their brethren who had been taken captive by the Lamanites, and there was not one soul of them had been lost that were taken captive. And they were brought by their brethren to possess their own lands. And thus ended the eleventh year of the judges, the Lamanites having been driven out of the land, and the people of Ammonihah were destroyed. Yea, Every living soul of the Ammonihaites was destroyed, and also their great city, which they said God could not destroy, because of its greatness. But behold, in one day it was left desolate, and the carcasses were mangled by dogs and wild beasts of the wilderness. Nevertheless, after many days their dead bodies were heaped up upon the face of the earth, and they were covered with a shallow covering. And now, so great was the scent thereof that the people did not go in to possess the land of Ammonihah for many years. And it was called Desolation of Nehors, for they were of the profession of Nehor, who were slain, and their lands remained desolate. And the Lamanites did not come again to war against the Nephites until the fourteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus, for three years did the people of Nephi have continual peace in all the land. And Alma and Amulek went forth preaching repentance to the people in their temples and in their sanctuaries and also in their synagogues, which were built after the manner of the Jews. And as many as would hear their words, unto them they did impart the word of God without any respect of persons, continually. And thus did Alma and Amulek go forth and also many more who had been chosen for the work, to preach the word throughout all the land. And the establishment of the church became general throughout the land, in all the region round about, among all the people of the Nephites. And there was no inequality among them. The Lord did pour out his Spirit on all the face of the land to prepare the minds of the children of men, or to prepare their hearts to receive the word which should be taught among them at the time of his coming that they might not be hardened against the word, that they might not be unbelieving and go on to destruction, but that they might receive the word with joy, and as a branch be grafted into the true vine, 
that they might enter into the rest of the Lord their God. Now those priests who did go forth among the people did preach against all lyings and deceivings and envyings and strifes and malice and revilings and stealing, robbing, plundering, murdering, committing adultery, and all manner of lasciviousness, crying that these things ought not so to be, holding forth things which must shortly come, yea, holding forth the coming of the Son of God, his sufferings and death, and also the resurrection of the dead. And many of the people did inquire concerning the place where the Son of God should come, and they were taught that he would appear unto them after his resurrection. And this the people did hear with great joy and gladness. And now, after the church had been established throughout all the land, having got the victory over the devil, and the word of God being preached in its purity in all the land, and the Lord pouring out his blessings upon the people, thus ended the fourteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. An account of the sons of Mosiah, who rejected their rights to the kingdom for the word of God, and went up to the land of Nephi to preach to the Lamanites, their sufferings and deliverance, according to the record of Alma. Comprising Chapters 17 through 27. Chapter 17. The sons of Mosiah have the spirit of prophecy and of revelation. They go their several ways to declare the word to the Lamanites. Ammon goes to the land of Ishmael and becomes the servant of King Lamoni. Ammon saves the king's flocks and slays his enemies at the water of Sebus. Verses 1 through 3, about 77 BC. Verse 4, about 91 through 77 BC. And verses 5 through 39, about 91 BC. And now it came to pass that as Alma was journeying from the land of Gideon southward away to the land of Manti, Behold, to his astonishment, he met with the sons of Mosiah journeying towards the land of Zarahemla. Now these sons of Mosiah were with Alma at the time the angel first appeared unto him. Therefore Alma did rejoice exceedingly to see his brethren. And what added more to his joy? They were still his brethren in the Lord. Yea, and they had waxed strong in the knowledge of the truth, for they were men of a sound understanding and they had searched the scriptures diligently, that they might know the word of God. But this is not all. They had given themselves to much prayer and fasting. Therefore, they had the spirit of prophecy and the spirit of revelation. And when they taught, they taught with power and authority of God. And they had been teaching the word of God for the space of fourteen years among the Lamanites, having had much success in bringing many to the knowledge of the truth. Yea, by the power of their words, many were brought before the altar of God to call on his name and confess their sins before him. Now these are the circumstances which attended them in their journeyings, for they had many afflictions. They did suffer much, both in body and in mind, such as hunger, thirst and fatigue, and also much labor in the spirit. Now these were their journeyings, having taken leave of their father, Mosiah, in the first year of the judges, having refused the kingdom which their father was desirous to confer upon them, and also this was the minds of the people. Nevertheless, they departed out of the land of Zarahemla, and took their swords, and their spears, and their bows, and their arrows, and their slings. And this they did that they might provide food for themselves while in the wilderness. And thus they departed into the wilderness with their numbers which they had selected to go up to the land of Nephi to preach the word of God unto the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they journeyed many days in the wilderness, and they fasted much and prayed much that the Lord would grant unto them a portion of his spirit to go with them and abide with them, that they might be an instrument in the hands of God to bring, if it were possible, their brethren the Lamanites to the knowledge of the truth to the knowledge of the baseness of the traditions of their fathers, which were not correct. And it came to pass that the Lord did visit them with his spirit, and said unto them, Be comforted. And they were comforted. And the Lord said unto them also, Go forth among the Lamanites, thy brethren, and establish my word. 
Yet ye shall be patient in long suffering and afflictions, that ye may show forth good examples unto them in me. And I will make an instrument of thee in my hands unto the salvation of many souls. And it came to pass that the hearts of the sons of Mosiah, and also those who were with them, took courage to go forth unto the Lamanites to declare unto them the word of God. And it came to pass, when they had arrived in the borders of the land of the Lamanites, that they separated themselves and departed one from another, trusting in the Lord that they should meet again at the close of their harvest. For they supposed that great was the work which they had undertaken, and assuredly it was great. For they had undertaken to preach the word of God to a wild and a hardened and a ferocious people, a people who delighted in murdering the Nephites and robbing and plundering them. And their hearts were set upon riches, or upon gold and silver and precious stones. Yet they sought to obtain these things by murdering and plundering, that they might not labor for them with their own hands. Thus they were a very indolent people, many of whom did worship idols, and the curse of God had fallen upon them because of the traditions of their fathers. Notwithstanding, the promises of the Lord were extended unto them on the conditions of repentance. Therefore, this was the cause for which the sons of Mosiah had undertaken the work, that perhaps they might bring them unto repentance, that perhaps they might bring them to know of the plan of redemption. Therefore, they separated themselves one from another and went forth among them, every man alone, according to the word and power of God which was given unto him. Now Ammon, being the chief among them, or rather he did administer unto them, and he departed from them, after having blessed them according to their several stations, having imparted the word of God unto them, or administered unto them before his departure. And thus they took their several journeys throughout the land. And Ammon went to the land of Ishmael, the land being called after the sons of Ishmael, who also became Lamanites. And as Ammon entered the land of Ishmael, the Lamanites took him and bound him, as was their custom to bind all the Nephites who fell into their hands and carry them before the king. And thus it was left to the pleasure of the king to slay them, or to retain them in captivity, or to cast them into prison, or to cast them out of his land, according to his will and pleasure. And thus Ammon was carried before the king who was over the land of Ishmael. And his name was Lamoni, and he was a descendant of Ishmael. And the king inquired of Ammon if it were his desire to dwell in the land among the Lamanites, or among his people. And Ammon said unto him, Yea, I desire to dwell among this people for a time. Yea, and perhaps until the day I die. And it came to pass that King Lamoni was much pleased with Ammon, and caused that his bands should be loosed. And he would that Ammon should take one of his daughters to wife. But Ammon said unto him, Nay, but I will be thy servant. Therefore Ammon became a servant to King Lamoni. And it came to pass that he was set among other servants to watch the flocks of Lamoni, according to the custom of the Lamanites. And after he had been in the service of the king three days, as he was with the Lamanitish servants going forth with their flocks to the place of water, which was called the water of Sebus, and all the Lamanites drive their flocks hither, that they may have water. Therefore, as Ammon and the servants of the king were driving forth their flocks to this place of water, behold, a certain number of the Lamanites, who had been with their flocks to water, stood and scattered the flocks of Ammon and the servants of the king. And they scattered them insomuch that they fled many ways. Now the servants of the king began to murmur, saying, Now the king will slay us, as he has our brethren because their flocks were scattered by the wickedness of these men. And they began to weep exceedingly, saying, Behold, our flocks are scattered already. Now they wept because of the fear of being slain. Now when Ammon saw this, his heart was swollen within him with joy. For, said he, I will show forth my power unto these my fellow servants, or the power which is in me, in restoring these flocks unto the king that I may win the hearts of these my fellow servants, that I may lead them to believe in my words.
And now, these were the thoughts of Ammon, when he saw the afflictions of those whom he termed to be his brethren. And it came to pass that he flattered them by his words, saying, My brethren, be of good cheer, and let us go in search of the flocks, and we will gather them together and bring them back under the place of water. And thus we will preserve the flocks unto the king, and he will not slay us. And it came to pass that they went in search of the flocks, and they did follow Ammon. And they rushed forth with much swiftness, and did head the flocks of the king, and did gather them together again to the place of water. And those men again stood to scatter their flocks. But Ammon said unto his brethren, Encircle the flocks round about that they flee not. And I go and contend with these men who do scatter our flocks. Therefore they did as Ammon commanded them. And he went forth and stood to contend with those who stood by the waters of Sebus. And they were in number not a few. Therefore they did not fear Ammon, for they supposed that one of their men could slay him according to their pleasure. For they knew not that the Lord had promised Mosiah that he would deliver his sons out of their hands. Neither did they know anything concerning the Lord. Therefore they delighted in the destruction of their brethren. And for this cause they stood to scatter the flocks of the king. But Ammon stood forth and began to cast stones at them with his sling. Yea, with mighty power he did sling stones amongst them. And thus he slew a certain number of them, insomuch that they began to be astonished at his power. Nevertheless, they were angry because of the slain of their brethren, and they were determined that he should fall. Therefore, seeing that they could not hit him with their stones, they came forth with clubs to slay him. But behold, every man that lifted his club to smite Ammon, he smote off their arms with his sword. For he did withstand their blows by smiting their arms with the edge of his sword, insomuch that they began to be astonished and began to flee before him. Yea, and they were not few in number. And he caused them to flee by the strength of his arm. Now six of them had fallen by the sling, but he slew none save it were their leader with his sword. And he smote off as many of their arms as were lifted against him, and they were not a few. And when he had driven them afar off, he returned, and they watered their flocks, and returned them to the pasture of the king. And then went in unto the king, bearing the arms which had been smitten off by the sword of Ammon, of those who sought to slay him. And they were carried in unto the king for a testimony of the things which they had done. Chapter 18 King Lamoni supposes that Ammon is the great spirit. Ammon teaches the king about the creation, God's dealings with men, and the redemption that comes through Christ. Lamoni believes and falls to the earth as if dead. About 90 B.C. And it came to pass that King Lamoni caused that his servants should stand forth and testify to all the things which they had seen concerning the matter. And when they had all testified to the things which they had seen, and he had learned of the faithfulness of Ammon in preserving his flocks, and also of his great power in contending against those who sought to slay him, he was astonished exceedingly, and said, Surely this is more than a man. Behold, is not this the great spirit who doth send such great punishments upon this people because of their murders? And they answered the king, and said, Whether he be the great spirit or a man, we know not. But this much we do know, that he cannot be slain by the enemies of the king. Neither can they scatter the king's flocks when he is with us, because of his expertness and great strength. Therefore, we know that he is a friend to the king. And now, O king, we do not believe that a man has such great power, for we know he cannot be slain. And now, when the king heard these words, he said unto them, Now I know that it is the great spirit, and he has come down at this time to preserve your lives, that I might not slay you as I did your brethren. Now this is the great spirit of whom our fathers have spoken. Now this was the tradition of Lamoni, which he had received from his father, that there was a great spirit. Notwithstanding they believed in a great spirit, 
they supposed that whatsoever they did was right. Nevertheless, Lamoni began to fear exceedingly, with fear lest he had done wrong in slaying his servants. For he had slain many of them because their brethren had scattered their flocks at the place of water. And thus, because they had had their flocks scattered, they were slain. Now, it was the practice of these Lamanites to stand by the waters of Sebus to scatter the flocks of the people, that thereby they might drive away many that were scattered under their own land, it being a practice of plunder among them. And it came to pass that King Lamoni inquired of his servants, saying, Where is this man that has such great power? And they said unto him, Behold, he is feeding thy horses. Now the king had commanded his servants, previous to the time of the watering of their flocks, that they should prepare his horses and chariots and conduct him forth to the land of Nephi. For there had been a great feast appointed at the land of Nephi by the father of Lamoni, who was king over all the land. Now when King Lamoni heard that Ammon was preparing his horses and his chariots, he was more astonished because of the faithfulness of Ammon, saying, Surely there has not been any servant among all my servants that has been so faithful as this man. For even he doth remember all my commandments to execute them. Now I surely know that this is the great spirit, and I would desire him that he come in unto me. But I durst not. And it came to pass that when Ammon had made ready the horses and the chariots for the king and his servants, he went in unto the king, and he saw that the countenance of the king was changed. Therefore he was about to return out of his presence. And one of the king's servants said unto him, Rabbana, which is, being interpreted, powerful or great king, considering their kings to be powerful. And thus he said unto him, Rabbana, the king desireth thee to stay. Therefore Ammon turned himself unto the king, and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do for thee, O king? And the king answered him not for the space of an hour, according to their time, for he knew not what he should say unto him. And it came to pass that Ammon said unto him again, What desirest thou of me? But the king answered him not. And it came to pass that Ammon, being filled with the Spirit of God, therefore he perceived the thoughts of the king. And he said unto him, Is it because thou hast heard that I defended thy servants and thy flocks, and slew seven of their brethren with the sling and with the sword, and smote off the arms of others, in order to defend thy flocks and thy servants? Behold, is it this that causeth thy marvelings? I say unto you, What is it that thy marvelings are so great? Behold, I am a man, and am thy servant. Therefore, whatsoever thou desirest which is right, that will I do. Now when the king had heard these words, he marveled again, for he beheld that Ammon could discern his thoughts. But notwithstanding this, King Lamoni did open his mouth, and said unto him, Who art thou? Art thou that great spirit, who knows all things? Ammon answered, and said unto him, I am not. And the king said, How knowest thou the thoughts of my heart? Thou mayest speak boldly, and tell me concerning these things. And also, tell me by what power ye slew and smote off the arms of my brethren that scattered my flocks. And now, if thou wilt tell me concerning these things, whatsoever thou desirest, I will give unto thee. And if it were needed, I would guard thee with my armies. But I know that thou art more powerful than all they. Nevertheless, whatsoever thou desirest of me, I will grant it unto thee. Now Ammon, being wise, yet harmless, he said unto Lamoni, Wilt thou hearken unto my words, if I tell thee by what power I do these things? And this is the thing that I desire of thee. And the king answered him, and said, Yea, I will believe all thy words. And thus he was caught with guile. And Ammon began to speak unto him with boldness, and said unto him, Believest thou that there is a God? And he answered, and said unto him, I do not know what that meaneth. And then Ammon said, Believest thou that there is a great spirit? And he said, Yea. 
And Ammon said, This is God. And Ammon said unto him again, Believest thou that this great Spirit, who is God, created all things which are in heaven and in the earth? And he said, Yea, I believe that he created all things which are in the earth, but I do not know the heavens. And Ammon said unto him, The heavens is a place where God dwells, and all his holy angels. And King Lamoni said, Is it above the earth? And Ammon said, Yea, and he looketh down upon all the children of men, and he knows all the thoughts and intents of the heart. For by his hand were they all created from the beginning. And King Lamoni said, I believe all these things which thou hast spoken. Art thou sent from God? Ammon said unto him, I am a man, and man in the beginning was created after the image of God, and I am called by his Holy Spirit to teach these things unto this people, that they may be brought to a knowledge of that which is just and true, and a portion of that Spirit dwelleth in me, which giveth me knowledge, and also power according to my faith and desires which are in God. Now when Ammon had said these words, he began at the creation of the world, and also the creation of Adam, and told him all the things concerning the fall of man, and rehearsed and laid before him the records and the holy scriptures of the people, which had been spoken by the prophets, even down to the time that their father Lehi left Jerusalem. And he also rehearsed unto them, for it was unto the king and to his servants, all the journeyings of their fathers in the wilderness, and all their sufferings with hunger and thirst, and their travail, and so forth. And he also rehearsed unto them concerning the rebellions of Laman and Lemuel, and the sons of Ishmael. Yea, all their rebellions did he relate unto them. And he expounded unto them all the records and scriptures from the time that Lehi left Jerusalem down to the present time. But this is not all. For he expounded unto them the plan of redemption, which was prepared from the foundation of the world. And he also made known unto them concerning the coming of Christ, and all the works of the Lord did he make known unto them. And it came to pass, that after he had said all these things, and expounded them to the king, that the king believed all his words. And he began to cry unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, have mercy! According to thy abundant mercy which thou hast had upon the people of Nephi, have upon me and my people. And now, when he had said this, he fell into the earth as if he were dead. And it came to pass that his servants took him and carried him in unto his wife and laid him upon a bed. And he lay as if he were dead for the space of two days and two nights. And his wife and his sons and his daughters mourned over him, after the manner of the Lamanites, greatly lamenting his loss. Chapter 19 Lamoni receives the light of everlasting life and sees the Redeemer. His household falls into a trance, and many see angels. Ammon is preserved miraculously. He baptizes many and establishes a church among them. About 90 B.C. And it came to pass, that after two days and two nights they were about to take his body and lay it in a sepulchre, which they had made for the purpose of burying their dead. Now the queen, having heard of the fame of Ammon, therefore she sent and desired that he should come in unto her. And it came to pass that Ammon did as he was commanded, and went in unto the queen, and desired to know what she would that he should do. And she said unto him, the servants of my husband have made it known unto me that thou art a prophet of a holy God, and that thou hast power to do many mighty works in his name. Therefore, if this is the case, I would that ye should go in and see my husband. For he has been laid upon his bed for the space of two days and two nights, and some say that he is not dead, but others say that he is dead, and that he stinketh, and that he ought to be placed in the sepulchre. But as for myself, to me he doth not stink. Now this was what Ammon desired, for he knew that King Lamoni was under the power of God. He knew that the dark veil of unbelief was being cast away from his mind, and the light which did light up his mind. 
which was the light of the glory of God, which was a marvelous light of His goodness. Yea, this light had infused such joy into His soul, the cloud of darkness having been dispelled, and that the light of everlasting life was lit up in His soul. Yea, He knew that this had overcome His natural frame, and He was carried away in God. Therefore, what the Queen desired of Him was His only desire. Therefore, he went in to see the king according as the queen had desired him. And he saw the king, and he knew that he was not dead. And he said unto the queen, He is not dead, but he sleepeth in God, and on the morrow he shall rise again. Therefore, bury him not. And Ammon said unto her, Believest thou this? And she said unto him, I have had no witness save thy word and the word of our servants. Nevertheless, I believe that it shall be according as thou hast said. And Ammon said unto her, Blessed art thou because of thy exceeding faith. I say unto thee, woman, there has not been such great faith among all the people of the Nephites. And it came to pass that she watched over the bed of her husband. From that time, even until that time on the morrow which Ammon had appointed that he should rise. And it came to pass that he arose, according to the words of Ammon. And as he arose, he stretched forth his hand unto the woman, and said, Blessed be the name of God, and blessed art thou, for as sure as thou livest, behold, I have seen my Redeemer. And he shall come forth, and be born of a woman, and he shall redeem all mankind who believe on his name. Now, when he had said these words, his heart was swollen within him, and he sunk again with joy. And the queen also sunk down, being overpowered by the Spirit. Now Ammon, seeing the Spirit of the Lord poured out according to his prayers upon the Lamanites his brethren, who had been the cause of so much mourning among the Nephites, or among all the people of God, because of their iniquities and their traditions, he fell upon his knees and began to pour out his soul in prayer and thanksgiving to God for what he had done for his brethren. And he was also overpowered with joy. And thus they all three had sunk to the earth. Now when the servants of the king had seen that they had fallen, they also began to cry unto God, for the fear of the Lord had come upon them also. For it was they who had stood before the king and testified unto him concerning the great power of Ammon. And it came to pass that they did call on the name of the Lord in their might, even until they had all fallen to the earth, save it were one of the Lamanitish women, whose name was Abish. She, having been converted unto the Lord for many years, on account of a remarkable vision of her father. Thus, having been converted to the Lord, and never having made it known, therefore, when she saw that all the servants of Lamoni had fallen to the earth, and also her mistress, the queen, and the king, and Ammon lay prostrate upon the earth, she knew that it was the power of God. And supposing that this opportunity, by making known unto the people what had happened among them, that by beholding this scene, it would cause them to believe in the power of God. Therefore, she ran forth from house to house, making it known unto the people. And they began to assemble themselves together unto the house of the king. And there came a multitude, and to their astonishment, they beheld the king and the queen and their servants prostrate upon the earth. And they all lay there as though they were dead. And they also saw Ammon, and behold, he was a Nephite. And now the people began to murmur among themselves, some saying that it was a great evil that had come upon them, or upon the king and his house, because he had suffered that the Nephite should remain in the land. But others rebuked them, saying, The king hath brought this evil upon his house, because he slew his servants who had had their flocks scattered at the waters of Sebus. And they were also rebuked by those men who had stood at the waters of Sebus and scattered the flocks which belonged to the king. For they were angry with Ammon because of the number which he had slain of their brethren at the waters of Sebus while defending the flocks of the king. Now one of them, whose brother had been slain with the sword of Ammon, 
being exceedingly angry with Ammon, drew his sword and went forth that he might let it fall upon Ammon to slay him. And as he lifted the sword to smite him, behold, he fell dead. Now we see that Ammon could not be slain, for the Lord had said unto Mosiah his father, I will spare him, and it shall be unto him according to thy faith. Therefore Mosiah trusted him unto the Lord. And it came to pass that when the multitude beheld that the man had fallen dead, who lifted the sword to slay Ammon, fear came upon them all, and they durst not put forth their hands to touch him or any of those who had fallen. And they began to marvel again among themselves what could be the cause of this great power, or what all these things could mean. And it came to pass that there were many among them who said that Ammon was the great spirit, and others said he was sent by the great spirit. But others rebuked them all, saying that he was a monster who had been sent from the Nephites to torment them. And there were some who said that Ammon was sent by the great spirit to afflict them because of their iniquities and that it was the great spirit that had always attended the Nephites, who had ever delivered them out of their hands. And they said that it was this great spirit who had destroyed so many of their brethren, the Lamanites. And thus the contention began to be exceedingly sharp among them. And while they were thus contending, the woman servant who had caused the multitude to be gathered together came. And when she saw the contention which was among the multitude, she was exceedingly sorrowful, even unto tears. And it came to pass that she went and took the queen by the hand, that perhaps she might raise her from the ground. And as soon as she touched her hand, she arose and stood upon her feet, and cried with a loud voice, saying, O blessed Jesus, who has saved me from an awful hell! O blessed God, have mercy on this people! And when she had said this, she clasped her hands, being filled with joy, speaking many words which were not understood. And when she had done this, she took the king Lamoni by the hand, and behold, he arose and stood upon his feet. And he immediately, seeing the contention among his people, went forth and began to rebuke them, and to teach them the words which he had heard from the mouth of Ammon. And as many as heard his words believed, and were converted unto the Lord, but there were many among them who would not hear his words. Therefore they went their way. And it came to pass that when Ammon arose, he also administered unto them, and also did all the servants of Lamoni. And they did all declare unto the people the selfsame thing, that their hearts had been changed, that they had no more desire to do evil. And behold, many did declare unto the people that they had seen angels and had conversed with them, and thus they had told them things of God and of his righteousness. And it came to pass that there were many that did believe in their words, and as many as did believe were baptized, and they became a righteous people, and they did establish a church among them. And thus the work of the Lord did commence among the Lamanites. Thus the Lord did begin to pour out his Spirit upon them, and we see that his arm is extended to all people who will repent and believe on his name. Chapter 20 The Lord sends Ammon to Medoni to deliver his imprisoned brethren. Ammon and Lamoni meet Lamoni's father, who is king over all the land. Ammon compels the old king to approve the release of his brethren. About 90 B.C. And it came to pass that when they had established a church in that land, that King Lamoni desired that Ammon should go with him to the land of Nephi, that he might show him unto his father. And the voice of the Lord came to Ammon, saying, Thou shalt not go up to the land of Nephi, for behold, the king will seek thy life. But thou shalt go to the land of Medoni, for behold, thy brother Aaron, and also Mulekai and Amma are in prison. Now it came to pass that when Ammon had heard this, he said unto Lamoni, Behold, my brother and brethren are in prison at Medoni, and I go that I may deliver them. Now Lamoni said unto Ammon, I know in the strength of the Lord thou canst do all things. But behold, I will go with thee to the land of Medoni. For the king of the land of Medoni, 
whose name is Antiamno, is a friend unto me. Therefore I go to the land of Madoni, that I may flatter the king of the land, and he will cast thy brethren out of prison. Now Lamoni said unto him, Who told thee that thy brethren were in prison? And Ammon said unto him, No one hath told me, save it be God. And he said unto me, Go and deliver thy brethren, for they are in prison in the land of Madoni. Now when Lamoni had heard this, he caused that his servants should make ready his horses and his chariots. And he said unto Ammon, Come, I will go with thee down to the land of Madoni, and there I will plead with the king that he will cast thy brethren out of prison. And it came to pass that as Ammon and Lamoni were journeying thither, they met the father of Lamoni, who was king over all the land. And behold, the father of Lamoni said unto him, Why did ye not come to the feast on that great day when I made a feast unto my sons and unto my people? And he also said, Whither art thou going with this Nephite, who was one of the children of a liar? And it came to pass that Lamoni rehearsed unto him whither he was going, for he feared to offend him. And he also told him all the cause of his tarrying in his own kingdom, that he did not go unto his father to the feast which he had prepared. And now, when Lamoni had rehearsed unto him all these things, behold, to his astonishment, his father was angry with him, and said, Lamoni, thou art going to deliver these Nephites, who are sons of a liar. Behold, he robbed our fathers. And now his children are also come amongst us, that they may, by their cunning and their lyings, deceive us, that they again may rob us of our property. Now the father of Lamoni commanded him that he should slay Ammon with the sword. And he also commanded him that he should not go to the land of Madoni, but that he should return with him to the land of Ishmael. But Lamoni said unto him, I will not slay Ammon, neither will I return to the land of Ishmael, but I go to the land of Madoni, that I may release the brethren of Ammon. For I know that they are just men and holy prophets of the true God. Now when his father had heard these words, he was angry with him, and he drew his sword that he might smite him to the earth. But Ammon stood forth and said unto him, Behold, thou shalt not slay thy son. Nevertheless, it were better that he should fall than thee, for behold, he has repented of his sins. But if thou shouldst fall at this time in thine anger, thy soul could not be saved. And again, it is expedient that thou shouldst forbear. For if thou shouldst slay thy son, he being an innocent man, his blood would cry from the ground to the Lord his God for vengeance to come upon thee. And perhaps thou wouldst lose thy soul. Now when Ammon had said these words unto him, he answered him, saying, I know that if I should slay my son, that I should shed innocent blood, for it is thou that hast sought to destroy him. And he stretched forth his hand to slay Ammon. But Ammon withstood his blows, and also smote his arm that he could not use it. Now when the king saw that Ammon could slay him, he began to plead with Ammon that he would spare his life. But Ammon raised his sword and said unto him, Behold, I will smite thee, except thou wilt grant unto me that my brethren may be cast out of prison. Now the king, fearing he should lose his life, said, If thou wilt spare me, I will grant unto thee whatsoever thou wilt ask, even to half of the kingdom. Now when Ammon saw that he had wrought upon the old king according to his desire, he said unto him, If thou wilt grant that my brethren may be cast out of prison, and also that Lamoni may retain his kingdom, and that ye be not displeased with him, but grant that he may do according to his own desires in whatsoever thing he thinketh. Then will I spare thee. Otherwise, I will smite thee to the earth. Now when Ammon had said these words, the king began to rejoice because of his life. And when he saw that Ammon had no desire to destroy him, and when he also saw the great love he had for his son Lamoni, he was astonished exceedingly and said, because this is all that thou hast desired, that I would release thy brethren, and suffer that my son Lamoni should retain his kingdom. Behold, 
I will grant unto you that my son may retain his kingdom from this time and forever, and I will govern him no more. And I will also grant unto thee that thy brethren may be cast out of prison, and thou and thy brethren may come unto me in my kingdom, for I shall greatly desire to see thee. For the king was greatly astonished at the words which he had spoken, and also at the words which had been spoken by his son Lamoni. Therefore he was desirous to learn them. And it came to pass that Ammon and Lamoni proceeded on their journey towards the land of Medoni. And Lamoni found favor in the eyes of the king of the land. Therefore the brethren of Ammon were brought forth out of prison. And when Ammon did meet them, he was exceedingly sorrowful. For behold, they were naked, and their skins were worn exceedingly because of being bound with strong cords. And they also had suffered hunger, thirst, and all kinds of afflictions. Nevertheless, they were patient in all their sufferings. And, as it happened, it was their lot to have fallen into the hands of a more hardened and a more stiff-necked people. Therefore, they would not hearken unto their words, and they had cast them out, and had smitten them, and had driven them from house to house, and from place to place even until they had arrived in the land of Medoni. And there they were taken and cast into prison, and bound with strong cords, and kept in prison for many days, and were delivered by Lamoni and Ammon. An account of the preaching of Aaron and Mulekai and their brethren to the Lamanites. Comprising chapters 21 through 25. Chapter 21. Aaron teaches the Amalekites about Christ and his atonement. Aaron and his brethren are imprisoned in Madonai. After their deliverance, they teach in the synagogues and make many converts. Lamoni grants religious freedom to the people in the land of Ishmael, about 90 through 77 B.C. Now when Ammon and his brethren separated themselves in the borders of the land of the Lamanites, behold, Aaron took his journey towards the land which was called by the Lamanites Jerusalem, calling it after the land of their father's nativity. And it was a way joining the borders of Mormon. Now the Lamanites and the Amalekites and the people of Amulon had built a great city, which was called Jerusalem. Now the Lamanites of themselves were sufficiently hardened. But the Amalekites and the Amulonites were still harder. Therefore, they did cause the Lamanites that they should harden their hearts, that they should wax strong in wickedness and their abominations. And it came to pass that Aaron came to the city of Jerusalem and first began to preach to the Amalekites. And he began to preach to them in their synagogues, for they had built synagogues after the order of the Nehors. For many of the Amalekites and the Amulonites were after the order of the Nehors. Therefore, as Aaron entered into one of their synagogues to preach unto the people, and as he was speaking unto them, behold, there arose an Amalekite, and began to contend with him, saying, What is that thou hast testified? Hast thou seen an angel? Why do not angels appear unto us? Behold, are not this people as good as thy people? Thou also sayest, Except we repent, we shall perish. How knowest thou the thought and intent of our hearts? How knowest thou that we have cause to repent? How knowest thou that we are not a righteous people? Behold, we have built sanctuaries, and we do assemble ourselves together to worship God. We do believe that God will save all men. Now Aaron said unto him, Believest thou that the Son of God shall come to redeem mankind from their sins? And the man said unto him, we do not believe that thou knowest any such thing. We do not believe in these foolish traditions. We do not believe that thou knowest of things to come. Neither do we believe that thy fathers and also that our fathers did know concerning the things which they spake, of that which is to come. Now Aaron began to open the scriptures unto them concerning the coming of Christ, and also concerning the resurrection of the dead, and that there could be no redemption for mankind save it were through the death and sufferings of Christ, and the atonement of his blood. And it came to pass, as he began to expound these things unto them, they were angry with him, 
and began to mock him, and they would not hear the words which he spake. Therefore, when he saw that they would not hear his words, he departed out of their synagogue, and came over to a village which was called Aniantai. And there he found Mulekai preaching the word unto them, and also Amma and his brethren. And they contended with many about the word. And it came to pass that they saw that the people would harden their hearts. Therefore they departed and came over into the land of Medoni. And they did preach the word unto many, and few believed on the words which they taught. Nevertheless, Aaron and a certain number of his brethren were taken and cast into prison, and the remainder of them fled out of the land of Medoni under the regions round about. And those who were cast into prison suffered many things, and they were delivered by the hand of Lamoni and Ammon, and they were fed and clothed. And they went forth again to declare the word, and thus they were delivered for the first time out of prison, and thus they had suffered. And they went forth whithersoever they were led by the Spirit of the Lord, preaching the word of God in every synagogue of the Amalekites, or in every assembly of the Lamanites, where they could be admitted. And it came to pass that the Lord began to bless them, insomuch that they brought many to the knowledge of the truth. Yea, they did convince many of their sins, and of the traditions of their fathers, which were not correct. And it came to pass that Ammon and Lamoni returned from the land of Medoni to the land of Ishmael, which was the land of their inheritance. And King Lamoni would not suffer that Ammon should serve him or be his servant, but he caused that there should be synagogues built in the land of Ishmael. And he caused that his people, or the people who were under his reign, should assemble themselves together, and he did rejoice over them. And he did teach them many things, and he did also declare unto them that they were a people who were under him, and that they were a free people, that they were free from the oppressions of the king, his father, for that his father had granted unto him that he might reign over the people who were in the land of Ishmael, and in all the land round about. And he also declared unto them that they might have the liberty of worshipping the Lord their God according to their desires, in whatsoever place they were in, if it were in the land which was under the reign of King Lamoni. And Ammon did preach unto the people of King Lamoni. And it came to pass that he did teach them all things concerning things pertaining to righteousness. And he did exhort them daily with all diligence. And they gave heed unto his word, and they were zealous for keeping the commandments of God. Chapter 22 Aaron teaches Lamoni's father about the creation, the fall of Adam, and the plan of redemption through Christ. The king and all his household are converted. The division of the land between the Nephites and the Lamanites is explained. About 90 through 77 B.C. Now as Ammon was thus teaching the people of Lamoni continually, we will return to the account of Aaron and his brethren. For after he departed from the land of Medoni, he was led by the Spirit to the land of Nephi, even to the house of the king which was over all the land, save it were the land of Ishmael. And he was the father of Lamoni. And it came to pass that he went in unto him into the king's palace with his brethren, and bowed himself before the king, and said unto him, Behold, O king, we are the brethren of Ammon, whom thou hast delivered out of prison. And now, O king, if thou wilt spare our lives, we will be thy servants. And the king said unto them, Arise, for I will grant unto you your lives, and I will not suffer that ye shall be my servants, but I will insist that ye shall administer unto me, for I have been somewhat troubled in mind because of the generosity and the greatness of the words of thy brother Ammon. And I desire to know the cause why he has not come up out of Medoni with thee. And Aaron said unto the king, Behold, the Spirit of the Lord has called him another way. He has gone to the land of Ishmael to teach the people of Lamoni. Now the king said unto them, What is this that ye have said concerning the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, this is the thing which doth trouble me. And also, what is this that Ammon said? If ye will repent, ye shall be saved. And if ye will not repent, 
ye shall be cast off at the last day. And Aaron answered him and said unto him, Believest thou that there is a God? And the king said, I know that the Amalekites say that there is a God, and I have granted unto them that they should build sanctuaries, that they may assemble themselves together to worship him. And if now thou sayest there is a God, behold, I will believe. And now when Aaron heard this, his heart began to rejoice, and he said, Behold, assuredly as thou livest, O king, there is a God. And the king said, Is God that great spirit that brought our fathers out of the land of Jerusalem? And Aaron said unto him, Yea, he is that great spirit. And he created all things, both in heaven and in earth. Believest thou this? And he said, Yea, I believe that the great spirit created all things. And I desire that ye should tell me concerning all these things, and I will believe thy words. And it came to pass that when Aaron saw that the king would believe his words, he began from the creation of Adam, reading the scriptures unto the king, how God created man after his own image, and that God gave him commandments, and that because of transgression, man had fallen. And Aaron did expound unto him the scriptures from the creation of Adam laying the fall of man before him, and their carnal state, and also the plan of redemption, which was prepared from the foundation of the world through Christ for all whosoever would believe on his name. And since man had fallen, he could not merit anything of himself, but the sufferings and death of Christ atone for their sins, through faith and repentance, and so forth, and that he breaketh the bands of death, that the grave shall have no victory, and that the sting of death should be swallowed up in the hopes of glory. And Aaron did expound all these things unto the king. And it came to pass that after Aaron had expounded these things unto him, the king said, What shall I do that I may have this eternal life of which thou hast spoken? Yea, what shall I do that I may be born of God, having this wicked spirit rooted out of my breast, and receive his spirit? that I may be filled with joy, that I may not be cast off at the last day. Behold, said he, I will give up all that I possess, yea, I will forsake my kingdom, that I may receive this great joy. But Aaron said unto him, If thou desirest this thing, if thou wilt bow down before God, yea, if thou wilt repent of all thy sins, and will bow down before God, and call on his name in faith, believing that ye shall receive, then shalt thou receive the hope which thou desirest. And it came to pass that when Aaron had said these words, the king did bow down before the Lord upon his knees. Yea, even he did prostrate himself upon the earth, and cried mightily, saying, O God, Aaron hath told me that there is a God. And if there is a God, and if thou art God, Wilt thou make thyself known unto me? And I will give away all my sins to know thee, and that I may be raised from the dead, and be saved at the last day. And now when the king had said these words, he was struck as if he were dead. And it came to pass that his servants ran and told the queen all that had happened unto the king. And she came in unto the king. And when she saw him lay as if he were dead, and also Aaron and his brethren, standing as though they had been the cause of his fall, she was angry with them, and commanded that her servants, or the servants of the king, should take them and slay them. Now the servants had seen the cause of the king's fall. Therefore they durst not lay their hands on Aaron and his brethren. And they pled with the queen, saying, Why commandest thou that we should slay these men? when, behold, one of them is mightier than us all. Therefore we shall fall before them. Now when the queen saw the fear of the servants, she also began to fear exceedingly, lest there should some evil come upon her. And she commanded her servants that they should go and call the people, that they might slay Aaron and his brethren. Now when Aaron saw the determination of the queen, he, also knowing the hardness of the hearts of the people, feared, lest that a multitude should assemble themselves together. 
and there should be a great contention and a disturbance among them. Therefore he put forth his hand and raised the king from the earth, and said unto him, Stand. And he stood upon his feet, receiving his strength. Now this was done in the presence of the queen and many of the servants. And when they saw it, they greatly marveled and began to fear. And the king stood forth and began to minister unto them. And he did minister unto them, insomuch that his whole household were converted unto the Lord. Now there was a multitude gathered together because of the commandment of the queen, and there began to be great murmurings among them because of Aaron and his brethren. But the king stood forth among them and administered unto them, and they were pacified towards Aaron and those who were with him. And it came to pass that when the king saw that the people were pacified, he caused that Aaron and his brethren should stand forth in the midst of the multitude, and that they should preach the word unto them. And it came to pass that the king sent a proclamation throughout all the land, amongst all his people who were in all his land, who were in all the regions round about, which was bordering even to the sea, on the east and on the west, and which was divided from the land of Zarahemla by a narrow strip of wilderness, which ran from the sea east even to the sea west, and round about on the borders of the seashore, and the borders of the wilderness which was on the north by the land of Zarahemla, through the borders of Manti, by the head of the river Sidon, running from the east towards the west. And thus were the Lamanites and the Nephites divided. Now the more idle part of the Lamanites lived in the wilderness and dwelt in tents, and they were spread through the wilderness on the west in the land of Nephi, yea, and also on the west of the land of Zarahemla, in the borders by the seashore, and on the west in the land of Nephi, in the place of their father's first inheritance, and thus bordering along by the seashore. And also there were many Lamanites on the east by the seashore, whither the Nephites had driven them. And thus the Nephites were nearly surrounded by the Lamanites. Nevertheless, the Nephites had taken possession of all the northern parts of the land bordering on the wilderness, at the head of the river Sidon, from the east to the west, round about on the wilderness side, on the north, even until they came to the land which they call Bountiful. And it bordered upon the land which they called Desolation, it being so far northward that it came into the land which had been peopled and been destroyed, of whose bones we have spoken, which was discovered by the people of Zarahemla, it being the place of their first landing. And they came from there up into the south wilderness. Thus the land on the northward was called Desolation, and the land on the southward was called Bountiful, it being the wilderness which is filled with all manner of wild animals of every kind, a part of which had come from the land northward for food. And now it was only the distance of a day and a half's journey for a Nephite, on the line Bountiful and the land Desolation, from the east to the west sea. And thus the land of Nephi and the land of Zarahemla were nearly surrounded by water, there being a small neck of land between the land northward and the land southward. And it came to pass that the Nephites had inhabited the land bountiful, even from the east unto the west sea. And thus the Nephites in their wisdom, with their guards and their armies, had hemmed in the Lamanites on the south, that thereby they should have no more possession on the north that they might not overrun the land northward. Therefore, the Lamanites could have no more possessions, only in the land of Nephi and the wilderness round about. Now this was wisdom in the Nephites. As the Lamanites were an enemy to them, they would not suffer their afflictions on every hand, and also that they might have a country whither they might flee, according to their desires. And now I, after having said this, return again to the account of Ammon and Aaron, Omner and Hemni, and their brethren. Chapter 23 Religious Freedom is Proclaimed. The Lamanites in seven lands and cities are converted. They call themselves anti Nephi Lehi's and are freed from the curse. The Amalekites and the Amulonites reject the truth. About 90 through 77 BC. Behold, now it came to pass that the king of the Lamanites sent a proclamation among all his people that they should not lay their hands on Ammon 
or Aaron, or Omner, or Himni, nor either of their brethren who should go forth preaching the word of God, in whatsoever place they should be, in any part of their land. Yea, he sent a decree among them, that they should not lay their hands on them to bind them, or to cast them into prison. Neither should they spit upon them, nor smite them, nor cast them out of their synagogues, nor scourge them. Neither should they cast stones at them, but that they should have free access to their houses, and also their temples, and their sanctuaries. And thus they might go forth and preach the word according to their desires. For the king had been converted unto the Lord, and all his household. Therefore he sent his proclamation throughout the land unto his people, that the word of God might have no obstruction, but that it might go forth throughout all the land, that his people might be convinced concerning the wicked traditions of their fathers, and that they might be convinced that they were all brethren, and that they ought not to murder, nor to plunder, nor to steal, nor to commit adultery, nor to commit any manner of wickedness. And now it came to pass that when the king had sent forth this proclamation, that Aaron and his brethren went forth from city to city and from one house of worship to another, establishing churches and consecrating priests and teachers throughout the land among the Lamanites, to preach and to teach the word of God among them. And thus they began to have great success, and thousands were brought to the knowledge of the Lord, yea, thousands were brought to believe in the traditions of the Nephites, and they were taught the records and prophecies which were handed down even to the present time. And as sure as the Lord liveth, so sure as many as believe, or as many as were brought to the knowledge of the truth, through the preaching of Ammon and his brethren, according to the spirit of revelation and of prophecy, and the power of God working miracles in them, yea, I say unto you, as the Lord liveth, as many of the Lamanites as believed in their preaching, and were converted unto the Lord, never did fall away, for they became a righteous people. They did lay down the weapons of their rebellion, but they did not fight against God any more, neither against any of their brethren. Now these are they who were converted unto the Lord, the people of the Lamanites who were in the land of Ishmael, and also of the people of the Lamanites who were in the land of Madoni, and also of the people of the Lamanites who were in the city of Nephi, and also of the people of the Lamanites who were in the land of Shilom, and who were in the land of Shemlon, and in the city of Lemuel, and in the city of Shemnilam. And these are the names of the cities of the Lamanites which were converted unto the Lord. And these are they that laid down the weapons of their rebellion, yea, all their weapons of war. And they were all Lamanites, and the Amalekites were not converted, save only one, neither were any of the Amulonites, but they did harden their hearts, and also the hearts of the Lamanites in that part of the land wheresoever they dwelt, yea, and all their villages and all their cities. Therefore we have named all the cities of the Lamanites in which they did repent and come to the knowledge of the truth and were converted. And now it came to pass that the king and those who were converted were desirous that they might have a name that thereby they might be distinguished from their brethren. Therefore the king consulted with Aaron and many of their priests concerning the name that they should take upon them, that they might be distinguished. And it came to pass that they called their names Anti-Nephi-Lehi's, and they were called by this name and were no more called Lamanites. And they began to be a very industrious people, yea, and they were friendly with the Nephites. Therefore they did open a correspondence with them, and the curse of God did no more follow them. Chapter 24 The Lamanites come against the people of God. The anti-Nephi-Lehi's rejoice in Christ and are visited by angels. They choose to suffer death rather than to defend themselves. More Lamanites are converted. About 90 through 77 B.C. And it came to pass that the Amalekites, and the Amulonites, and the Lamanites who were in the land of Amulon, and also in the land of Helam, and who were in the land of Jerusalem, and in Fine, in all the land round about, who had not been converted, and had not taken upon them the name of Anti-Nephi-Lehi, 
were stirred up by the Amalekites and by the Amulonites to anger against their brethren, and their hatred became exceedingly sore against them, even insomuch that they began to rebel against their king, insomuch that they would not that he should be their king. Therefore, they took up arms against the people of Anti Nephi Lehi. Now the king conferred the kingdom upon his son, and he called his name Anti Nephi Lehi. And the king died in that selfsame year that the Lamanites began to make preparations for war against the people of God. Now, when Ammon and his brethren and all those who had come up with him saw the preparations of the Lamanites to destroy their brethren, they came forth to the land of Midian, and there Ammon met all his brethren. And from thence they came to the land of Ishmael, that they might hold a council with Lamoni and also with his brother Anti-Nephi-Lehi, what they should do to defend themselves against the Lamanites. Now there was not one soul among all the people who had been converted unto the Lord that would take up arms against their brethren. Nay, they would not even make any preparations for war. Yea, and also their king commanded them that they should not. Now these are the words which he said unto the people concerning the matter. I thank my God, my beloved people, that our great God has in goodness sent these our brethren, the Nephites, unto us to preach unto us, and to convince us of the traditions of our wicked fathers. And behold, I thank my great God that he has given us a portion of his Spirit to soften our hearts, that we have opened a correspondence with these brethren, the Nephites. And behold, I also thank my God that by opening this correspondence we have been convinced of our sins and of the many murders which we have committed. And I also thank my God, yea, my great God, that he hath granted unto us that we might repent of these things, and also that he hath forgiven us of those our many sins and murders which we have committed, and taken away the guilt from our hearts through the merits of his Son. And now behold, my brethren, since it has been all that we could do, as we were the most lost of all mankind, to repent of all our sins and the many murders which we have committed, and to get God to take them away from our hearts, for it was all we could do to repent sufficiently before God that he would take away our stain. Now, my best beloved brethren, since God has taken away our stains and our swords have become bright, then let us stain our swords no more with the blood of our brethren. Behold, I say unto you, Nay, let us retain our swords, that they be not stained with the blood of our brethren. For perhaps, if we should stain our swords again, they can no more be washed bright through the blood of the Son of our great God, which shall be shed for the atonement of our sins. And the great God has had mercy on us, and made these things known unto us, that we might not perish. Yea, and he has made these things known unto us beforehand because he loveth our souls as well as he loveth our children. Therefore, in his mercy, he doth visit us by his angels, that the plan of salvation might be made known unto us as well as unto future generations. Oh, how merciful is our God! And now, behold, since it has been as much as we could do to get our stains taken away from us, and our swords are made bright, let us hide them away that they may be kept bright as a testimony to our God at the last day, or at the day that we shall be brought to stand before him to be judged, that we have not stained our swords in the blood of our brethren, since he imparted his word unto us, and has made us clean thereby. And now, my brethren, if our brethren seek to destroy us, behold, we will hide away our swords, yea, even we will bury them deep in the earth, that they may be kept bright as a testimony that we have never used them at the last day. And if our brethren destroy us, behold, we shall go to our God, and shall be saved. And now it came to pass, that when the king had made an end of these sayings, and all the people were assembled together, they took their swords, and all the weapons which were used for the shedding of man's blood, and they did bury them up deep in the earth. And this they did it being in their view a testimony to God and also to men that they never would use weapons again for the shedding of man's blood. And this they did, vouching and covenanting with God, that rather than shed the blood of their brethren, 
they would give up their own lives. And rather than take away from a brother, they would give unto him. And rather than spend their days in idleness, they would labor abundantly with their hands. And thus we see that when these Lamanites were brought to believe and to know the truth, they were firm and would suffer even unto death rather than commit sin. And thus we see that they buried their weapons of peace, or they buried the weapons of war for peace. And it came to pass that their brethren the Lamanites made preparations for war and came up to the land of Nephi for the purpose of destroying the king and to place another in his stead, and also of destroying the people of anti-Nephi-Lehi out of the land. Now when the people saw that they were coming against them, they went out to meet them and prostrated themselves before them to the earth and began to call on the name of the Lord. And thus they were in this attitude when the Lamanites began to fall upon them and began to slay them with the sword. And thus, without meeting any resistance, they did slay a thousand and five of them. And we know that they are blessed, for they have gone to dwell with their God. Now when the Lamanites saw that their brethren would not flee from the sword, neither would they turn aside to the right hand or to the left, but that they would lie down and perish, and praised God even in the very act of perishing under the sword. Now when the Lamanites saw this, they did forbear from slaying them. And there were many whose hearts had swollen in them for those of their brethren who had fallen under the sword, for they repented of the things which they had done. And it came to pass that they threw down their weapons of war, and they would not take them again, for they were stung for the murders which they had committed. And they came down even as their brethren, relying upon the mercies of those whose arms were lifted to slay them. And it came to pass that the people of God were joined that day by more than the number who had been slain. And those who had been slain were righteous people. Therefore, we have no reason to doubt but what they were saved. And there was not a wicked man slain among them, but there were more than a thousand brought to the knowledge of the truth. Thus we see that the Lord worketh in many ways to the salvation of his people. Now the greatest number of those of the Lamanites, who slew so many of their brethren, were Amalekites and Amulonites, the greatest number of whom were after the order of the Nehors. Now among those who joined the people of the Lord, there were none who were Amalekites or Amulonites, or who were of the order of Nehor, but they were actual descendants of Laman and Lemuel. And thus we can plainly discern that after a people have been once enlightened by the Spirit of God and have had great knowledge of things pertaining to righteousness and then have fallen away into sin and transgression, they become more hardened, and thus their state becomes worse than though they had never known these things. Chapter 25 Lamanite Aggressions Spread The Seed of the Priests of Noah Perish as Abinadi Prophesied Many Lamanites are converted and join the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi. They believe in Christ and keep the law of Moses. About 90 through 77 B.C. And behold, now it came to pass that those Lamanites were more angry because they had slain their brethren. Therefore they swore vengeance upon the Nephites, and they did no more attempt to slay the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi at that time. But they took their armies and went over into the borders of the land of Zarahemla and fell upon the people who were in the land of Ammonihah and destroyed them. And after that, they had many battles with the Nephites in the which they were driven and slain. And among the Lamanites who were slain were almost all the seed of Amulon and his brethren who were the priests of Noah. And they were slain by the hands of the Nephites. And the remainder having fled into the east wilderness, and having usurped the power and authority over the Lamanites, caused that many of the Lamanites should perish by fire because of their belief. For many of them, after having suffered much loss and so many afflictions, began to be stirred up in remembrance of the words which Aaron and his brethren had preached to them in their land. Therefore, they began to disbelieve the traditions of their fathers, and to believe in the Lord, and that he gave great power unto the Nephites. And thus there were many of them converted in the wilderness. And it came to pass that those rulers who were the remnant of the children of Amulon 
caused that they should be put to death, yea, all those that believed in these things. Now this martyrdom caused that many of their brethren should be stirred up to anger, and there began to be contention in the wilderness. And the Lamanites began to hunt the seed of Amulon and his brethren, and began to slay them. And they fled into the east wilderness, and behold, they are hunted at this day by the Lamanites. Thus the words of Abinadi were brought to pass, which he said concerning the seed of the priests who caused that he should suffer death by fire. For he said unto them, What ye shall do unto me shall be a type of things to come. And now Abinadi was the first that suffered death by fire because of his belief in God. Now this is what he meant, that many should suffer death by fire, according as he had suffered. And he said unto the priests of Noah, that their seed should cause many to be put to death, in the like manner as he was, and that they should be scattered abroad and slain, even as a sheep having no shepherd is driven and slain by wild beasts. And now behold, these words were verified, for they were driven by the Lamanites, and they were hunted, and they were smitten. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites saw that they could not overpower the Nephites, they returned again to their own land. And many of them came over to dwell in the land of Ishmael and the land of Nephi, and did join themselves to the people of God, who were the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi. And they did also bury their weapons of war, according as their brethren had. And they began to be a righteous people. And they did walk in the ways of the Lord, and did observe to keep his commandments and his statutes. Yea, and they did keep the law of Moses, for it was expedient that they should keep the law of Moses as yet, for it was not all fulfilled. But notwithstanding the law of Moses, they did look forward to the coming of Christ, considering that the law of Moses was a type of his coming, and believing that they must keep those outward performances until the time that he should be revealed unto them. Now they did not suppose that salvation came by the law of Moses. But the law of Moses did serve to strengthen their faith in Christ. And thus they did retain a hope through faith unto eternal salvation, relying upon the spirit of prophecy, which spake of those things to come. And now behold, Ammon and Aaron and Omner and Himni and their brethren did rejoice exceedingly for the success which they had had among the Lamanites seeing that the Lord had granted unto them according to their prayers, and that he had also verified his word unto them in every particular. Chapter 26 Ammon glories in the Lord. The faithful are strengthened by the Lord and are given knowledge. By faith men may bring thousands of souls unto repentance. God has all power and comprehends all things. About 90 through 77 B.C. And now, these are the words of Ammon to his brethren, which say thus, My brothers and my brethren, behold, I say unto you, how great reason have we to rejoice. For could we have supposed when we started from the land of Zarahemla that God would have granted unto us such great blessings? And now I ask, what great blessings has he bestowed upon us? Can ye tell? Behold, I answer for you. For our brethren the Lamanites were in darkness, yea, even in the darkest abyss. But behold, how many of them are brought to behold the marvelous light of God. And this is the blessing which hath been bestowed upon us, that we have been made instruments in the hands of God to bring about this great work. Behold, thousands of them do rejoice, and have been brought into the fold of God. Behold, the field was ripe, and blessed are ye, for ye did thrust in the sickle, and did reap with your might, yea, all the day long did ye labor. And behold the number of your sheaves, and they shall be gathered into the garners, that they are not wasted. Yea, they shall not be beaten down by the storm at the last day. Yea, neither shall they be harrowed up by the whirlwinds. But when the storm cometh, they shall be gathered together in their place, that the storm cannot penetrate to them. Yea, Neither shall they be driven with fierce winds, whithersoever the enemy listeth to carry them. But behold, they are in the hands of the Lord of the harvest, and they are his, and he will raise them up at the last day. 
Blessed be the name of our God. Let us sing to his praise, yea, let us give thanks to his holy name, for he doth work righteousness forever. For if we had not come up out of the land of Zarahemla, these our dearly beloved brethren, who have so dearly beloved us, would still have been racked with hatred against us, yea, and they would also have been strangers to God. And it came to pass that when Ammon had said these words, his brother Aaron rebuked him, saying, Ammon, I fear that thy joy doth carry thee away unto boasting. But Ammon said unto him, I do not boast in my own strength, nor in my own wisdom. But behold, my joy is full, yea, my heart is brim with joy, and I will rejoice in my God. Yea, I know that I am nothing. As to my strength, I am weak. Therefore I will not boast of myself, but I will boast of my God, for in his strength I can do all things. Yea, behold, many mighty miracles we have wrought in this land, for which we will praise his name forever. Behold, how many thousands of our brethren has he loosed from the pains of hell, and they are brought to sing redeeming love, and this because of the power of his word which is in us. Therefore, have we not great reason to rejoice? Yea, we have reason to praise him forever, for he is the most high God, and has loosed our brethren from the chains of hell. Yea, they were encircled about with everlasting darkness and destruction. But behold, he has brought them into his everlasting light, yea, into everlasting salvation. And they are encircled about with the matchless bounty of his love. Yea, and we have been instruments in his hands of doing this great and marvelous work. Therefore, let us glory. Yea, we will glory in the Lord. Yea, we will rejoice, for our joy is full. Yea, we will praise our God forever. Behold, who can glory too much in the Lord? Yea, who can say too much of his great power and of his mercy and of his long suffering towards the children of men? Behold, I say unto you, I cannot say the smallest part which I feel. Who could have supposed that our God would have been so merciful as to have snatched us from our awful, sinful, and polluted state? Behold, we went forth even in wrath, with mighty threatenings to destroy his church. Oh then, why did he not consign us to an awful destruction? Yea, why did he not let the sword of his justice fall upon us, and doom us to eternal despair? O oh, my soul, almost as it were, fleeth at the thought. Behold, he did not exercise his justice upon us, but in his great mercy hath brought us over that everlasting gulf of death and misery, even to the salvation of our souls. And now behold, my brethren, what natural man is there that knoweth these things? I say unto you, there is none that knoweth these things, save it be the penitent. Yea, he that repenteth and exerciseth faith, and bringeth forth good works, and prayeth continually without ceasing, unto such it is given to know the mysteries of God. Yea, unto such it shall be given to reveal things which never have been revealed. Yea, and it shall be given unto such to bring thousands of souls to repentance, even as it has been given unto us to bring these our brethren to repentance. Now do ye remember, my brethren, that we said unto our brethren in the land of Zarahemla, We go up to the land of Nephi, to preach unto our brethren the Lamanites. And they laughed us to scorn, for they said unto us, Do ye suppose that ye can bring the Lamanites to the knowledge of the truth? Do ye suppose that ye can convince the Lamanites of the incorrectness of the traditions of their fathers, as stiff-necked a people as they are, whose hearts delight in the shedding of blood, whose days have been spent in the grossest iniquity, whose ways have been the ways of a transgressor from the beginning? Now, my brethren, ye remember that this was their language, and moreover they did say, Let us take up arms against them, that we destroy them and their iniquity out of the land, lest they overrun us and destroy us. But behold, my beloved brethren, we came into the wilderness not with the intent to destroy our brethren, but with the intent that perhaps we might save some few of their souls. Now when our hearts were depressed, and we were about to turn back, Behold, 
the Lord comforted us and said, Go amongst thy brethren, the Lamanites, and bear with patience thine afflictions, and I will give unto you success. And now, behold, we have come, and been forth amongst them, and we have been patient in our sufferings, and we have suffered every privation, yea, we have traveled from house to house, relying upon the mercies of the world, not upon the mercies of the world alone, but upon the mercies of God. And we have entered into their houses and taught them, and we have taught them in their streets, yea, and we have taught them upon their hills, and we have also entered into their temples and their synagogues and taught them. And we have been cast out and mocked and spit upon and smote upon our cheeks, and we have been stoned and taken and bound with strong cords and cast into prison. And through the power and wisdom of God, we have been delivered again, and we have suffered all manner of afflictions, and all this, that perhaps we might be the means of saving some soul. And we suppose that our joy would be full if perhaps we could be the means of saving some. Now behold, we can look forth and see the fruits of our labors. And are they few? I say unto you, Nay, they are many. Yea, and we can witness of their sincerity, because of their love towards their brethren, and also towards us. For behold, they had rather sacrifice their lives than even to take the life of their enemy. And they have buried their weapons of war deep in the earth, because of their love towards their brethren. And now, behold, I say unto you, has there been so great love in all the land? Behold, I say unto you, Nay, there has not, even among the Nephites. For behold, they would take up arms against their brethren, they would not suffer themselves to be slain. But behold, how many of these have laid down their lives? And we know that they have gone to their God, because of their love and of their hatred to sin. Now have we not reason to rejoice? Yea, I say unto you, there never were men that had so great reason to rejoice as we, since the world began. Yea, and my joy is carried away, even unto boasting in my God. For he has all power, all wisdom, and all understanding. He comprehendeth all things, and he is a merciful being, even unto salvation, to those who will repent and believe on his name. Now if this is boasting, even so will I boast, for this is my life and my light, my joy and my salvation, and my redemption from everlasting woe. Yea, blessed is the name of my God, who has been mindful of this people, who are a branch of the tree of Israel, and has been lost from its body in a strange land. Yea, I say, blessed be the name of my God, who has been mindful of us, wanderers in a strange land. Now, my brethren, we see that God is mindful of every people, whatsoever land they may be in. Yea, he numbereth his people, and his bowels of mercy are over all the earth. Now this is my joy and my great thanksgiving. Yea, and I will give thanks unto my God forever. Amen. Chapter 27 The Lord commands Ammon to lead the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi to safety. Upon meeting Alma, Ammon's joy exhausts his strength. The Nephites give the Anti-Nephi-Lehi's the land of Jershon. They are called the people of Ammon, about 90 through 77 B.C. Now it came to pass that when those Lamanites who had gone to war against the Nephites had found, after their many struggles to destroy them, that it was in vain to seek their destruction, they returned again to the land of Nephi. And it came to pass that the Amalekites, because of their loss, were exceedingly angry. And when they saw that they could not seek revenge from the Nephites, they began to stir up the people in anger against their brethren, the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi. Therefore they began again to destroy them. Now this people again refused to take their arms, and they suffered themselves to be slain according to the desires of their enemies. Now when Ammon and his brethren saw this work of destruction among those whom they so dearly beloved, and among those who had so dearly beloved them, for they were treated as though they were angels sent from God to save them from everlasting destruction, therefore 
When Ammon and his brethren saw this great work of destruction, they were moved with compassion, and they said unto the king, Let us gather together this people of the Lord, and let us go down to the land of Zarahemla to our brethren the Nephites, and flee out of the hands of our enemies, that we be not destroyed. But the king said unto them, Behold, the Nephites will destroy us, because of the many murders and sins we have committed against them. And Ammon said, I will go and inquire of the Lord. And if he say unto us, Go down unto our brethren, will ye go? And the king said unto him, Yea, if the Lord saith unto us, Go, we will go down unto our brethren, and we will be their slaves until we repair unto them the many murders and sins which we have committed against them. But Ammon said unto him, It is against the law of our brethren, which was established by my father, that there should be any slaves among them. Therefore, let us go down and rely upon the mercies of our brethren. But the king said unto him, Inquire of the Lord, and if he saith unto us, Go, we will go. Otherwise, we will perish in the land. And it came to pass that Ammon went and inquired of the Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Get this people out of this land, that they perish not. For Satan has great hold on the hearts of the Amalekites, who do stir up the Lamanites to anger against their brethren to slay them. Therefore, get thee out of this land. And blessed are this people in this generation, for I will preserve them. And now it came to pass that Ammon went and told the king all the words which the Lord had said unto him. And they gathered together all their people, yea, all the people of the Lord, and did gather together all their flocks and herds, and departed out of the land, and came into the wilderness which divided the land of Nephi from the land of Zarahemla, and came over near the borders of the land. And it came to pass that Ammon said unto them, Behold, I and my brethren will go forth into the land of Zarahemla, and ye shall remain here until we return. And we will try the hearts of our brethren, whether they will that ye shall come into their land. And it came to pass that as Ammon was going forth into the land, that he and his brethren met Alma, over in the place of which has been spoken. And behold, this was a joyful meeting. Now the joy of Ammon was so great, even that he was full. Yea, he was swallowed up in the joy of his God, even to the exhausting of his strength, and he fell again to the earth. Now was not this exceeding joy? Behold, this is joy which none receiveth, save it be the truly penitent and humble seeker of happiness. Now the joy of Alma in meeting his brethren was truly great, and also the joy of Aaron, of Omner, and Hemni. But behold, their joy was not that to exceed their strength. And now it came to pass that Alma conducted his brethren back to the land of Zarahemla, even to his own house. And they went and told the chief judge all the things that had happened unto them in the land of Nephi, among their brethren the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the chief judge sent a proclamation throughout all the land, desiring the voice of the people concerning the admitting their brethren, who were the people of anti-Nephi-Lehi. And it came to pass that the voice of the people came, saying, Behold, we will give up the land of Jershon, which is on the east by the sea, which joins the land bountiful, which is on the south of the land bountiful. And this land Jershon is the land which we will give unto our brethren for an inheritance. And behold, we will set our armies between the land Jershon and the land Nephi, that we may protect our brethren in the land Jershon. And this we do for our brethren, on account of their fear to take up arms against their brethren, lest they should commit sin. And this their great fear came because of their sore repentance which they had, on account of their many murders and their awful wickedness. And now behold, this will we do unto our brethren, that they may inherit the land Jershon, and we will guard them from their enemies with our armies, on condition that they will give us a portion of their substance to assist us, that we may maintain our armies. Now it came to pass that when Ammon had heard this, he returned to the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi, and also Alma with him, into the wilderness where they had pitched their tents, and made known unto them all these things. And Alma also related unto them his conversion with Ammon and Aaron and his brethren. 
And it came to pass that it did cause great joy among them. And they went down into the land of Jershon, and took possession of the land of Jershon. And they were called by the Nephites the people of Ammon. Therefore they were distinguished by that name ever after. And they were among the people of Nephi, and also numbered among the people who were of the church of God. And they were also distinguished for their zeal towards God, and also towards men. For they were perfectly honest and upright in all things. And they were firm in the faith of Christ, even unto the end. And they did look upon shedding the blood of their brethren with the greatest abhorrence. And they never could be prevailed upon to take up arms against their brethren. And they never did look upon death with any degree of terror, for their hope and views of Christ and the resurrection. Therefore, death was swallowed up to them by the victory of Christ over it. Therefore, they would suffer death in the most aggravating and distressing manner which could be inflicted by their brethren before they would take the sword or scimitar to smite them. And thus they were a zealous and beloved people, a highly favored people of the Lord. Chapter 28 The Lamanites are defeated in a tremendous battle. Tens of thousands are slain. The wicked are consigned to a state of endless woe. The righteous attain a never-ending happiness. About 77 through 76 B.C. And now it came to pass that after the people of Ammon were established in the land of Jershon, and a church also established in the land of Jershon, and the armies of the Nephites were set round about the land of Jershon, yea, in all the borders round about the land of Zarahemla, behold, the armies of the Lamanites had followed their brethren into the wilderness. And thus there was a tremendous battle, yea, even such an one as never had been known among all the people in the land from the time Lehi left Jerusalem, yea, and tens of thousands of the Lamanites were slain and scattered abroad. Yea, and also there was a tremendous slaughter among the people of Nephi. Nevertheless, the Lamanites were driven and scattered, and the people of Nephi returned again to their land. And now this was a time that there was a great mourning and lamentation heard throughout all the land, among all the people of Nephi. Yea, the cry of widows mourning for their husbands, and also of fathers mourning for their sons, and the daughter for the brother, yea, the brother for the father. And thus the cry of mourning was heard among all of them, mourning for their kindred who had been slain. And now, surely, this was a sorrowful day, yea, a time of solemnity, and a time of much fasting and prayer. And thus ended the fifteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And this is the account of Ammon and his brethren, their journeyings in the land of Nephi, their sufferings in the land, their sorrows, and their afflictions, and their incomprehensible joy, and the reception and safety of the brethren in the land of Jershon. And now may the Lord, the Redeemer of all men, bless their souls forever. And this is the account of the wars and contentions among the Nephites, and also the wars between the Nephites and the Lamanites. And the fifteenth year of the reign of the judges is ended, and from the first year to the fifteenth has brought to pass the destruction of many thousand lives. Yea, it has brought to pass an awful scene of bloodshed. And the bodies of many thousands are laid low in the earth, while the bodies of many thousands are moldering in heaps upon the face of the earth. Yea, and many thousands are mourning for the loss of their kindred, because they have reason to fear, according to the promises of the Lord, that they are consigned to a state of endless woe. While many thousands of others truly mourn for the loss of their kindred, yet they rejoice and exult in the hope, and even know, according to the promises of the Lord, that they are raised to dwell at the right hand of God in a state of never-ending happiness. And thus we see how great the inequality of man is because of sin and transgression and the power of the devil, which comes by the cunning plans which he hath devised to ensnare the hearts of men. And thus we see the great call of diligence of men to labor in the vineyards of the Lord. And thus we see the great reason of sorrow and also of rejoicing. Sorrow because of death and destruction among men. 
and joy because of the light of Christ unto life. Chapter 29 Alma desires to cry repentance with angelic zeal. The Lord grants teachers for all nations. Alma glories in the Lord's work and in the success of Ammon and his brethren. About 76 B.C. Oh, that I were an angel, and could have the wish of mine heart, that I might go forth and speak with the trump of God, with a voice to shake the earth, and cry repentance unto every people. Yea, I would declare unto every soul, as with the voice of thunder, repentance and the plan of redemption, that they should repent and come unto our God, that there might not be more sorrow upon all the face of the earth. But behold, I am a man, and do sin in my wish, for I ought to be content with the things which the Lord hath allotted unto me. I ought not to harrow up in my desires the firm decree of a just God. For I know that he granteth unto men according to their desire, whether it be unto death or unto life. Yea, I know that he allotteth unto men, yea, decreeth unto them decrees which are unalterable, according to their wills, whether they be unto salvation or unto destruction. Yea, and I know that good and evil have come before all men. He that knoweth not good from evil is blameless. But he that knoweth good and evil, to him it is given according to his desires, whether he desireth good or evil, life or death, joy or remorse of conscience. Now seeing that I know these things, why should I desire more than to perform the work to which I have been called? Why should I desire that I were an angel? that I could speak unto all the ends of the earth. For behold, the Lord doth grant unto all nations, of their own nation and tongue, to teach his word, yea, in wisdom, all that he seeth fit that they should have. Therefore we see that the Lord doth counsel in wisdom, according to that which is just and true. I know that which the Lord hath commanded me, and I glory in it. I do not glory of myself but I glory in that which the Lord hath commanded me. Yea, and this is my glory, that perhaps I may be an instrument in the hands of God to bring some soul to repentance. And this is my joy. And behold, when I see many of my brethren truly penitent and coming to the Lord their God, then is my soul filled with joy. Then do I remember what the Lord has done for me. Yea, even that he hath heard my prayer. Yea, then do I remember his merciful arm which he extended towards me. Yea, and I also remember the captivity of my fathers. For I surely do know that the Lord did deliver them out of bondage, and by this did establish his church. Yea, the Lord God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob did deliver them out of bondage. Yea, I have always remembered the captivity of my fathers, and that same God who delivered them out of the hands of the Egyptians did deliver them out of bondage. Yea, and that same God did establish his church among them. Yea, and that same God hath called me by a holy calling to preach the word unto this people, and hath given me much success, in the which my joy is full. But I do not joy in my own success alone but my joy is more full because of the success of my brethren, who have been up to the land of Nephi. Behold, they have labored exceedingly, and have brought forth much fruit, and how great shall be their reward. Now when I think of the success of these my brethren, my soul is carried away, even to the separation of it from the body, as it were, so great is my joy. And now may God grant unto these my brethren, that they may sit down in the kingdom of God, yea, and also all those who are the fruit of their labors, that they may go no more out, but that they may praise him forever. And may God grant that it may be done according to my words, even as I have spoken. Amen. Chapter 30 Korahor the Antichrist ridicules Christ, the Atonement, and the Spirit of Prophecy. He teaches that there is no God no fall of man, no penalty for sin, and no Christ. Alma testifies that Christ will come, and that all things denote there is a God. 
Korahor demands a sign and is struck dumb. The devil had appeared to Korahor as an angel and taught him what to say. Korahor is trodden down and dies, about 76 through 74 B.C. Behold, now it came to pass that after the people of Ammon were established in the land of Jershon, yea, and also after the Lamanites were driven out of the land, and their dead were buried by the people of the land, now their dead were not numbered because of the greatness of their numbers, neither were the dead of the Nephites numbered. But it came to pass, after they had buried their dead, and also after the days of fasting and mourning and prayer, and it was in the sixteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, there began to be continual peace throughout all the land. Yea, and the people did observe to keep the commandments of the Lord, and they were strict in observing the ordinances of God according to the law of Moses. For they were taught to keep the law of Moses until it should be fulfilled, and thus the people did have no disturbance in all the sixteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And it came to pass that in the commencement of the seventeenth year of the reign of the judges there was continual peace. But it came to pass in the latter end of the seventeenth year there came a man into the land of Zarahemla, and he was Antichrist, for he began to preach unto the people against the prophecies which had been spoken by the prophets concerning the coming of Christ. Now there was no law against a man's belief, for it was strictly contrary to the commands of God that there should be a law which should bring men onto unequal grounds. For thus saith the Scripture, Choose ye this day whom ye will serve, now if a man desired to serve God, it was his privilege, or rather, if he believed in God, it was his privilege to serve him. But if he did not believe in him, there was no law to punish him. But if he murdered, he was punished unto death, and if he robbed, he was also punished, and if he stole, he was also punished, and if he committed adultery, he was also punished. Yea, for all this wickedness they were punished. For there was a law that men should be judged according to their crimes. Nevertheless, there was no law against a man's belief. Therefore, a man was punished only for the crimes which he had done. Therefore, all men were on equal grounds. And this Antichrist, whose name was Korahor, and the law could have no hold upon him, began to preach unto the people that there should be no Christ. And after this manner did he preach, saying, O ye that are bound down under a foolish and a vain hope, why do ye yoke yourselves with such foolish things? Why do ye look for a Christ? For no man can know of anything which is to come. Behold, these things which ye call prophecies, which ye say are handed down by holy prophets, behold, they are foolish traditions of your fathers. How do ye know of their surety? Behold, ye cannot know of things which ye do not see. Therefore, ye cannot know that there shall be a Christ. Ye look forward and say that ye see a remission of your sins. But behold, it is the effect of a frenzied mind. And this derangement of your minds comes because of the traditions of your fathers, which lead you away into a belief of things which are not so. And many more such things did he say unto them telling them that there could be no atonement made for the sons of men. But every man fared in this life according to the management of the creature. Therefore, every man prospered according to his genius, and that every man conquered according to his strength. And whatsoever a man did was no crime, and thus he did preach unto them, leading away the hearts of many, causing them to lift up their heads in their wickedness, yea, leading away many women, and also men to commit whoredoms, telling them that when a man was dead, that was the end thereof. Now this man went over to the land of Jershon also to preach these things among the people of Ammon, who were once the people of the Lamanites. But behold, they were more wise than many of the Nephites, for they took him and bound him and carried him before Ammon, who was a high priest over that people. And it came to pass that he caused that he should be carried out of the land. And he came over into the land of Gideon, and began to preach unto them also. And here he did not have much success, 
for he was taken and bound and carried before the high priest, and also the chief judge over the land. And it came to pass that the high priest said unto him, Why do ye go about perverting the ways of the Lord? Why do ye teach this people that there shall be no Christ, to interrupt their rejoicings? Why do ye speak against all the prophecies of the holy prophets? Now the high priest's name was Gedona. And Korahor said unto him, Because I do not teach the foolish traditions of your fathers, and because I do not teach this people to bind themselves down under the foolish ordinances and performances which are laid down by ancient priests, to usurp power and authority over them, to keep them in ignorance, that they may not lift up their heads, but be brought down according to thy words. Ye say that this people is a free people. Behold, I say they are in bondage. Ye say that those ancient prophecies are true. Behold, I say that ye do not know that they are true. Ye say that this people is a guilty and a fallen people because of the transgression of a parent. Behold, I say that a child is not guilty because of its parents. And ye also say that Christ shall come. But behold, I say that ye do not know that there shall be a Christ. And ye say also that he shall be slain for the sins of the world. And thus ye lead away this people after the foolish traditions of your fathers, and according to your own desires. And ye keep them down, even as it were in bondage, that ye may glut yourselves with the labors of their hands, that they durst not look up with boldness, and that they durst not enjoy their rights and privileges. Yea, they durst not make use of that which is their own, lest they should offend their priests, who do yoke them according to their desires, and have brought them to believe, by their traditions, and their dreams, and their whims, and their visions, and their pretended mysteries, that they should, if they did not do according to their words, offend some unknown being who they say is God, a being who never has been seen or known, who never was nor ever will be. Now when the high priest and the chief judge saw the hardness of his heart, yea, when they saw that he would revile even against God, they would not make any reply to his words, but they caused that he should be bound and they delivered him up into the hands of the officers, and sent him to the land of Zarahemla, that he might be brought before Alma, and the chief judge who was governor over all the land. And it came to pass that when he was brought before Alma and the chief judge, he did go on in the same manner as he did in the land of Gideon. Yea, he went on to blaspheme, and he did rise up in great swelling words before Alma and did revile against the priests and teachers, accusing them of leading away the people after the silly traditions of their fathers for the sake of glutting on the labors of the people. Now Alma said unto him, Thou knowest that we do not glut ourselves upon the labors of this people. For behold, I have labored even from the commencement of the reign of the judges until now, with mine own hands for my support notwithstanding my many travels round about the land to declare the word of God unto my people, and notwithstanding the many labors which I have performed in the church, I have never received so much as even one senine for my labor. Neither has any of my brethren, save it were in the judgment seat, and then we have received only according to law for our time. And now, if we do not receive anything for our labors in the church, what doth it profit us to labor in the church save it were to declare the truth, that we may have rejoicings in the joy of our brethren? Then why sayest thou that we preach unto this people to get gain, when thou of thyself knowest that we receive no gain? And now, believest thou that we deceive this people, that causes such joy in our hearts? And Korahor answered him, Yea. And then Alma said unto him, Believest thou that there is a God? And he answered, Nay. Now Alma said unto him, Will ye deny again that there is a God, and also deny the Christ? For behold, I say unto you, I know there is a God, and also that Christ shall come. And now what evidence have ye that there is no God, or that Christ cometh not? 
I say unto you that ye have none, save it be your word only. But behold, I have all things as a testimony that these things are true. And ye also have all things as a testimony unto you that they are true. And will ye deny them? Believest thou that these things are true? Behold, I know that thou believest, but thou art possessed with a lying spirit. And ye have put off the Spirit of God, that it may have no place in you. But the devil has power over you, and he doth carry you about, working devices that he may destroy the children of God. And now Korahor said unto Alma, If thou wilt show me a sign, that I may be convinced that there is a God, yea, show unto me that he hath power, and then will I be convinced of the truth of thy words. But Alma said unto him, Thou hast had signs enough. Will ye tempt your God? Will ye say, Show unto me a sign, when ye have the testimony of all these thy brethren, and also all the holy prophets? The scriptures are laid before thee, yea, and all things denote there is a God. Yea, even the earth, and all things that are upon the face of it, yea, and its motion, yea, and also all the planets which move in their regular form, do witness that there is a supreme creator. And yet do ye go about, leading away the hearts of this people, testifying unto them there is no God? And yet will ye deny against all these witnesses? And he said, Yea, I will deny, except ye shall show me a sign. And now it came to pass that Alma said unto him, Behold, I am grieved because of the hardness of your heart. Yea, that ye will still resist the spirit of the truth, that thy soul may be destroyed. But behold, it is better that thy soul should be lost, than that thou shouldst be the means of bringing many souls down to destruction, by thy lying and by thy flattering words. Therefore, if thou shalt deny again, behold, God shall smite thee, that thou shalt become dumb, that thou shalt never open thy mouth any more, that thou shalt not deceive this people any more. Now Korahor said unto him, I do not deny the existence of a God, but I do not believe that there is a God. And I say also that ye do not know that there is a God, and except ye show me a sign, I will not believe. Now Alma said unto him, This will I give unto thee for a sign, that thou shalt be struck dumb according to my words. And I say that in the name of God ye shall be struck dumb, that ye shall no more have utterance. Now when Alma had said these words, Korahor was struck dumb, that he could not have utterance according to the words of Alma. And now when the chief judge saw this, he put forth his hand and wrote unto Korahor, saying, Art thou convinced of the power of God? In whom did ye desire that Alma should show forth his sign? Would ye that he should afflict others, to show unto thee a sign? Behold, he has showed unto you a sign, and now will ye dispute more. And Korahor put forth his hand and wrote, saying, I know that I am dumb, for I cannot speak, and I know that nothing save it were the power of God could bring this upon me. Yea, and I always knew that there was a God. But behold, the devil hath deceived me. For he appeared unto me in the form of an angel, and said unto me, Go and reclaim this people, for they have all gone astray after an unknown God. And he said unto me, There is no God. Yea, and he taught me that which I should say. And I have taught his words, and I taught them because they were pleasing unto the carnal mind. And I taught them, even until I had much success, insomuch that I verily believed that they were true. And for this cause I withstood the truth, even until I have brought this great curse upon me. Now when he had said this, he besought that Alma should pray unto God, that the curse might be taken from him. But Alma said unto him, If this curse should be taken from thee, thou wouldst again lead away the hearts of this people. Therefore, it shall be unto thee, even as the Lord will.
And it came to pass that the curse was not taken off of Korihor, but he was cast out and went about from house to house begging for his food. Now the knowledge of what had happened unto Korihor was immediately published throughout all the land. Yea, the proclamation was sent forth by the chief judge to all the people in the land, declaring unto those who had believed in the words of Korihor that they must speedily repent, lest the same judgments would come unto them. And it came to pass that they were all convinced of the wickedness of Korihor. Therefore they were all converted again unto the Lord. And this put an end to the iniquity after the manner of Korihor. And Korihor did go about from house to house, begging food for his support. And it came to pass that as he went forth among the people, yea, among a people who had separated themselves from the Nephites and called themselves Zoramites, being led by a man whose name was Zoram, and as he went forth amongst them, behold, he was run upon and trodden down, even until he was dead. And thus we see the end of him who perverted the ways of the Lord. And thus we see that the devil will not support his children at the last day, but doth speedily drag them down to hell. Chapter 31 Alma heads a mission to reclaim the apostate Zoramites. The Zoramites deny Christ, believe in a false concept of election, and worship with set prayers. The missionaries are filled with the Holy Spirit. Their afflictions are swallowed up in the joy of Christ. About 74 B.C. Now it came to pass that after the end of Korihor, Alma, having received tidings that the Zoramites were perverting the ways of the Lord, and that Zoram, who was their leader, was leading the hearts of the people to bow down to dumb idols, his heart again began to sicken because of the iniquity of the people. For it was the cause of great sorrow to Alma to know of iniquity among his people. Therefore his heart was exceedingly sorrowful because of the separation of the Zoramites from the Nephites. Now the Zoramites had gathered themselves together in a land which they called Antionum, which was east of the land of Zarahemla which lay nearly bordering upon the seashore, which was south of the land of Jershon, which also bordered upon the wilderness south, which wilderness was full of the Lamanites. Now the Nephites greatly feared that the Zoramites would enter into a correspondence with the Lamanites, and that it would be the means of great loss on the part of the Nephites. And now, as the preaching of the word had a great tendency to lead the people to do that which was just, yea, it had had more powerful effect upon the minds of the people than the sword or anything else which had happened unto them. Therefore, Alma thought it was expedient that they should try the virtue of the word of God. Therefore, he took Ammon and Aaron and Omner, and Himni he did leave in the church in Zarahemla. But the former three he took with him, and also Amulek and Zeezrom, who were at Melech, and he also took two of his sons. Now the eldest of his sons he took not with him, and his name was Helaman. But the names of those whom he took with him were Shiblin and Corianton. And these are the names of those who went with him among the Zoramites to preach unto them the word. Now the Zoramites were dissenters from the Nephites. Therefore they had had the word of God preached unto them. But they had fallen into great errors for they would not observe to keep the commandments of God and his statutes according to the law of Moses. Neither would they observe the performances of the church to continue in prayer and supplication to God daily that they might not enter into temptation. Yea, in fine, they did pervert the ways of the Lord in very many instances. Therefore, for this cause, Alma and his brethren went into the land to preach the word unto them. Now when they had come into the land, behold, to their astonishment, they found that the Zoramites had built synagogues, and that they did gather themselves together on one day of the week, which day they did call the day of the Lord. And they did worship after a manner which Alma and his brethren had never beheld. For they had a place built up in the center of their synagogue, a place for standing, which was high above the head and the top thereof would only admit one person. Therefore, whosoever desired to worship must go forth and stand upon the top thereof, and stretch forth his hands towards heaven, and cry with a loud voice, saying, 
Holy, holy God, we believe that Thou art God, and we believe that Thou art holy, and that Thou wast a spirit, and that Thou art a spirit, and that Thou wilt be a spirit forever. Holy God, we believe that Thou hast separated us from our brethren, and we do not believe in the tradition of our brethren, which was handed down to them by the childishness of their fathers. But we believe that Thou hast elected us to be Thy holy children. And also Thou hast made it known unto us that there shall be no Christ, but Thou art the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Thou hast elected us that we shall be saved, whilst all around us are elected to be cast by Thy wrath down to hell. For the which holiness, O God, we thank Thee. And we also thank Thee that Thou hast elected us, that we may not be led away after the foolish traditions of our brethren, which doth bind them down to a belief of Christ, which doth lead their hearts to wander far from Thee, our God. And again we thank Thee, O God, that we are a chosen and a holy people. Amen. Now it came to pass that after Alma and his brethren and his sons had heard these prayers, they were astonished beyond all measure. For behold, every man did go forth and offer up these same prayers. Now the place was called by them Ramiumptum, which, being interpreted, is the holy stand. Now from this stand they did offer up, every man, the selfsame prayer unto God, thanking their God that they were chosen of him, and that he did not lead them away after the tradition of their brethren, and that their hearts were not stolen away to believe in things to come, which they knew nothing about. Now after the people had all offered up thanks after this manner, they returned to their homes, never speaking of their God again until they had assembled themselves together again to the holy stand, to offer up thanks after their manner. Now when Alma saw this, his heart was grieved for he saw that they were a wicked and a perverse people. Yea, he saw that their hearts were set upon gold, and upon silver, and upon all manner of fine goods. Yea, and he also saw that their hearts were lifted up unto great boasting in their pride. And he lifted up his voice to heaven, and cried, saying, O oh, how long, O Lord, wilt thou suffer that thy servants shall dwell here below in the flesh? to behold such gross wickedness among the children of men. Behold, O God, they cry unto thee, and yet their hearts are swallowed up in their pride. Behold, O God, they cry unto thee with their mouths, while they are puffed up, even to greatness, with the vain things of the world. Behold, O my God, their costly apparel, and their ringlets, and their bracelets, and their ornaments of gold, and all their precious things which they are ornamented with. And behold, their hearts are set upon them. And yet they cry unto thee, and say, We thank thee, O God, for we are a chosen people unto thee, while others shall perish. Yea, and they say that thou hast made it known unto them that there shall be no Christ. O Lord God, how long wilt thou suffer that such wickedness and infidelity shall be among this people? O Lord, wilt thou give me strength? that I may bear with mine infirmities. For I am infirm, and such wickedness among this people doth pain my soul. O Lord, my heart is exceedingly sorrowful. Wilt thou comfort my soul in Christ? O Lord, wilt thou grant unto me that I may have strength, that I may suffer with patience these afflictions which shall come upon me, because of the iniquity of this people? O Lord, wilt thou comfort my soul? and give unto me success, and also my fellow laborers who are with me, yea, Ammon, and Aaron, and Omner, and also Amulek, and Zeezrom, and also my two sons. Yea, even all these wilt thou comfort, O Lord. Yea, wilt thou comfort their souls in Christ. Wilt thou grant unto them that they may have strength, that they may bear their afflictions which shall come upon them, because of the iniquities of this people. O Lord, wilt thou grant unto us that we may have success in bringing them again unto thee in Christ? Behold, O Lord, their souls are precious, and many of them are our brethren. Therefore, give unto us, O Lord, power and wisdom that we may bring these, our brethren, again unto thee.
Now it came to pass that when Alma had said these words, that he clapped his hands upon all them who were with him. And behold, as he clapped his hands upon them, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and after that they did separate themselves one from another, taking no thought for themselves what they should eat, or what they should drink, or what they should put on. And the Lord provided for them that they should hunger not, neither should they thirst. Yea, and he also gave them strength, that they should suffer no manner of afflictions, save it were swallowed up in the joy of Christ. Now this was according to the prayer of Alma, and this because he prayed in faith. Chapter 32 Alma teaches the poor whose afflictions had humbled them. Faith is a hope in that which is not seen which is true. Alma testifies that angels minister to men, women, and children. Alma compares the word unto a seed. It must be planted and nourished. Then it grows into a tree from which the fruit of eternal life is picked. About 74 B.C. And it came to pass that they did go forth, and began to preach the word of God unto the people, entering into their synagogues and into their houses. Yea, and even they did preach the word in their streets. And it came to pass that after much labor among them, they began to have success among the poor class of people. For behold, they were cast out of the synagogues because of the coarseness of their apparel. Therefore, they were not permitted to enter into their synagogues to worship God, being esteemed as filthiness. Therefore they were poor. Yea, they were esteemed by their brethren as dross. Therefore they were poor as to things of the world, and also they were poor in heart. Now as Alma was teaching and speaking unto the people upon the hill Oneida, there came a great multitude unto him, who were those of whom we have been speaking, of whom were poor in heart, because of their poverty as to the things of the world. And they came unto Alma, and the one who was the foremost among them said unto him, Behold, what shall these my brethren do? For they are despised of all men because of their poverty, yea, and more especially by our priests. For they have cast us out of our synagogues, which we have labored abundantly to build with our own hands. And they have cast us out because of our exceeding poverty. And we have no place to worship our God. And behold, what shall we do? And now when Alma heard this, he turned him about, his face immediately towards him, and he beheld with great joy. For he beheld that their afflictions had truly humbled them, and that they were in a preparation to hear the word. Therefore he did say no more to the other multitude, but he stretched forth his hand, and cried unto those whom he beheld, who were truly penitent, and said unto them, I behold that ye are lowly in heart. And if so, blessed are ye. Behold, thy brother hath said, What shall we do? For we are cast out of our synagogues, that we cannot worship our God. Behold, I say unto you, Do ye suppose that ye cannot worship God, save it be in your synagogues only? And moreover, I would ask, Do ye suppose that ye must not worship God only once in a week? I say unto you, It is well that ye are cast out of your synagogues, that ye may be humble, and that ye may learn wisdom. For it is necessary that ye should learn wisdom. For it is because that ye are cast out, that ye are despised of your brethren because of your exceeding poverty, that ye are brought to a lowliness of heart. For ye are necessarily brought to be humble. And now, because ye are compelled to be humble, blessed are ye. For a man sometimes, if he is compelled to be humble, seeketh repentance. And now, surely, whosoever repenteth shall find mercy. And he that findeth mercy, and endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. And now, as I said unto you, that because ye were compelled to be humble, ye were blessed, do ye not suppose that they are more blessed who truly humble themselves because of the word? Yea, he that truly humbleth himself and repenteth of his sins, and endureth to the end, the same shall be blessed. Yea, much more blessed than they who are compelled to be humble because of their exceeding poverty. Therefore, 
Blessed are they who humble themselves without being compelled to be humble. Or rather, in other words, blessed is he that believeth in the word of God, and is baptized without stubbornness of heart, yea, without being brought to know the word, or even compelled to know, before they will believe. Yea, there are many who do say, If thou wilt show unto us a sign from heaven, then we shall know of a surety, then we shall believe. Now I ask, Is this faith? Behold, I say unto you, Nay. For if a man knoweth a thing, he hath no cause to believe, for he knoweth it. And now, how much more cursed is he that knoweth the will of God, and doeth it not, than he that only believeth, or only hath cause to believe, and falleth into transgression? Now of this thing ye must judge. Behold, I say unto you, that it is on the one hand even as it is on the other, and it shall be unto every man according to his work. And now, as I said concerning faith, faith is not to have a perfect knowledge of things. Therefore, if ye have faith, ye hope for things which are not seen, which are true. And now, behold, I say unto you, and I would that ye should remember, that God is merciful unto all who believe on his name. Therefore he desireth, in the first place, that ye should believe, yea, even on his word. And now he imparteth his word by angels unto men, yea, not only men, but women also. Now this is not all. Little children do have words given unto them many times, which confound the wise and the learned. And now, my beloved brethren, as ye have desired to know of me what ye shall do, because ye are afflicted and cast out. Now I do not desire that ye should suppose that I mean to judge you, only according to that which is true. For I do not mean that ye, all of you, have been compelled to humble yourselves. For I verily believe that there are some among you who would humble themselves, let them be in whatsoever circumstances they might. Now, as I said concerning faith, that it was not a perfect knowledge, even so it is with my words. Ye cannot know of their surety at first, unto perfection, any more than faith is a perfect knowledge. But behold, if ye will awake and arouse your faculties, even to an experiment upon my words, and exercise a particle of faith, yea, even if ye can no more than desire to believe, let this desire work in you, even until ye believe in a manner that ye can give place for a portion of my words. Now we will compare the word unto a seed. Now if ye give place, that a seed may be planted in your heart, behold, if it be a true seed or a good seed, if ye do not cast it out by your unbelief, that ye will resist the Spirit of the Lord, behold, it will begin to swell within your breasts. And when you feel these swelling motions, ye will begin to say within yourselves, It must needs be that this is a good seed, or that the word is good, for it beginneth to enlarge my soul, yea, it beginneth to enlighten my understanding, yea, it beginneth to be delicious to me. Now behold, would not this increase your faith? I say unto you, Yea. Nevertheless, it hath not grown up to a perfect knowledge, but behold, as the seed swelleth, and sprouteth, and beginneth to grow, then you must needs say that the seed is good. For behold, it swelleth, and sprouteth, and beginneth to grow. And now, behold, will not this strengthen your faith? Yea, it will strengthen your faith, for ye will say, I know that this is a good seed. For behold, it sprouteth, and beginneth to grow. And now, behold, are ye sure that this is a good seed? I say unto you, Yea, for every seed bringeth forth unto its own likeness. Therefore, if a seed groweth, it is good. But if it groweth not, behold, it is not good. Therefore, it is cast away. And now, behold, because ye have tried the experiment, and planted the seed, and it swelleth, and sprouteth, and beginneth to grow, ye must needs know that the seed is good. And now behold, is your knowledge perfect? Yea, your knowledge is perfect in that thing, and your faith is dormant. And this because you know, 
For ye know that the word hath swelled your souls, and ye also know that it hath sprouted up, that your understanding doth begin to be enlightened, and your mind doth begin to expand. O oh, then, is not this real? I say unto you, Yea, because it is light, and whatsoever is light is good, because it is discernible. Therefore ye must know that it is good. And now behold, after ye have tasted this light, is your knowledge perfect? Behold, I say unto you, Nay. Neither must ye lay aside your faith, for ye have only exercised your faith to plant the seed that ye might try the experiment to know if the seed was good. And behold, as the tree beginneth to grow, ye will say, Let us nourish it with great care, that it may get root, that it may grow up and bring forth fruit unto us. And now behold, if ye nourish it with much care, it will get root, and grow up, and bring forth fruit. But if ye neglect the tree, and take no thought for its nourishment, behold, it will not get any root. And when the heat of the sun cometh and scorcheth it, because it hath no root, it withers away, and ye pluck it up, and cast it out. Now this is not because the seed was not good, neither is it because the fruit thereof would not be desirable. But it is because your ground is barren, and ye will not nourish the tree. Therefore ye cannot have the fruit thereof. And thus, if ye will not nourish the word, looking forward with an eye of faith to the fruit thereof, ye can never pluck of the fruit of the tree of life. But if ye will nourish the word, yea, nourish the tree as it beginneth to grow, by your faith with great diligence and with patience, looking forward to the fruit thereof, it shall take root. And behold, it shall be a tree springing up unto everlasting life. And because of your diligence and your faith and your patience with the word in nourishing it, that it may take root in you, behold, by and by ye shall pluck the fruit thereof, which is most precious, which is sweet above all that is sweet, and which is white above all that is white, yea, and pure above all that is pure. And ye shall feast upon this fruit, even until ye are filled, that ye hunger not, neither shall ye thirst. Then, my brethren, ye shall reap the rewards of your faith, and your diligence, and patience, and long suffering waiting for the tree to bring forth fruit unto you. Chapter 33 Zenos taught that men should pray and worship in all places, and that judgments are turned away because of the sun. Zenic taught that mercy is bestowed because of the sun. Moses had lifted up in the wilderness a type of the Son of God. About 74 B.C. Now after Alma had spoken these words, they sent forth unto him, desiring to know whether they should believe in one God, that they might obtain this fruit of which he had spoken, or how they should plant the seed, or the word of which he had spoken, which he said must be planted in their hearts, or in what manner they should begin to exercise their faith. And Alma said unto them, Behold, ye have said that ye could not worship your God, because ye are cast out of your synagogues. But behold, I say unto you, if ye suppose that ye cannot worship God, ye do greatly err, and ye ought to search the Scriptures. If ye suppose that they have taught you this, ye do not understand them. Do ye remember to have read what Zenos, the prophet of old, has said concerning prayer or worship? For he said, Thou art merciful, O God, for thou hast heard my prayer, even when I was in the wilderness. Yea, Thou wast merciful when I prayed concerning those who were mine enemies, and thou didst turn them to me. Yea, O God, and thou wast merciful unto me when I did cry unto thee in my field, when I did cry unto thee in my prayer, and thou didst hear me. And again, O God, when I did turn to my house, thou didst hear me in my prayer. And when I did turn unto my closet, O Lord, and prayed unto thee, Thou didst hear me. Yea, thou art merciful unto thy children when they cry unto thee, to be heard of thee and not of men, and thou wilt hear them. 
Yea, O God, thou hast been merciful unto me, and heard my cries in the midst of thy congregations. Yea, and thou hast also heard me when I have been cast out, and have been despised by mine enemies. Yea, thou didst hear my cries, and wast angry with mine enemies, and thou didst visit them in thine anger with speedy destruction, and thou didst hear me because of mine afflictions and my sincerity. And it is because of thy Son that thou hast been thus merciful unto me. Therefore, I will cry unto thee in all mine afflictions, for in thee is my joy. For thou hast turned thy judgments away from me because of thy Son. And now Alma said unto them, Do ye believe those scriptures which have been written by them of old? Behold, if ye do, ye must believe what Zenas said. For behold, he said, Thou hast turned away thy judgments because of thy son. Now behold, my brethren, I would ask if ye have read the scriptures. If ye have, how can ye disbelieve on the Son of God? For it is not written that Zenas alone spake of these things, but Zenic also spake of these things. For behold, he said, Thou art angry, O Lord, with this people, because they will not understand thy mercies which thou hast bestowed upon them because of thy Son. And now, my brethren, ye see that a second prophet of old has testified of the Son of God. And because the people would not understand his words, they stoned him to death. But behold, this is not all. These are not the only ones who have spoken concerning the Son of God. Behold, he was spoken of by Moses. Yea, and behold, a type was raised up in the wilderness, that whosoever would look upon it might live. And many did look and live, but few understood the meaning of those things, and this because of the hardness of their hearts. But there were many who were so hardened that they would not look, therefore they perished. Now the reason they would not look is because they did not believe that it would heal them. O oh, my brethren, if ye could be healed by merely casting about your eyes that ye might be healed, would ye not behold quickly? Or would ye rather harden your hearts in unbelief and be slothful that ye would not cast about your eyes that ye might perish? If so, woe shall come upon you. But if not so, then cast about your eyes and begin to believe in the Son of God that he will come to redeem his people and that he shall suffer and die to atone for their sins, and that he shall rise again from the dead, which shall bring to pass the resurrection, that all men shall stand before him to be judged at the last and judgment day, according to their works. And now, my brethren, I desire that ye shall plant this word in your hearts, and as it beginneth to swell, even so nourish it by your faith. And behold, it will become a tree, springing up in you unto everlasting life. And then may God grant unto you that your burdens may be light through the joy of his Son. And even all this can ye do, if ye will. Amen. Chapter 34 Amulek testifies that the word is in Christ unto salvation. Unless an atonement is made, all mankind must perish. The whole law of Moses points toward the sacrifice of the Son of God. The eternal plan of redemption is based on faith and repentance. Pray for temporal and spiritual blessings. This life is the time for men to prepare to meet God. Work out your salvation with fear before God. About 74 B.C. And now it came to pass that after Alma had spoken these words unto them, he sat down upon the ground, and Amulek arose and began to teach them, saying, My brethren, I think that it is impossible that ye should be ignorant of the things which have been spoken concerning the coming of Christ, who was taught by us to be the Son of God. Yea, I know that these things were taught unto you bountifully before your dissension from among us. And as ye have desired of my beloved brother, that he should make known unto you what ye should do, because of your afflictions. And he hath spoken somewhat unto you to prepare your minds. Yea, and he hath exhorted you unto faith, 
and to patience. Yea, even that ye would have so much faith as even to plant the word in your hearts, that ye may try the experiment of its goodness. And we have beheld that the great question which is in your minds is whether the word be in the Son of God, or whether there shall be no Christ. And he also beheld that my brother has proved unto you, in many instances, that the word is in Christ unto salvation. My brother has called upon the words of Zenos, that redemption cometh through the Son of God, and also upon the words of Zenoch. And also he has appealed unto Moses to prove that these things are true. And now, behold, I will testify unto you of myself that these things are true. Behold, I say unto you, that I do know that Christ shall come among the children of men to take upon him the transgressions of his people, and that he shall atone for the sins of the world. For the Lord God hath spoken it. For it is expedient that an atonement should be made. For according to the great plan of the eternal God, there must be an atonement made, or else all mankind must unavoidably perish. Yea, all are hardened. Yea, all are fallen and are lost, and must perish, except it be through the atonement, which it is expedient should be made. For it is expedient that there should be a great and last sacrifice, yea, not a sacrifice of man, neither of beast, neither of any manner of fowl, for it shall not be a human sacrifice, but it must be an infinite and eternal sacrifice. Now there is not any man that can sacrifice his own blood which will atone for the sins of another. Now if a man murdereth, behold, will our law, which is just, take the life of his brother. I say unto you, Nay, but the law requireth the life of him who hath murdered. Therefore, there can be nothing which is short of an infinite atonement, which will suffice for the sins of the world. Therefore, it is expedient that there should be a great and last sacrifice, and then shall there be, or it is expedient there should be, a stop to the shedding of blood. Then shall the law of Moses be fulfilled. Yea, it shall be all fulfilled, every jot and tittle, and none shall have passed away. And behold, this is the whole meaning of the law, every wit pointing to that great and last sacrifice, and that great and last sacrifice will be the Son of God, yea, infinite and eternal. And thus he shall bring salvation to all those who shall believe on his name. This being the intent of this last sacrifice, to bring about the bowels of mercy, which overpowereth justice, and bringeth about means unto men that they may have faith unto repentance. And thus mercy can satisfy the demands of justice, and encircles them in the arms of safety, while he that exercises no faith unto repentance is exposed to the whole law of the demands of justice. Therefore, only unto him that has faith unto repentance is brought about the great and eternal plan of redemption. Therefore, may God grant unto you, my brethren, that ye may begin to exercise your faith unto repentance, that ye begin to call upon his holy name, that he would have mercy upon you. Yea, cry unto him for mercy, for he is mighty to save. Yea, humble yourselves, and continue in prayer unto him. Cry unto him when ye are in your fields, yea, over all your flocks. Cry unto him in your houses, yea, over all your household, both morning, midday, and evening. Yea, cry unto him against the power of your enemies. Yea, cry unto him against the devil, who is an enemy to all righteousness. Cry unto him over the crops of your fields, that ye may prosper in them. Cry over the flocks of your fields, that they may increase. But this is not all. Ye must pour out your souls in your closets and your secret places and in your wilderness. Yea, and when you do not cry unto the Lord, let your hearts be full, drawn out in prayer unto him continually for your welfare and also for the welfare of those who are around you. And now behold, my beloved brethren, I say unto you, do not suppose that this is all. For after ye have done all these things, 
If ye turn away the needy and the naked, and visit not the sick and afflicted, and impart of your substance, if ye have, to those who stand in need, I say unto you, If ye do not any of these things, behold, your prayer is vain, and availeth you nothing, and ye are as hypocrites who do deny the faith. Therefore, if ye do not remember to be charitable, ye are as dross, which the refiners do cast out, it being of no worth, and is trodden under foot of men. And now, my brethren, I would that after ye have received so many witnesses, seeing that the Holy Scriptures testify of these things, ye come forth and bring fruit unto repentance. Yea, I would that ye would come forth and harden not your hearts any longer. For behold, now is the time and the day of your salvation. And therefore, if ye will repent and harden not your hearts, immediately shall the great plan of redemption be brought about unto you. For behold, this life is the time for men to prepare to meet God. Yea, behold, the day of this life is the day for men to perform their labors. And now, as I said unto you before, as ye have had so many witnesses, therefore, I beseech of you that ye do not procrastinate the day of your repentance until the end. For after this day of life, which is given us to prepare for eternity, behold, if we do not improve our time while in this life, then cometh the night of darkness, wherein there can be no labor performed. Ye cannot say, when ye are brought to that awful crisis, that I will repent, that I will return to my God. Nay, ye cannot say this. For that same spirit which doth possess your bodies at the time that ye go out of this life, that same spirit will have power to possess your body in that eternal world. For behold, if ye have procrastinated the day of your repentance even until death, behold, ye have become subjected to the spirit of the devil, and he doth seal you his. Therefore, the spirit of the Lord hath withdrawn from you, and hath no place in you, and the devil hath all power over you. And this is the final state of the wicked. And this I know, because the Lord hath said he dwelleth not in unholy temples, but in the hearts of the righteous doth he dwell. Yea, and he has also said that the righteous shall sit down in his kingdom to go no more out, but their garments should be made white through the blood of the Lamb. And now, my beloved brethren, I desire that ye should remember these things, and that ye should work out your salvation with fear before God, and that ye should no more deny the coming of Christ, that ye contend no more against the Holy Ghost, but that ye receive it, and take upon you the name of Christ, that ye humble yourselves even to the dust, and worship God in whatsoever place ye may be in, in spirit and in truth and that ye live in thanksgiving daily for the many mercies and blessings which he doth bestow upon you. Yea, and I also exhort you, my brethren, that ye be watchful unto prayer continually, that ye may not be led away by the temptations of the devil, that he may not overpower you, that ye may not become his subjects at the last day. For behold, he rewardeth you no good thing. And now, my beloved brethren, I would exhort you to have patience, and that ye bear with all manner of afflictions, that ye do not revile against those who do cast you out because of your exceeding poverty, lest ye become sinners like unto them, but that ye have patience, and bear with those afflictions, with a firm hope that ye shall one day rest from all your afflictions. Chapter 35 The preaching of the word destroys the craft of the Zoramites. They expel the converts, who then join the people of Ammon in Jershon. Alma sorrows because of the wickedness of the people. About 74 B.C. Now it came to pass that after Amulek had made an end of these words, they withdrew themselves from the multitude and came over into the land of Jershon, yea, and the rest of the brethren, after they had preached the word unto the Zoramites, also came over into the land of Jershon. 
And it came to pass that after the more popular part of the Zoramites had consulted together concerning the words which had been preached unto them, they were angry because of the word, for it did destroy their craft. Therefore they would not hearken unto the words. And they sent and gathered together throughout all the land, all the people, and consulted with them concerning the words which had been spoken. Now their rulers and their priests and their teachers did not let the people know concerning their desires. Therefore they found out privily the minds of all the people. And it came to pass that after they had found out the minds of all the people, those who were in favor of the words which had been spoken by Alma and his brethren were cast out of the land, and they were many. And they came over also into the land of Jershon. And it came to pass that Alma and his brethren did minister unto them. Now the people of the Zoramites were angry with the people of Ammon who were in Jershon. And the chief ruler of the Zoramites, being a very wicked man, sent over unto the people of Ammon, desiring them that they should cast out of their land all those who came over from them into their land. And he breathed out many threatenings against them. And now the people of Ammon did not fear their words. Therefore they did not cast them out, but they did receive all the poor of the Zoramites that came over unto them. And they did nourish them, and did clothe them, and did give unto them lands for their inheritance. And they did administer unto them according to their wants. Now this did stir up the Zoramites to anger against the people of Ammon. And they began to mix with the Lamanites, and to stir them up also to anger against them. And thus the Zoramites and the Lamanites began to make preparations for war against the people of Ammon, and also against the Nephites. And thus ended the seventeenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And the people of Ammon departed out of the land of Jershon, and came over into the land of Melech, and gave place in the land of Jershon for the armies of the Nephites, that they might contend with the armies of the Lamanites and the armies of the Zoramites. And thus commenced a war betwixt the Lamanites and the Nephites in the eighteenth year of the reign of the judges. And an account shall be given of their wars hereafter. Alma and Ammon and their brethren, and also the two sons of Alma, returned to the land of Zarahemla, after having been instruments in the hands of God of bringing many of the Zoramites to repentance. And as many as were brought to repentance were driven out of their land. But they have lands for their inheritance in the land of Jershon, and they have taken up arms to defend themselves, and their wives, and children, and their lands. Now Alma, being grieved for the iniquity of his people, yea, for the wars, and the bloodsheds, and the contentions which were among them, and having been to declare the word, or sent to declare the word, among all the people in every city, and seeing that the hearts of the people began to wax hard, and that they began to be offended because of the strictness of the word, his heart was exceedingly sorrowful. Therefore he caused that his sons should be gathered together, that he might give unto them every one his charge, separately, concerning the things pertaining unto righteousness. And we have an account of his commandments, which he gave unto them according to his own record, the commandments of Alma to his son Helaman. Comprising chapters 36 and 37. Chapter 36. Alma testifies to Helaman of his conversion after seeing an angel. He suffered the pains of a damned soul. He called upon the name of Jesus, and was then born of God. Sweet joy filled his soul. He saw concourses of angels praising God. Many converts have tasted and seen, as he has tasted and seen. About 74 B.C. My son, give ear to my words. For I swear unto you, that inasmuch as ye shall keep the commandments of God, ye shall prosper in the land. I would that ye should do as I have done, in remembering the captivity of our fathers. For they were in bondage, and none could deliver them except it was the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And he surely did deliver them in their afflictions. And now, O my son Helaman, behold, thou art in thy youth, and therefore 
I beseech of thee that thou wilt hear my words and learn of me. For I do know that whosoever shall put their trust in God shall be supported in their trials and their troubles and their afflictions, and shall be lifted up at the last day. And I would not that ye think that I know of myself, not of the temporal, but of the spiritual, not of the carnal mind, but of God. Now behold, I say unto you, if I had not been born of God, I should not have known these things. But God has, by the mouth of his holy angel, made these things known unto me, not of any worthiness of myself. For I went about with the sons of Mosiah, seeking to destroy the church of God. But behold, God sent his holy angel to stop us by the way. And behold, he spake unto us, as it were the voice of thunder, and the whole earth did tremble beneath our feet. And we all fell to the earth, for the fear of the Lord came upon us. But behold, the voice said unto me, Arise. And I arose and stood up, and beheld the angel. And he said unto me, If thou wilt of thyself be destroyed, seek no more to destroy the church of God. And it came to pass that I fell to the earth. And it was for the space of three days and three nights that I could not open my mouth, neither had I the use of my limbs. And the angel spake more things unto me, which were heard by my brethren, but I did not hear them. For when I heard the words, If thou wilt be destroyed of thyself, seek no more to destroy the church of God, I was struck with such great fear and amazement, lest perhaps I should be destroyed, that I fell to the earth, and I did hear no more. But I was racked with eternal torment, for my soul was harrowed up to the greatest degree, and racked with all my sins. Yea, I did remember all my sins and iniquities, for which I was tormented with the pains of hell. Yea, I saw that I had rebelled against my God, and that I had not kept his holy commandments. Yea, and I had murdered many of his children, or rather led them away into destruction. Yea, and in fine, so great had been my iniquities, that the very thought of coming into the presence of my God did rack my soul with inexpressible horror. Oh, thought I, that I could be banished and become extinct, both soul and body, that I might not be brought to stand in the presence of my God to be judged of my deeds. And now for three days and for three nights was I racked, even with the pains of a damned soul. And it came to pass that as I was thus racked with torment, while I was harrowed up by the memory of my many sins, behold, I remembered also to have heard my father prophesy unto the people concerning the coming of one Jesus Christ, a son of God, to atone for the sins of the world. Now as my mind caught hold upon this thought, I cried within my heart, O Jesus, thou Son of God, have mercy on me, who am in the gall of bitterness, and am encircled about by the everlasting chains of death. And now behold, when I thought this, I could remember my pains no more. Yea, I was harrowed up by the memory of my sins no more. And oh, what joy, and what marvelous light I did behold. Yea, my soul was filled with joy, as exceeding as was my pain. Yea, I say unto you, my son, that there could be nothing so exquisite and so bitter as were my pains. Yea, and again I say unto you, my son, that on the other hand, there can be nothing so exquisite and sweet as was my joy. Yea, methought I saw, even as our father Lehi saw, God sitting upon his throne, surrounded with numberless concourses of angels, in the attitude of singing and praising their God. Yea, and my soul did long to be there, but behold, my limbs did receive their strength again, and I stood upon my feet, and did manifest unto the people that I had been born of God. Yea, and from that time, even until now, I have labored without ceasing, that I might bring souls unto repentance that I might bring them to taste of the exceeding joy of which I did taste, that they might also be born of God and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yea, and now behold, O my son, the Lord doth give me exceedingly great joy in the fruit of my labors. For because of the word which he has imparted unto me, behold, 
many have been born of God, and have tasted as I have tasted, and have seen eye to eye as I have seen. Therefore, they do know of these things of which I have spoken, as I do know. And the knowledge which I have is of God, and I have been supported under trials and troubles of every kind, yea, and in all manner of afflictions. Yea, God has delivered me from prison and from bonds and from death. Yea, and I do put my trust in him, and he will still deliver me. And I know that he will raise me up at the last day to dwell with him in glory. Yea, and I will praise him forever. For he has brought our fathers out of Egypt, and he has swallowed up the Egyptians in the Red Sea, and he led them by his power into the promised land. Yea, and he has delivered them out of bondage and captivity from time to time. Yea, and he has also brought our fathers out of the land of Jerusalem. And he has also, by his everlasting power, delivered them out of bondage and captivity from time to time, even down to the present day. And I have always retained in remembrance their captivity. Yea, and ye also ought to retain in remembrance, as I have done, their captivity. But behold, my son, this is not all. For ye ought to know, as I do know, that inasmuch as ye shall keep the commandments of God, ye shall prosper in the land. And ye ought to know also, that inasmuch as ye will not keep the commandments of God, ye shall be cut off from his presence. Now this is according to his word. Chapter 37 The plates of brass and other scriptures are preserved to bring souls to salvation. The Jaredites were destroyed because of their wickedness. Their secret oaths and covenants must be kept from the people. Counsel with the Lord in all your doings. As the Leahona guided the Nephites, so the word of Christ leads men to eternal life. About 74 B.C. And now, my son Helaman, I command you that ye take the records which have been entrusted with me, and I also command you that ye keep a record of this people, according as I have done, upon the plates of Nephi, and keep all these things sacred which I have kept, even as I have kept them. For it is for a wise purpose that they are kept. And these plates of brass, which contain these engravings, which had the records of the holy scriptures upon them, which had the genealogy of our forefathers, even from the beginning, behold, it has been prophesied by our fathers that they should be kept and handed down from one generation to another, and be kept and preserved by the hand of the Lord, until they should go forth unto every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, that they shall know of the mysteries contained thereon. And now behold, if they are kept, they must retain their brightness. Yea, and they will retain their brightness. Yea, and also shall all the plates which do contain that which is holy writ. Now ye may suppose that this is foolishness in me. But behold, I say unto you, that by small and simple things are great things brought to pass and small means in many instances doth confound the wise. And the Lord God doth work by means to bring about his great and eternal purposes. And by very small means the Lord doth confound the wise, and bringeth about the salvation of many souls. And now it has hitherto been wisdom in God that these things should be preserved. For behold, they have enlarged the memory of this people. Yea, and convinced many of the error of their ways, and brought them to the knowledge of their God, and to the salvation of their souls. Yea, I say unto you, were it not for these things that these records do contain, which are on these plates, Ammon and his brethren could not have convinced so many thousands of the Lamanites of the incorrect tradition of their fathers. Yea, these records and their words brought them unto repentance. That is, they brought them to the knowledge of the Lord their God, and to rejoice in Jesus Christ their Redeemer. And who knoweth but what they will be the means of bringing many thousands of them, yea, and also many thousands of our stiff-necked brethren, the Nephites, who are now hardening their hearts in sin and iniquities, to the knowledge of their Redeemer. 
Now these mysteries are not yet fully made known unto me. Therefore, I shall forbear, and it may suffice if I only say they are preserved for a wise purpose, which purpose is known unto God. For he doth counsel and wisdom over all his works, and his paths are straight, and his course is one eternal round. O oh, remember, remember, my son Helaman, how strict are the commandments of God. And he said, If ye will keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land. But if ye keep not his commandments, ye shall be cut off from his presence. And now remember, my son, that God has entrusted you with these things, which are sacred, which he has kept sacred, and also which he will keep and preserve for a wise purpose in him, that he may show forth his power unto future generations. And now behold, I tell you by the spirit of prophecy, that if ye transgress the commandments of God, behold, these things which are sacred shall be taken away from you by the power of God, and ye shall be delivered up unto Satan, that he may sift you as chaff before the wind. But if ye keep the commandments of God, and do with these things which are sacred, according to that which the Lord doth command you, for you must appeal unto the Lord for all things whatsoever ye must do with them, behold, no power of earth or hell can take them from you, for God is powerful to the fulfilling of all his words. For he will fulfill all his promises which he shall make unto you, for he has fulfilled his promises which he has made unto our fathers. For he promised unto them that he would preserve these things for a wise purpose in him, that he might show forth his power unto future generations. And now, behold, one purpose hath he fulfilled, even to the restoration of many thousands of the Lamanites to the knowledge of the truth. And he hath shown forth his power in them, and he will also still show forth his power in them unto future generations. Therefore, they shall be preserved. Therefore I command you, my son Helaman, that ye be diligent in fulfilling all my words, and that ye be diligent in keeping the commandments of God as they are written. And now I will speak unto you concerning those twenty-four plates, that ye keep them, that the mysteries and the works of darkness and their secret works, or the secret works of those people who have been destroyed, may be made manifest unto this people. Yea, all their murders, and robbings, and their plunderings, and all their wickedness and abominations, may be made manifest unto this people. Yea, and that ye preserve these interpreters. For behold, the Lord saw that his people began to work in darkness. Yea, work secret murders and abominations. Therefore the Lord said, If they did not repent, they should be destroyed from off the face of the earth. And the Lord said, I will prepare unto my servant Gazalem a stone, which shall shine forth in darkness unto light, that I may discover unto my people who serve me, that I may discover unto them the works of their brethren, yea, their secret works, their works of darkness, and their wickedness and abominations. And now, my son, these interpreters were prepared that the word of God might be fulfilled, which he spake, saying, I will bring forth out of darkness unto light all their secret works and their abominations. And except they repent, I will destroy them from off the face of the earth, and I will bring to light all their secrets and abominations unto every nation that shall hereafter possess the land. And now, my son, we see that they did not repent. Therefore they have been destroyed, and thus far the word of God has been fulfilled. Yea, their secret abominations have been brought out of darkness and made known unto us. And now, my son, I command you that ye retain all their oaths and their covenants and their agreements in their secret abominations. Yea, and all their signs and their wonders ye shall keep from this people, that they know them not, lest peradventure they should fall into darkness also and be destroyed. For behold, there is a curse upon all this land, that destruction shall come upon all those workers of darkness, according to the power of God, when they are fully ripe. Therefore, I desire that this people might not be destroyed. Therefore, 
ye shall keep these secret plans of their oaths and their covenants from this people, and only their wickedness and their murders and their abominations shall ye make known unto them. And ye shall teach them to abhor such wickedness and abominations and murders. And ye shall also teach them that these people were destroyed on account of their wickedness and abominations and their murders. For behold, they murdered all the prophets of the Lord who came among them to declare unto them concerning their iniquities. And the blood of those whom they murdered did cry unto the Lord their God for vengeance upon those who were their murderers. And thus the judgments of God did come upon these workers of darkness and secret combinations. Yea, and cursed be the land for ever and ever unto those workers of darkness and secret combinations even unto destruction, except they repent before they are fully ripe. And now, my son, remember the words which I have spoken unto you. Trust not those secret plans unto this people, but teach them an everlasting hatred against sin and iniquity. Preach unto them repentance and faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Teach them to humble themselves and to be meek and lowly in heart. Teach them to withstand every temptation of the devil with their faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Teach them to never be weary of good works, but to be meek and lowly in heart. For such shall find rest to their souls. O oh, remember, my son, and learn wisdom in thy youth. Yea, learn in thy youth to keep the commandments of God. Yea, and cry unto God for all thy support. Yea, let all thy doings be unto the Lord, and whithersoever thou goest, let it be in the Lord. Yea, let all thy thoughts be directed unto the Lord. Yea, let the affections of thy heart be placed upon the Lord forever. Counsel with the Lord in all thy doings, and he will direct thee for good. Yea, when thou liest down at night, lie down unto the Lord, that he may watch over you in your sleep. And when thou risest in the morning, let thy heart be full of thanks unto God. And if ye do these things, ye shall be lifted up at the last day. And now, my son, I have somewhat to say concerning the thing which our fathers call a ball or director, or our fathers called it Leahona, which is being interpreted a compass. And the Lord prepared it. And behold, there cannot any man work after the manner of so curious a workmanship. And behold, it was prepared to show unto our fathers the course which they should travel in the wilderness. And it did work for them according to their faith in God. Therefore, if they had faith to believe that God could cause that those spindles should point the way they should go, behold, it was done. Therefore, they had this miracle, and also many other miracles wrought by the power of God, day by day. Nevertheless, because those miracles were worked by small means, it did show unto them marvelous works. They were slothful and forgot to exercise their faith and diligence. And then those marvelous works ceased, and they did not progress in their journey. Therefore they tarried in the wilderness, or did not travel a direct course, and were afflicted with hunger and thirst because of their transgressions. And now, my son, I would that ye should understand that these things are not without a shadow. For as our fathers were slothful to give heed to this compass, now these things were temporal, they did not prosper. Even so it is with things which are spiritual. For behold, it is as easy to give heed to the word of Christ, which will point to you a straight course to eternal bliss, as it was for our fathers to give heed to this compass which would point unto them a straight course to the promised land. And now I say, is there not a type in this thing? For just as surely as this director did bring our fathers, by following its course to the promised land, shall the words of Christ, if we follow their course, carry us beyond this veil of sorrow into a far better land of promise. O oh, my son, do not let us be slothful because of the easiness of the way. For so was it with our fathers. For so was it prepared for them, that if they would look, they might live. Even so, it is with us. The way is prepared, 
and if we will look, we may live forever. And now, my son, see that ye take care of these sacred things. Yea, see that ye look to God and live. Go unto this people and declare the word, and be sober. My son, farewell. The Commandments of Alma to His Son Shiblon Comprising Chapter 38 Chapter 38 Shiblon was persecuted for righteousness' sake. Salvation is in Christ, who is the life and the light of the world. Bridle all your passions. About 74 B.C. My son, give ear to my words. For I say unto you, even as I said unto Helaman, that inasmuch as ye shall keep the commandments of God, ye shall prosper in the land. And inasmuch as ye will not keep the commandments of God, ye shall be cut off from his presence. And now, my son, I trust that I shall have great joy in you because of your steadiness and your faithfulness unto God. For as you have commenced in your youth to look to the Lord your God, even so I hope that you will continue in keeping his commandments. For blessed is he that endureth to the end. I say unto you, my son, that I have had great joy in thee already, because of thy faithfulness and thy diligence, and thy patience and thy long suffering among the people of the Zoramites. For I know that thou wast in bonds, yea, and I also know that thou wast stoned for the word's sake. And thou didst bear all these things with patience, because the Lord was with thee. And now thou knowest that the Lord did deliver thee. And now, my son Shiblin, I would that ye should remember that as much as ye shall put your trust in God, even so much ye shall be delivered out of your trials, and your troubles, and your afflictions, and ye shall be lifted up at the last day. Now, my son, I would not that ye should think that I know these things of myself, but it is the Spirit of God which is in me, which maketh these things known unto me. For if I had not been born of God, I should not have known these things. But behold, the Lord in his great mercy sent his angel to declare unto me that I must stop the work of destruction among his people. Yea, and I have seen an angel face to face, and he spake with me, and his voice was as thunder, and it shook the whole earth. And it came to pass that I was three days and three nights in the most bitter pain and anguish of soul. And never, until I did cry out unto the Lord Jesus Christ for mercy, did I receive a remission of my sins. But behold, I did cry unto him, and I did find peace to my soul. And now, my son, I have told you this, that ye may learn wisdom, that ye may learn of me that there is no other way or means whereby man can be saved, only in and through Christ. Behold, he is the life and the light of the world. Behold, he is the word of truth and righteousness. And now, as ye have begun to teach the word, even so I would that ye should continue to teach. And I would that ye would be diligent and temperate in all things. See that ye are not lifted up unto pride. Yea, see that ye do not boast in your own wisdom, nor of your much strength. Use boldness, but not overbearance. And also see that ye bridle all your passions, that ye may be filled with love. See that ye refrain from idleness. Do not pray as the Zoramites do, for ye have seen that they pray to be heard of men and to be praised for their wisdom. Do not say, O God, I thank thee that we are better than our brethren, but rather say, O Lord, forgive my unworthiness, and remember my brethren in mercy. Yea, acknowledge your unworthiness before God at all times, and may the Lord bless your soul, and receive you at the last day into his kingdom, to sit down in peace. Now go, my son and teach the word unto this people. Be sober. My son, farewell. The Commandments of Alma to his son Corianton Comprising chapters 39 through 42 Chapter 39 Sexual sin is an abomination. Corianton's sins kept the Zoramites from receiving the word. 
Christ's redemption is retroactive in saving the faithful who preceded it. About 74 B.C. And now, my son, I have somewhat more to say unto thee than what I said unto thy brother. For behold, have ye not observed the steadiness of thy brother, his faithfulness, and his diligence in keeping the commandments of God? Behold, has he not set a good example for thee? For thou didst not give so much heed unto my words as did thy brother among the people of the Zoramites. Now this is what I have against thee. Thou didst go on into boasting in thy strength and thy wisdom, and this is not all, my son. Thou didst do that which was grievous unto me. For thou didst forsake the ministry, and did go over into the land of Siren, among the borders of the Lamanites, after the harlot Isabel. Yea, she did steal away the hearts of many. But this was no excuse for thee, my son. Thou shouldst have tended to the ministry wherewith thou wast entrusted. Know ye not, my son, that these things are an abomination in the sight of the Lord? Yea, most abominable above all sins, save it be the shedding of innocent blood, or denying the Holy Ghost. For behold, if ye deny the Holy Ghost when it once has had place in you, and ye know that ye deny it, behold, this is a sin which is unpardonable. Yea, and whosoever murdereth against the light and knowledge of God, it is not easy for him to obtain forgiveness. Yea, I say unto you, my son, that it is not easy for him to obtain a forgiveness. And now, my son, I would to God that ye had not been guilty of so great a crime. I would not dwell upon your crimes to harrow up your soul, if it were not for your good. But behold, ye cannot hide your crimes from God, and except ye repent, they will stand as a testimony against you at the last day. Now, my son, I would that ye should repent and forsake your sins, and go no more after the lusts of your eyes, but cross yourself in all these things. For except ye do this, ye can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. O oh, remember, and take it upon you, and cross yourself in these things. And I command you to take it upon you to counsel with your elder brothers in your undertakings. For behold, thou art in thy youth, and ye stand in need to be nourished by your brothers, and give heed to their counsel. Suffer not yourself to be led away by any vain or foolish thing. Suffer not the devil to lead away your heart again after those wicked harlots. Behold, O my son, how great iniquity ye brought upon the Zoramites! For when they saw your conduct, they would not believe in my words. And now the Spirit of the Lord doth say unto me, Command thy children to do good, lest they lead away the hearts of many people to destruction. Therefore I command you, my son, in the fear of God, that ye refrain from your iniquities, that ye turn to the Lord with all your mind, might, and strength, that ye lead away the hearts of no more to do wickedly, but rather return unto them, and acknowledge your faults and that wrong which ye have done. Seek not after riches nor the vain things of this world, for behold, you cannot carry them with you. And now, my son, I would say somewhat unto you concerning the coming of Christ. Behold, I say unto you, that it is he that surely shall come to take away the sins of the world. Yea, he cometh to declare glad tidings of salvation unto his people. And now, my son, this was the ministry unto which ye were called, to declare these glad tidings unto this people, to prepare their minds, or rather that salvation might come unto them, that they may prepare the minds of their children to hear the word at the time of his coming. And now I will ease your mind somewhat on this subject. Behold, you marvel why these things should be known so long beforehand. Behold, I say unto you, is not a soul at this time as precious unto God as a soul will be at the time of his coming? Is it not as necessary that the plan of redemption should be made known unto this people as well as unto their children? Is it not as easy at this time for the Lord to send his angel to declare these glad tidings unto us 
as unto our children, or as after the time of his coming. Chapter 40 Christ brings to pass the resurrection of all men. The righteous dead go to paradise, and the wicked to outer darkness, to await the day of their resurrection. All things will be restored to their proper and perfect frame in the resurrection. About 74 B.C. Now, my son, here is somewhat more I would say unto thee. For I perceive that thy mind is worried concerning the resurrection of the dead. Behold, I say unto you, that there is no resurrection. Or I would say, in other words, that this mortal does not put on immortality, this corruption does not put on incorruption, until after the coming of Christ. Behold, he bringeth to pass the resurrection of the dead. But behold, my son, the resurrection is not yet. Now I unfold unto you a mystery. Nevertheless, there are many mysteries which are kept, that no one knoweth them save God himself. But I show unto you one thing which I have inquired diligently of God that I might know, that is, concerning the resurrection. Behold, there is a time appointed that all shall come forth from the dead. Now when this time cometh, no one knows. But God knoweth the time which is appointed. Now whether there shall be one time, or a second time, or a third time that men shall come forth from the dead, it mattereth not. For God knoweth all these things. And it sufficeth me to know that this is the case, that there is a time appointed that all shall rise from the dead. Now there must needs be a space betwixt the time of death and the time of the resurrection. And now I would inquire, what becometh of the souls of men from this time of death to the time appointed for the resurrection? Now whether there is more than one time appointed for men to rise, it mattereth not. For all do not die at once, and this mattereth not. All is as one day with God, and time only is measured unto men. Therefore there is a time appointed unto men that they shall rise from the dead. And there is a space between the time of death and the resurrection. And now, concerning this space of time, what becometh of the souls of men is the thing which I have inquired diligently of the Lord to know. And this is the thing of which I do know. And when the time cometh when all shall rise, then shall they know that God knoweth all the times which are appointed unto man. Now, concerning the state of the soul between death and the resurrection, behold, it has been made known unto me by an angel that the spirits of all men, as soon as they are departed from this mortal body, yea, the spirits of all men, whether they be good or evil, are taken home to that God who gave them life. And then it shall come to pass that the spirits of those who are righteous are received into a state of happiness, which is called paradise, a state of rest, a state of peace, where they shall rest from all their troubles and from all care and sorrow. And then it shall come to pass that the spirits of the wicked, yea, who are evil, for behold, they have no part nor portion of the Spirit of the Lord. For behold, they chose evil works rather than good. Therefore the spirit of the devil did enter into them and take possession of their house. And these shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, and this because of their own iniquity, being led captive by the will of the devil. Now this is the state of the souls of the wicked, yea, in darkness, and a state of awful, fearful looking for the fiery indignation of the wrath of God upon them. Thus they remain in this state, as well as the righteous in paradise, until the time of their resurrection. Now there are some that have understood that this state of happiness and this state of misery of the soul before the resurrection was a first resurrection. Yea, I admit it may be termed a resurrection, the raising of the spirit or the soul and their consignation to happiness or misery, according to the words which have been spoken. And behold, again it hath been spoken, that there is a first resurrection, a resurrection of all those who have been, or who are, or who shall be, down to the resurrection of Christ from the dead. Now we do not suppose that this first resurrection, which is spoken of in this manner, can be the resurrection of the souls and their consignation to happiness or misery. 
ye cannot suppose that this is what it meaneth. Behold, I say unto you, Nay. But it meaneth the reuniting of the soul with the body, of those from the days of Adam down to the resurrection of Christ. Now whether the souls and the bodies of those of whom has been spoken shall all be reunited at once, the wicked as well as the righteous, I do not say. Let it suffice that I say that they all come forth, or in other words, their resurrection cometh to pass before the resurrection of those who die after the resurrection of Christ. Now, my son, I do not say that their resurrection cometh at the resurrection of Christ, but behold, I give it as my opinion that the souls and the bodies are reunited of the righteous at the resurrection of Christ and his ascension into heaven. But whether it be at his resurrection or after, I do not say. But this much I say, that there is a space between death and the resurrection of the body, and a state of the soul in happiness or in misery until the time which is appointed of God that the dead shall come forth and be reunited, both soul and body, and be brought to stand before God, and be judged according to their works. Yea, this bringeth about the restoration of those things of which has been spoken by the mouths of the prophets. The soul shall be restored to the body, and the body to the soul. Yea, and every limb and joint shall be restored to its body. Yea, even a hair of the head shall not be lost, but all things shall be restored to their proper and perfect frame. And now, my son, this is the restoration of which has been spoken by the mouths of the prophets. And then shall the righteous shine forth in the kingdom of God. But behold, an awful death cometh upon the wicked. For they die as to things pertaining to things of righteousness. For they are unclean, and no unclean thing can inherit the kingdom of God. But they are cast out, and consigned to partake of the fruits of their labors or their works, which have been evil. And they drink the dregs of a bitter cup. Chapter 41 in the resurrection, men come forth to a state of endless happiness or endless misery. Wickedness never was happiness. Carnal men are without God in the world. Every person receives again in the restoration the characteristics and attributes acquired in mortality. About 74 B.C. And now, my son, I have somewhat to say concerning the restoration of which has been spoken. For behold, some have wrested the Scriptures, and have gone far astray because of this thing. And I perceive that thy mind has been worried also concerning this thing. But behold, I will explain it unto thee. I say unto thee, my son, that the plan of restoration is requisite with the justice of God. For it is requisite that all things should be restored to their proper order. Behold, it is requisite and just according to the power and resurrection of Christ, that the soul of man should be restored to its body, and that every part of the body should be restored to itself. And it is requisite with the justice of God that men should be judged according to their works. And if their works were good in this life, and the desires of their hearts were good, that they should also at the last day be restored unto that which is good. And if their works are evil, they shall be restored unto them for evil. Therefore, all things shall be restored to their proper order, everything to its natural frame, mortality raised to immortality, corruption to incorruption, raised to endless happiness to inherit the kingdom of God, or to endless misery to inherit the kingdom of the devil, the one on one hand, the other on the other, the one raised to happiness according to his desires of happiness, or good according to his desires of good, and the other to evil according to his desires of evil. For as he has desired to do evil all the day long, even so shall he have his reward of evil when the night cometh. And so it is on the other hand, if he hath repented of his sins and desired righteousness until the end of his days, even so he shall be rewarded unto righteousness. These are they that are redeemed of the Lord. Yea, these are they that are taken out, that are delivered from that endless night of darkness, 
and thus they stand or fall. For behold, they are their own judges, whether to do good or do evil. Now the decrees of God are unalterable. Therefore, the way is prepared that whosoever will may walk therein and be saved. And now behold, my son, do not risk one more offense against your God upon those points of doctrine, which ye have hitherto risked to commit sin. Do not suppose, because it has been spoken concerning restoration, that ye shall be restored from sin to happiness. Behold, I say unto you, wickedness never was happiness. And now, my son, all men that are in a state of nature, or I would say in a carnal state, are in the gall of bitterness and in the bonds of iniquity. They are without God in the world, and they have gone contrary to the nature of God. Therefore, they are in a state contrary to the nature of happiness. And now, behold, is the meaning of the word restoration to take a thing of a natural state and place it in an unnatural state, or to place it in a state opposite to its nature? Oh, my son, this is not the case but the meaning of the word restoration is to bring back again evil for evil, or carnal for carnal, or devilish for devilish, good for that which is good, righteous for that which is righteous, just for that which is just, merciful for that which is merciful. Therefore, my son, see that you are merciful unto your brethren. Deal justly, judge righteously, and do good continually. And if ye do all these things, then shall ye receive your reward. Yea, ye shall have mercy restored unto you again. Ye shall have justice restored unto you again. Ye shall have a righteous judgment restored unto you again. And ye shall have good rewarded unto you again. For that which ye do send out shall return unto you again and be restored. Therefore, the word restoration more fully condemneth the sinner, and justifieth him not at all. Chapter 42 Mortality is a probationary time to enable man to repent and serve God. The fall brought temporal and spiritual death upon all mankind. Redemption comes through repentance. God himself atones for the sins of the world. Mercy is for those who repent. All others are subject to God's justice. Mercy comes because of the atonement. Only the truly penitent are saved. About 74 B.C. And now, my son, I perceive there is somewhat more which doth worry your mind, which ye cannot understand, which is concerning the justice of God in the punishment of the sinner. For ye do try to suppose that it is injustice that the sinner should be consigned to a state of misery. Now behold, my son, I will explain this thing unto thee. For behold, after the Lord God sent our first parents forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence they were taken, yea, he drew out the man, and he placed at the east end of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the tree of life. Now we see that the man had become as God, knowing good and evil. And lest he should put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. The Lord God placed cherubim, and the flaming sword, that he should not partake of the fruit. And thus we see that there was a time granted unto man to repent, yea, a probationary time, a time to repent and serve God. For behold, if Adam had put forth his hand immediately, and partaken of the tree of life, he would have lived forever, according to the word of God, having no space for repentance. Yea, and also the word of God would have been void, and the great plan of salvation would have been frustrated. But behold, it was appointed unto man to die. Therefore, as they were cut off from the tree of life, they should be cut off from the face of the earth. And man became lost forever. Yea, they became fallen man. And now... Ye see by this that our first parents were cut off both temporally and spiritually from the presence of the Lord. And thus we see they became subjects to follow after their own will. Now behold, 
It was not expedient that man should be reclaimed from this temporal death, for that would destroy the great plan of happiness. Therefore, as the soul could never die, and the fall had brought upon all mankind a spiritual death as well as a temporal, that is, they were cut off from the presence of the Lord, it was expedient that mankind should be reclaimed from this spiritual death. Therefore, as they had become carnal, sensual, and devilish by nature, this probationary state became a state for them to prepare. It became a preparatory state. And now remember, my son, if it were not for the plan of redemption, laying it aside, as soon as they were dead, their souls were miserable, being cut off from the presence of the Lord. And now, there was no means to reclaim men from this fallen state, which man had brought upon himself because of his own disobedience. Therefore, according to justice, the plan of redemption could not be brought about only on conditions of repentance of men in this probationary state, yea, this preparatory state. For except it were for these conditions, mercy could not take effect, except it should destroy the work of justice. Now the work of justice could not be destroyed. If so, God would cease to be God. And thus we see that all mankind were fallen, and they were in the grasp of justice, yea, the justice of God, which consigned them forever to be cut off from His presence. And now the plan of mercy could not be brought about except an atonement should be made. Therefore, God Himself atoneth for the sins of the world, to bring about the plan of mercy, to appease the demands of justice, that God might be a perfect, just God, and a merciful God also. Now repentance could not come unto men except there were a punishment, which also was eternal as the life of the soul should be, a fixed opposite to the plan of happiness, which was as eternal also as the life of the soul. Now how could a man repent except he should sin? How could he sin if there was no law? How could there be a law, save there was a punishment? Now there was a punishment affixed, and a just law given, which brought remorse of conscience unto man. Now if there was no law given, if a man murdered, he should die. Would he be afraid he would die if he should murder? And also, if there was no law given against sin, men would not be afraid to sin. And if there was no law given, if men sinned, what could justice do, or mercy either, for they would have no claim upon the creature? But there is a law given, and a punishment affixed, and a repentance granted. Which repentance? Mercy claimeth. Otherwise, justice claimeth the creature, and executeth the law, and the law inflicteth the punishment. If not so, the works of justice would be destroyed, and God would cease to be God. But God ceaseth not to be God, and mercy claimeth the penitent, and mercy cometh because of the atonement, and the atonement bringeth to pass the resurrection of the dead, and the resurrection of the dead bringeth back men into the presence of God, and thus they are restored into His presence to be judged according to their works, according to the law and justice. For behold, Justice exerciseth all his demands, and also mercy claimeth all which is her own. And thus, none but the truly penitent are saved. What, do ye suppose that mercy can rob justice? I say unto you, nay, not one whit. If so, God would cease to be God, and thus God bringeth about his great and eternal purposes, which were prepared from the foundation of the world, and thus cometh about the salvation and the redemption of men, and also their destruction and misery. Therefore, O my son, whosoever will come may come and partake of the waters of life freely, and whosoever will not come, the same is not compelled to come. But in the last day it shall be restored unto him according to his deeds. If he has desired to do evil, and has not repented in his days, Behold, evil shall be done unto him, according to the restoration of God. And now, my son, I desire that ye should let these things trouble you no more, and only let your sins trouble you, 
with that trouble which shall bring you down unto repentance. O my son, I desire that ye should deny the justice of God no more. Do not endeavor to excuse yourself in the least point because of your sins, by denying the justice of God. But do you let the justice of God, and His mercy, and His long-suffering, have full sway in your heart, and let it bring you down to the dust in humility. And now, O my son, ye are called of God to preach the word unto this people. And now, my son, go thy way. Declare the word with truth and soberness, that thou mayest bring souls unto repentance, that the great plan of mercy may have claim upon them. And may God grant unto you, even according to my words. Amen. Chapter 43 Alma and his sons preach the word. The Zoramites and other Nephite dissenters become Lamanites. The Lamanites come against the Nephites in war. Moroni arms the Nephites with defensive armor. The Lord reveals to Alma the strategy of the Lamanites. The Nephites defend their homes, liberties, families, and religion. The armies of Moroni and Lehi surround the Lamanites. About 74 B.C. And now it came to pass that the sons of Alma did go forth among the people to declare the word unto them. And Alma also himself could not rest, and he also went forth. Now we shall say no more concerning their preaching, except that they preached the word and the truth according to the spirit of prophecy and revelation. And they preached after the holy order of God by which they were called. And now I return to an account of the wars between the Nephites and the Lamanites in the eighteenth year of the reign of the judges. For behold, it came to pass that the Zoramites became Lamanites. Therefore, in the commencement of the eighteenth year, the people of the Nephites saw that the Lamanites were coming upon them. Therefore, they made preparations for war. Yea, they gathered together their armies in the land of Jershon. And it came to pass that the Lamanites came with their thousands. And they came into the land of Antionum, which is the land of the Zoramites. And a man by the name of Zarahemna was their leader. And now, as the Amalekites were of a more wicked and murderous disposition than the Lamanites were, in and of themselves, therefore Zarahemna appointed chief captains over the Lamanites. And they were all Amalekites and Zoramites. Now this he did, that he might preserve their hatred towards the Nephites, that he might bring them into subjection to the accomplishment of his designs. For behold, his designs were to stir up the Lamanites to anger against the Nephites. This he did that he might usurp great power over them, and also that he might gain power over the Nephites by bringing them into bondage. And now the design of the Nephites was to support their lands, and their houses, and their wives, and their children, that they might preserve them from the hands of their enemies, and also that they might preserve their rights and their privileges, yea, and also their liberty, that they might worship God according to their desires. For they knew that if they should fall into the hands of the Lamanites, that whosoever should worship God in spirit and in truth, the true and the living God, the Lamanites would destroy. Yea, and they also knew the extreme hatred of the Lamanites towards their brethren, who were the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi, who were called the people of Ammon. And they would not take up arms. Yea, they had entered into a covenant, and they would not break it. Therefore, if they should fall into the hands of the Lamanites, they would be destroyed and the Nephites would not suffer that they should be destroyed. Therefore they gave them lands for their inheritance. And the people of Ammon did give unto the Nephites a large portion of their substance to support their armies. And thus the Nephites were compelled, alone, to withstand against the Lamanites, who were a compound of Laman and Lemuel, and the sons of Ishmael, and all those who had dissented from the Nephites, who were Amalekites, and Zoramites, and the descendants of the priests of Noah. Now those descendants were as numerous nearly as were the Nephites, and thus the Nephites were obliged to contend with their brethren, even unto bloodshed. 
And it came to pass, as the armies of the Lamanites had gathered together in the land of Antionum, behold, the armies of the Nephites were prepared to meet them in the land of Jershon. Now the leader of the Nephites, or the man who had been appointed to be the chief captain over the Nephites, now the chief captain took the command of all the armies of the Nephites, and his name was Moroni. And Moroni took all the command and the government of their wars. And he was only twenty and five years old when he was appointed chief captain over the armies of the Nephites. And it came to pass that he met the Lamanites in the borders of Jershon. And his people were armed with swords and with scimitars and all manner of weapons of war. And when the armies of the Lamanites saw that the people of Nephi, or that Moroni, had prepared his people with breastplates and with arm shields, yea, and also shields to defend their heads, and also they were dressed with thick clothing, now the army of Zarahemna was not prepared with any such thing. They had only their swords and their scimitars, their bows and their arrows, their stones and their slings, and they were naked save it were a skin which was girded about their loins. Yea, all were naked, save it were the Zoramites and the Amalekites, but they were not armed with breastplates nor shields. Therefore they were exceedingly afraid of the armies of the Nephites because of their armor, notwithstanding their number being so much greater than the Nephites. Behold, now it came to pass that they durst not come against the Nephites in the borders of Jershon. Therefore they departed out of the land of Antionum into the wilderness, and took their journey round about in the wilderness, away by the head of the river Sidon, that they might come into the land of Manti and take possession of the land. For they did not suppose that the armies of Moroni would know whither they had gone. But it came to pass, as soon as they had departed into the wilderness, Moroni sent spies into the wilderness to watch their camp. And Moroni, also, knowing of the prophecies of Alma, sent certain men unto him, desiring him that he should inquire of the Lord whither the armies of the Nephites should go to defend themselves against the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the word of the Lord came unto Alma, and Alma informed the messengers of Moroni that the armies of the Lamanites were marching round about in the wilderness, that they might come over into the land of Manti that they might commence an attack upon the weaker part of the people. And those messengers went and delivered the message unto Moroni. Now Moroni, leaving a part of his army in the land of Jershon, lest by any means a part of the Lamanites should come into that land and take possession of the city, took the remaining part of his army and marched over into the land of Manti. And he caused that all the people in that quarter of the land should gather themselves together to battle against the Lamanites, to defend their lands and their country, their rights and their liberties. Therefore they were prepared against the time of the coming of the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Moroni caused that his army should be secreted in the valley which was near the bank of the river Sidon, which was on the west of the river Sidon in the wilderness. And Moroni placed spies round about, that he might know when the camp of the Lamanites should come. And now, as Moroni knew the intention of the Lamanites, that it was their intention to destroy their brethren, or to subject them and bring them into bondage, that they might establish a kingdom unto themselves over all the land. And he also, knowing that it was the only desire of the Nephites to preserve their lands, and their liberty, and their church. Therefore he thought it no sin that he should defend them by stratagem. Therefore he found by his spies which course the Lamanites were to take. Therefore he divided his army and brought a part over into the valley, and concealed them on the east and on the south of the hill Ripla. And the remainder he concealed in the west valley, on the west of the river Sidon, and so down into the borders of the land Manti. And thus, having placed his army according to his desire, he was prepared to meet them. And it came to pass that the Lamanites came up on the north of the hill, where a part of the army of Moroni was concealed.
And as the Lamanites had passed the hill Ripla, and came into the valley, and began to cross the river Sidon, the army which was concealed on the south of the hill, which was led by a man whose name was Lehi, and he led his army forth, and encircled the Lamanites about on the east in their rear. And it came to pass that the Lamanites, when they saw the Nephites coming upon them in their rear, turned them about, and began to contend with the army of Lehi, and the work of death commenced on both sides. But it was more dreadful on the part of the Lamanites, for their nakedness was exposed to the heavy blows of the Nephites with their swords and their scimitars, which brought death almost at every stroke. While, on the other hand, there was now and then a man fell among the Nephites, by their swords and the loss of blood, they being shielded from the more vital parts of the body, or the more vital parts of the body being shielded from the strokes of the Lamanites by their breastplates and their arm shields and their headplates. And thus the Nephites did carry on the work of death among the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the Lamanites became frightened because of the great destruction among them, even until they began to flee towards the river Sidon. And they were pursued by Lehi and his men, and they were driven by Lehi into the waters of Sidon, and they crossed the waters of Sidon. And Lehi retained his armies upon the bank of the river Sidon, that they should not cross. And it came to pass that Moroni and his army met the Lamanites in the valley, on the other side of the river Sidon, and began to fall upon them and to slay them. And the Lamanites did flee again before them, towards the land of Manti, and they were met again by the armies of Moroni. Now in this case the Lamanites did fight exceedingly. Yea, never had the Lamanites been known to fight with such exceedingly great strength and courage, no, not even from the beginning. And they were inspired by the Zoramites and the Amalekites, who were their chief captains and leaders, and by Zarahemna, who was their chief captain, or their chief leader and commander. Yea, they did fight like dragons, and many of the Nephites were slain by their hands, yea, for they did smite in two many of their headplates, and they did pierce many of their breastplates, and they did smite off many of their arms. And thus the Lamanites did smite in their fierce anger. Nevertheless, the Nephites were inspired by a better cause, for they were not fighting for monarchy nor power, but they were fighting for their homes and their liberties, their wives and their children, and their all. Yea, for their rites of worship and their church. And they were doing that which they felt was the duty which they owed to their God. For the Lord had said unto them, and also unto their fathers, that inasmuch as ye are not guilty of the first offense, neither the second, ye shall not suffer yourselves to be slain by the hands of your enemies. And again, the Lord has said that ye shall defend your families even unto bloodshed. Therefore for this cause were the Nephites contending with the Lamanites to defend themselves and their families and their lands, their country and their rights and their religion. And it came to pass that when the men of Moroni saw the fierceness and the anger of the Lamanites, they were about to shrink and flee from them. And Moroni, perceiving their intent, sent forth and inspired their hearts with these thoughts. Yea, the thoughts of their lands, their liberty, yea, their freedom from bondage. And it came to pass that they turned upon the Lamanites, and they cried with one voice unto the Lord their God, for their liberty and their freedom from bondage. And they began to stand against the Lamanites with power. And in that selfsame hour that they cried unto the Lord for their freedom, the Lamanites began to flee before them. And they fled even to the waters of Sidon. Now the Lamanites were more numerous, yea, by more than double the number of the Nephites. Nevertheless, they were driven insomuch that they were gathered together in one body in the valley, upon the bank by the river Sidon. Therefore the armies of Moroni encircled them about, yea, even on both sides of the river. For behold, on the east were the men of Lehi. Therefore, 
when Zarahemna saw the men of Lehi on the east of the river Sidon, and the armies of Moroni on the west of the river Sidon, that they were encircled about by the Nephites. They were struck with terror. Now Moroni, when he saw their terror, commanded his men that they should stop shedding their blood. Chapter 44 Moroni commands the Lamanites to make a covenant of peace or be destroyed. Zarahemna rejects the offer, and the battle resumes. Moroni's armies defeat the Lamanites about 74 through 73 B.C. And it came to pass that they did stop and withdrew apace from them. And Moroni said unto Zarahemna, Behold, Zarahemna, that we do not desire to be men of blood. Ye know that ye are in our hands, yet we do not desire to slay you. Behold, we have not come out to battle against you that we might shed your blood for power. Neither do we desire to bring anyone to the yoke of bondage. But this is the very cause for which ye have come against us. Yea, and ye are angry with us because of our religion. But now, ye behold that the Lord is with us, and ye behold that he has delivered you into our hands. And now I would that ye should understand that this is done unto us because of our religion and our faith in Christ. And now ye see that ye cannot destroy this, our faith. Now ye see that this is the true faith of God. Yea, ye see that God will support and keep and preserve us, so long as we are faithful unto him and unto our faith and our religion. And never will the Lord suffer that we shall be destroyed, except we should fall into transgression and deny our faith. And now, Zarahemna, I command you in the name of that all-powerful God, who has strengthened our arms that we have gained power over you, by our faith, by our religion, and by our rites of worship, and by our church, and by the sacred support which we owe to our wives and our children, by that liberty which binds us to our lands and our country, yea, and also by the maintenance of the sacred word of God, to which we owe all our happiness, and by all that is most dear unto us. Yea, and this is not all. I command you by all the desires which ye have for life, that ye deliver up your weapons of war unto us, and we will seek not your blood, but we will spare your lives, if ye will go your way and come not again to war against us. And now, if ye do not this, behold, ye are in our hands, and I will command my men that they shall fall upon you, and inflict the wounds of death in your bodies, that ye may become extinct. And then we will see who shall have power over this people. Yea, we will see who shall be brought into bondage. And now it came to pass that when Zarahemna had heard these sayings, he came forth and delivered up his sword and his scimitar and his bow into the hands of Moroni, and said unto him, Behold, here are our weapons of war. We will deliver them up unto you. But we will not suffer ourselves to take an oath unto you, which we know that we shall break, and also our children. But take our weapons of war, and suffer that we may depart into the wilderness. Otherwise, we will retain our swords, and we will perish or conquer. Behold, we are not of your faith. We do not believe that it is God that has delivered us into your hands, but we believe that it is your cunning that has preserved you from our swords. Behold, it is your breastplates and your shields that have preserved you. And now, when Zarahemna had made an end of speaking these words, Moroni returned the sword and the weapons of war which he had received unto Zarahemna, saying, Behold, we will end the conflict. Now I cannot recall the words which I have spoken. Therefore, as the Lord liveth, ye shall not depart, except ye depart with an oath that ye will not return again against us to war. Now as ye are in our hands, we will spill your blood upon the ground, or ye shall submit to the conditions which I have proposed. And now when Moroni had said these words, Zarahemna retained his sword, and he was angry with Moroni, and he rushed forward that he might slay Moroni. 
But as he raised his sword, behold, one of Moroni's soldiers smote it even to the earth, and it broke by the hilt. And he also smote Zarahemna that he took off his scalp, and it fell to the earth. And Zarahemna withdrew from before them into the midst of his soldiers. And it came to pass that the soldier who stood by, who smote off the scalp of Zarahemna, took up the scalp from off the ground by the hair, and laid it upon the point of his sword, and stretched it forth unto them, saying unto them with a loud voice, Even as this scalp has fallen to the earth, which is the scalp of your chief, so shall ye fall to the earth, except ye will deliver up your weapons of war, and depart with a covenant of peace. Now there were many, when they heard these words and saw the scalp which was upon the sword, that were struck with fear. And many came forth, and threw down their weapons of war at the feet of Moroni, and entered into a covenant of peace. And as many as entered into a covenant, they suffered to depart into the wilderness. Now it came to pass that Zarahemna was exceedingly wroth, and he did stir up the remainder of his soldiers to anger, to contend more powerfully against the Nephites. And now Moroni was angry because of the stubbornness of the Lamanites. Therefore he commanded his people that they should fall upon them and slay them. And it came to pass that they began to slay them. Yea, and the Lamanites did contend with their swords and their might. But behold, their naked skins and their bare heads were exposed to the sharp swords of the Nephites. Yea, behold, they were pierced and smitten. Yea, and did fall exceedingly fast before the swords of the Nephites. And they began to be swept down, even as the soldier of Moroni had prophesied. Now Zarahemna, when he saw that they were all about to be destroyed, cried mightily unto Moroni, promising that he would covenant, and also his people with them, if they would spare the remainder of their lives, that they never would come to war again against them. And it came to pass that Moroni caused that the work of death should cease again among the people. And he took the weapons of war from the Lamanites, and after they had entered into a covenant with him of peace, they were suffered to depart into the wilderness. Now the number of their dead was not numbered because of the greatness of the number. Yea, the number of their dead was exceedingly great, both on the Nephites and on the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they did cast their dead into the waters of Sidon. And they have gone forth and are buried in the depths of the sea. And the armies of the Nephites, or of Moroni, returned and came to their houses and their lands. And thus ended the eighteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus ended the record of Alma, which was written upon the plates of Nephi. The account of the people of Nephi and their wars and ascensions in the days of Helaman, according to the record of Helaman, which he kept in his days. Comprising chapters 45 through 62. Chapter 45 Helaman believes the words of Alma. Alma prophesies the destruction of the Nephites. He blesses and curses the land. Alma may have been taken up by the Spirit, even as Moses. Dissension grows in the church. About 73 B.C. Behold, now it came to pass that the people of Nephi were exceedingly rejoiced, because the Lord had again delivered them out of the hands of their enemies. Therefore they gave thanks unto the Lord their God. Yea, and they did fast much and pray much, and they did worship God with exceedingly great joy. And it came to pass in the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, that Alma came unto his son Helaman, and said unto him, Believest thou the words which I spake unto thee concerning those records which have been kept? And Helaman said unto him, Yea, I believe. And Alma said again, Believest thou in Jesus Christ, who shall come? And he said, Yea, I believe all the words which thou hast spoken. And Alma said unto him again, Will ye keep my commandments? 
And he said, Yea, I will keep thy commandments with all my heart. Then Alma said unto him, Blessed art thou, and the Lord shall prosper thee in this land. But behold, I have somewhat to prophesy unto thee. But what I prophesy unto thee, ye shall not make known. Yea, what I prophesy unto thee shall not be made known, even until the prophecy is fulfilled. Therefore, write the words which I shall say, and these are the words. Behold, I perceive that this very people, the Nephites, according to the spirit of revelation which is in me, in four hundred years from the time that Jesus Christ shall manifest himself unto them, shall dwindle in unbelief. Yea, and then shall they see wars and pestilences, yea, famines and bloodshed, even until the people of Nephi shall become extinct. Yea, and this because they shall dwindle in unbelief and fall into the works of darkness and lasciviousness and all manner of iniquities. Yea, I say unto you, that because they shall sin against so great light and knowledge, yea, I say unto you, that from that day, even the fourth generation shall not all pass away before this great iniquity shall come. And when that great day cometh, behold, the time very soon cometh that those who are now, or the seed of those who are now numbered among the people of Nephi, shall no more be numbered among the people of Nephi. But whosoever remaineth, and is not destroyed in that great and dreadful day, shall be numbered among the Lamanites, and shall become like unto them, all save it be a few who shall be called the disciples of the Lord. And them shall the Lamanites pursue, even until they shall become extinct. And now, because of iniquity, this prophecy shall be fulfilled. And now it came to pass that after Alma had said these things to Helaman, he blessed him, and also his other sons. And he also blessed the earth for the righteous sake. And he said, Thus saith the Lord God, Cursed shall be the land, yea, this land, unto every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, unto destruction, which do wickedly, when they are fully ripe. And as I have said, so shall it be. For this is the cursing and the blessing of God upon the land. For the Lord cannot look upon sin with the least degree of allowance. And now, when Alma had said these words, he blessed the church. Yea, all those who should stand fast in the faith from that time henceforth. And when Alma had done this, he departed out of the land of Zarahemla, as if to go into the land of Melech. And it came to pass that he was never heard of more. As to his death or burial, we know not of. Behold, this we know that he was a righteous man. And the saying went abroad in the church that he was taken up by the Spirit, or buried by the hand of the Lord, even as Moses. But behold, the Scriptures saith the Lord took Moses unto himself. And we suppose that he has also received Alma in the Spirit unto himself. Therefore, for this cause we know nothing concerning his death and burial. And now it came to pass in the commencement of the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, that Helaman went forth among the people to declare the word unto them. For behold, because of their wars with the Lamanites and the many little dissensions and disturbances which had been among the people, it became expedient that the word of God should be declared among them, yea, and that a regulation should be made throughout the church. Therefore. Helaman and his brethren went forth to establish the church again in all the land, yea, in every city throughout all the land which was possessed by the people of Nephi. And it came to pass that they did appoint priests and teachers throughout all the land, over all the churches. And now it came to pass that after Helaman and his brethren had appointed priests and teachers over the churches, that there arose a dissension among them, and they would not give heed to the words of Helaman and his brethren. But they grew proud, being lifted up in their hearts because of their exceedingly great riches. Therefore they grew rich in their own eyes, 
and would not give heed to their words, to walk uprightly before God. Chapter 46 Amalickiah conspires to be king. Moroni raises the title of liberty. He rallies the people to defend their religion. True believers are called Christians. A remnant of Joseph will be preserved. Amalickiah and the dissenters flee to the land of Nephi. Those who will not support the cause of freedom are put to death. About 73 through 72 B.C. And it came to pass that as many as would not hearken to the words of Helaman and his brethren were gathered together against their brethren. And now behold, they were exceedingly wroth, insomuch that they were determined to slay them. Now the leader of those who were wroth against their brethren was a large and a strong man, and his name was Amalickiah, and Amalickiah was desirous to be a king. And those people who were wroth were also desirous that he should be their king. And they were the greater part of them, the lower judges of the land, and they were seeking for power. And they had been led by the flatteries of Amalickiah, that if they would support him and establish him to be their king, that he would make them rulers over the people. Thus they were led away by Amalickiah to dissensions, notwithstanding the preaching of Helaman and his brethren, yea, notwithstanding their exceedingly great care over the church, for they were high priests over the church, and there were many in the church who believed in the flattering words of Amalickiah. Therefore they dissented, even from the church. And thus were the affairs of the people of Nephi exceedingly precarious and dangerous, notwithstanding their great victory which they had had over the Lamanites, and their great rejoicings which they had had because of their deliverance by the hand of the Lord. Thus we see how quick the children of men do forget the Lord their God, yea, how quick to do iniquity and to be led away by the evil one. Yea, and we also see the great wickedness one very wicked man can cause to take place among the children of men. Yea, we see that Amalickiah, because he was a man of cunning device and a man of many flattering words, that he led away the hearts of many people to do wickedly. Yea, and to seek to destroy the church of God, and to destroy the foundation of liberty which God had granted unto them, or which blessing God had sent upon the face of the land for the righteous sake. And now it came to pass that when Moroni, who was the chief commander of the armies of the Nephites, had heard of these dissensions, he was angry with Amalickiah, and it came to pass that he rent his coat, and he took a piece thereof and wrote upon it, In memory of our God, our religion and freedom, and our peace, our wives, and our children. And he fastened it upon the end of a pole, and he fastened on his headplate and his breastplate and his shields, and girded on his armor about his loins. And he took the pole which had on the end thereof his rent coat, and he called it the title of liberty. And he bowed himself to the earth, and he prayed mightily unto his God for the blessings of liberty to rest upon his brethren, so long as there should a band of Christians remain to possess the land. For thus were all the true believers of Christ, who belonged to the church of God, called by those who did not belong to the church, and those who did belong to the church were faithful. Yea, all those who were true believers in Christ took upon them gladly the name of Christ, or Christians as they were called, because of their belief in Christ who should come. And therefore, at this time, Moroni prayed that the cause of the Christians and the freedom of the land might be favored. And it came to pass that when he had poured out his soul to God, he named all the land which was south of the land desolation, yea, and in fine, all the land, both on the north and on the south, a chosen land, and the land of liberty. And he said, Surely God shall not suffer that we, who are despised because we take upon us the name of Christ, shall be trodden down and destroyed, until we bring it upon us by our own transgressions. And when Moroni had said these words, he went forth among the people, 
waving the rent part of his garment in the air, that all might see the writing which he had written upon the rent part, and crying with a loud voice, saying, Behold, whosoever will maintain this title upon the land, let them come forth in the strength of the Lord, and enter into a covenant that they will maintain their rights and their religion, that the Lord God may bless them. And it came to pass that when Moroni had proclaimed these words, behold, the people came running together with their armor girded about their loins, rending their garments in token, or as a covenant, that they would not forsake the Lord their God. Or in other words, if they should transgress the commandments of God, or fall into transgression, and be ashamed to take upon them the name of Christ, the Lord should rend them, even as they had rent their garments. Now this was the covenant which they made, and they cast their garments at the feet of Moroni, saying, We covenant with our God that we shall be destroyed, even as our brethren in the land northward, if we shall fall into transgression. Yea, he may cast us at the feet of our enemies, even as we have cast our garments at thy feet to be trodden underfoot, if we shall fall into transgression. Moroni said unto them, Behold, we are a remnant of the seed of Jacob. Yea, we are a remnant of the seed of Joseph, whose coat was rent by his brethren into many pieces. Yea, and now behold, let us remember to keep the commandments of God, or our garments shall be rent by our brethren, and we be cast into prison, or be sold, or be slain. Yea, let us preserve our liberty as a remnant of Joseph. Yea, let us remember the words of Jacob before his death, for behold, he saw that a part of the remnant of the coat of Joseph was preserved and had not decayed. And he said, Even as this remnant of garment of my son hath been preserved, so shall a remnant of the seed of my son be preserved by the hand of God and be taken unto himself, while the remainder of the seed of Joseph shall perish, even as the remnant of his garment. Now behold, this giveth my soul sorrow. Nevertheless, my soul hath joy in my son, because of that part of his seed which shall be taken unto God. Now behold, this was the language of Jacob. And now who knoweth but what the remnant of the seed of Joseph, which shall perish as his garment, are those who have dissented from us? Yea, and even it shall be ourselves if we do not stand fast in the faith of Christ. And now it came to pass that when Moroni had said these words, he went forth, and also sent forth in all the parts of the land where there were dissensions, and gathered together all the people who were desirous to maintain their liberty, to stand against Amalekiah and those who had dissented, who were called Amalekiahites. And it came to pass that when Amalekiah saw that the people of Moroni were more numerous than the Amalekiahites, and he also saw that his people were doubtful concerning the justice of the cause in which they had undertaken. Therefore, fearing that he should not gain the point, he took those of his people who would, and departed into the land of Nephi. Now Moroni thought it was not expedient that the Lamanites should have any more strength. Therefore, he thought to cut off the people of Amalickiah, or to take them and bring them back, and put Amalickiah to death. Yea, for he knew that he would stir up the Lamanites to anger against them, and cause them to come to battle against them. And this he knew that Amalickiah would do that he might obtain his purposes. Therefore, Moroni thought it was expedient that he should take his armies, who had gathered themselves together and armed themselves, and entered into a covenant to keep the peace. And it came to pass that he took his army and marched out with his tents into the wilderness to cut off the course of Amalickiah in the wilderness. And it came to pass that he did according to his desires and marched forth into the wilderness and headed the armies of Amalickiah. And it came to pass that Amalickiah fled with a small number of his men. And the remainder were delivered up into the hands of Moroni and were taken back into the land of Zarahemla. 
Namaroni, being a man who was appointed by the chief judges and the voice of the people. Therefore he had power according to his will with the armies of the Nephites to establish and to exercise authority over them. And it came to pass that whomsoever of the Amalekiahites that would not enter into a covenant to support the cause of freedom, that they might maintain a free government, he caused to be put to death. And there were but few who denied the covenant of freedom. And it came to pass also that he caused the title of liberty to be hoisted upon every tower which was in all the land, which was possessed by the Nephites. And thus Moroni planted the standard of liberty among the Nephites, and they began to have peace again in the land. And thus they did maintain peace in the land until nearly the end of the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges. And Helaman and the high priests did also maintain order in the church. Yea, even for the space of four years did they have much peace and rejoicing in the church. And it came to pass that there were many who died, firmly believing that their souls were redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus they went out of the world rejoicing, and there were some who died with fevers, which at some seasons of the year were very frequent in the land, but not so much so with fevers, because of the excellent qualities of the many plants and roots which God had prepared to remove the cause of diseases, to which men were subject by the nature of the climate. But there were many who died with old age, and those who died in the faith of Christ are happy in Him, as we must needs suppose. Chapter 47 Amalickiah Uses Treachery, Murder, and Intrigue to Become King of the Lamanites The Nephite dissenters are more wicked and ferocious than the Lamanites. About 72 B.C. Now we will return in our record to Amalickiah and those who had fled with him into the wilderness. For behold, he had taken those who went with him, and went up in the land of Nephi among the Lamanites, and did stir up the Lamanites to anger against the people of Nephi, insomuch that the king of the Lamanites sent a proclamation throughout all his land, among all his people, that they should gather themselves together again to go to battle against the Nephites. And it came to pass that when the proclamation had gone forth among them, they were exceedingly afraid. Yea, they feared to displease the king, and they also feared to go to battle against the Nephites, lest they should lose their lives. And it came to pass that they would not, or the more part of them would not, obey the commandments of the king. And now it came to pass that the king was wroth because of their disobedience. Therefore, he gave Amalickiah the command of that part of his army which was obedient unto his commands, and commanded him that he should go forth and compel them to arms. Now behold, this was the desire of Amalickiah. For he being a very subtle man to do evil, therefore he laid the plan in his heart to dethrone the king of the Lamanites. And now, he had got the command of those parts of the Lamanites who were in favor of the king. And he sought to gain favor of those who were not obedient. Therefore he went forward to the place which was called Oneida, for thither had all the Lamanites fled. For they discovered the army coming, and, supposing that they were coming to destroy them, therefore they fled to Oneida, to the place of arms and they had appointed a man to be a king and a leader over them, being fixed in their minds with a determined resolution that they would not be subjected to go against the Nephites. And it came to pass that they had gathered themselves together upon the top of the mount which was called Antipas, in preparation to battle. Now it was not Amalickiah's intention to give them battle according to the commandments of the king. But behold, it was his intention to gain favor with the armies of the Lamanites, that he might place himself at their head, and dethrone the king, and take possession of the kingdom. And behold, it came to pass that he caused his army to pitch their tents in the valley which was near the Mount Antipas. And it came to pass that when it was night, he sent a secret embassy into the Mount Antipas, desiring that the leader of those who were upon the mount, 
whose name was Leontai, that he should come down to the foot of the mount, for he desired to speak with him. And it came to pass that when Leontai received the message, he durst not go down to the foot of the mount. And it came to pass that Amalekiah sent again the second time, desiring him to come down. And it came to pass that Leontai would not. And he sent again the third time. And it came to pass that when Amalekiah found that he could not get Leontai to come down off from the mount, he went up into the mount, nearly to Leontai's camp. And he sent again the fourth time his message unto Leontai, desiring that he would come down, and that he would bring his guards with him. And it came to pass that when Leontai had come down with his guards to Amalekiah, that Amalekiah desired him to come down with his army in the night time, and surround those men in their camps over whom the king had given him command, and that he would deliver them up into Leontai's hands, if he would make him, Amalekiah, a second leader over the whole army. And it came to pass that Leontai came down with his men, and surrounded the men of Amalekiah, so that before they awoke at the dawn of day, they were surrounded by the armies of Leontai. And it came to pass that when they saw that they were surrounded, they pled with Amalekiah that he would suffer them to fall in with their brethren, that they might not be destroyed. Now this was the very thing which Amalekiah desired. And it came to pass that he delivered his men, contrary to the commands of the king. Now this was the thing that Amalekiah desired, that he might accomplish his designs in dethroning the king. Now it was the custom among the Lamanites, if their chief leader was killed, to appoint the second leader to be their chief leader. And it came to pass that Amalekiah caused that one of his servants should administer poison by degrees to Leontai, that he died. Now when Leontai was dead, the Lamanites appointed Amalekiah to be their leader and their chief commander. And it came to pass that Amalekiah marched with his armies, for he had gained his desires, to the land of Nephi, to the city of Nephi, which was the chief city. And the king came out to meet him with his guards, for he supposed that Amalekiah had fulfilled his commands, and that Amalekiah had gathered together so great an army to go against the Nephites to battle. But behold, as the king came out to meet him, Amalekiah caused that his servants should go forth to meet the king. And they went, and bowed themselves before the king, as if to reverence him because of his greatness. And it came to pass that the king put forth his hand to raise them, as was the custom with the Lamanites, as a token of peace, which custom they had taken from the Nephites. And it came to pass that when he had raised the first from the ground, behold, he stabbed the king to the heart, and he fell to the earth. Now the servants of the king fled, and the servants of Amalekiah raised a cry, saying, Behold, the servants of the king have stabbed him to the heart, and he has fallen, and they have fled. Behold, come and see. And it came to pass that Amalekiah commanded that his army should march forth and see what had happened to the king. And when they had come to the spot, and found the king lying in his gore, Amalekiah pretended to be wroth, and said, Whosoever loved the king, let him go forth, and pursue his servants, that they may be slain. And it came to pass that all they who loved the king, when they heard these words, came forth and pursued after the servants of the king. Now when the servants of the king saw an army pursuing after them, they were frightened again and fled into the wilderness, and came over into the land of Zarahemla, and joined the people of Ammon. And the army which pursued after them returned, having pursued after them in vain. And thus Amalekiah, by his fraud, gained the hearts of the people. And it came to pass on the morrow he entered the city Nephi with his armies, and took possession of the city. And now it came to pass that the queen, when she had heard that the king was slain, for Amalekiah had sent an embassy to the queen, informing her that the king had been slain by his servants, that he had pursued them with his army, but it was in vain, and they had made their escape. Therefore, 
When the queen had received this message, she sent unto Amalickiah, desiring him that he would spare the people of the city. And she also desired him that he should come in unto her. And she also desired him that he should bring witnesses with him to testify concerning the death of the king. And it came to pass that Amalickiah took the same servant that slew the king, and all them who were with him, and went in unto the queen, unto the place where she sat. And they all testified unto her that the king was slain by his own servants. And they said also, They have fled. Does not this testify against them? And thus they satisfied the queen concerning the death of the king. And it came to pass that Amalickiah sought the favor of the queen, and took her unto him to wife. And thus by his fraud, and by the assistance of his cunning servants, he obtained the kingdom. Yea, he was acknowledged king throughout all the land, among all the people of the Lamanites, who were composed of the Lamanites, and the Lemuelites, and the Ishmaelites, and all the dissenters of the Nephites, from the reign of Nephi down to the present time. Now these dissenters, having the same instruction and the same information of the Nephites, yea, having been instructed in the same knowledge of the Lord. Nevertheless, it is strange to relate, not long after their dissensions, they became more hardened and impenitent, and more wild, wicked, and ferocious than the Lamanites, drinking in with the traditions of the Lamanites, giving way to indolence and all manner of lasciviousness, yea, entirely forgetting the Lord their God. Chapter 48 Amalickiah incites the Lamanites against the Nephites. Moroni prepares his people to defend the cause of the Christians. He rejoices in liberty and freedom and is a mighty man of God. About 72 B.C. And now it came to pass that as soon as Amalickiah had obtained the kingdom, he began to inspire the hearts of the Lamanites against the people of Nephi. Yea, he did appoint men to speak unto the Lamanites from their towers against the Nephites, and thus he did inspire their hearts against the Nephites, insomuch that in the latter end of the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges, he, having accomplished his designs thus far, yea, having been made king over the Lamanites, he sought also to reign over all the land, yea, and all the people who were in the land, the Nephites, as well as the Lamanites. Therefore, he had accomplished his design, for he had hardened the hearts of the Lamanites and blinded their minds, and stirred them up to anger, insomuch that he had gathered together a numerous host to go to battle against the Nephites. For he was determined, because of the greatness of the number of his people, to overpower the Nephites and to bring them into bondage. And thus he did appoint chief captains of the Zoramites, they being the most acquainted with the strength of the Nephites and their places of resort and the weakest parts of their cities. Therefore, he appointed them to be chief captains over his armies. And it came to pass that they took their camp and moved forth toward the land of Zarahemla in the wilderness. Now it came to pass that while Amalickiah had thus been obtaining power by fraud and deceit, Moroni, on the other hand, had been preparing the minds of the people to be faithful unto the Lord their God. Yea, he had been strengthening the armies of the Nephites and erecting small forts or places of resort, throwing up banks of earth round about to enclose his armies, and also building walls of stone to encircle them about, round about their cities and the borders of their lands, yea, all round about the land. And in their weakest fortifications he did place the greater number of men. And thus he did fortify and strengthen the land which was possessed by the Nephites, and thus he was preparing to support their liberty, their lands, their wives, and their children, and their peace, and that they might live unto the Lord their God. 
and that they might maintain that which was called by their enemies, the cause of Christians. And Moroni was a strong and a mighty man. He was a man of a perfect understanding, yea, a man that did not delight in bloodshed, a man whose soul did joy in the liberty and the freedom of his country, and his brethren from bondage and slavery, yea, a man whose heart did swell with thanksgiving to his God for the many privileges and blessings which he bestowed upon his people, a man who did labor exceedingly for the welfare and safety of his people. Yea, and he was a man who was firm in the faith of Christ, and he had sworn with an oath to defend his people, his rights, and his country, and his religion, even to the loss of his blood. Now the Nephites were taught to defend themselves against their enemies, even to the shedding of blood if it were necessary. Yea, and they were also taught never to give an offense. Yea, and never to raise the sword, except it were against an enemy, except it were to preserve their lives. And this was their faith, that by so doing, God would prosper them in the land. Or in other words, if they were faithful in keeping the commandments of God, that he would prosper them in the land. Yea, warn them to flee, or to prepare for war, according to their danger and also that God would make it known unto them whither they should go to defend themselves against their enemies, and by so doing, the Lord would deliver them. And this was the faith of Moroni, and his heart did glory in it, not in the shedding of blood, but in doing good, in preserving his people, yea, in keeping the commandments of God, yea, and resisting iniquity, yea, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if all men had been, and were, and ever would be, like unto Moroni, behold, the very powers of hell would have been shaken forever. Yea, the devil would never have power over the hearts of the children of men. Behold, he was a man like unto Ammon, the son of Mosiah. Yea, and even the other sons of Mosiah. Yea, and also Alma and his sons, for they were all men of God. Now behold, Helaman and his brethren were no less serviceable unto the people than was Moroni, for they did preach the word of God, and they did baptize unto repentance all men, whosoever would hearken unto their words. And thus they went forth, and the people did humble themselves because of their words, insomuch that they were highly favored of the Lord. And thus they were free from wars and contentions among themselves, yea, even for the space of four years. But, as I have said, in the latter end of the nineteenth year, yea, notwithstanding their peace amongst themselves, they were compelled reluctantly to contend with their brethren the Lamanites. Yea, and in fine, their wars never did cease for the space of many years with the Lamanites, notwithstanding their much reluctance. Now they were sorry to take up arms against the Lamanites, because they did not delight in the shedding of blood. Yea, and this was not all. They were sorry to be the means of sending so many of their brethren out of this world into an eternal world, unprepared to meet their God. Nevertheless, they could not suffer to lay down their lives, that their wives and their children should be massacred by the barbarous cruelty of those who were once their brethren. Yea, and had dissented from their church, and had left them, and had gone to destroy them by joining the Lamanites. Yea, they could not bear that their brethren should rejoice over the blood of the Nephites, so long as there were any who should keep the commandments of God. For the promise of the Lord was, if they should keep his commandments, they should prosper in the land. Chapter 49 the invading Lamanites are unable to take the fortified cities of Ammonihah and Noah. Amalickiah curses God and swears to drink the blood of Moroni. Helaman and his brethren continue to strengthen the church. About 72 B.C. And now it came to pass in the eleventh month of the nineteenth year, on the tenth day of the month, the armies of the Lamanites were seen approaching towards the land of Ammonihah, 
And behold, the city had been rebuilt, and Moroni had stationed an army by the borders of the city, and they had cast up dirt round about to shield them from the arrows and the stones of the Lamanites. For behold, they fought with stones and with arrows. Behold, I said that the city of Ammonihah had been rebuilt. I say unto you, yea, that it was in part rebuilt. And because the Lamanites had destroyed it once because of the iniquity of the people, they supposed that it would again become an easy prey for them. But behold, how great was their disappointment. For behold, the Nephites had dug up a ridge of earth round about them, which was so high that the Lamanites could not cast their stones and their arrows at them, that they might take effect. Neither could they come upon them, save it was by their place of entrance. Now at this time the chief captains of the Lamanites were astonished exceedingly, because of the wisdom of the Nephites in preparing their places of security. Now the leaders of the Lamanites had supposed, because of the greatness of their numbers, yea, they supposed that they should be privileged to come upon them as they had hitherto done, yea, and they had also prepared themselves with shields and with breastplates, and they had also prepared themselves with garments of skins, yea, very thick garments, to cover their nakedness. And being thus prepared, they supposed that they should easily overpower and subject their brethren to the yoke of bondage, or slay and massacre them, according to their pleasure. But behold, to their uttermost astonishment, they were prepared for them, in a manner which never had been known among the children of Lehi, now they were prepared for the Lamanites to battle after the manner of the instructions of Moroni. And it came to pass that the Lamanites, or the Amalekiahites, were exceedingly astonished at their manner of preparation for war. Now if King Amalekiah had come down out of the land of Nephi at the head of his army, perhaps he would have caused the Lamanites to have attacked the Nephites at the city of Ammonihah. For behold, he did care not for the blood of his people. But behold, Amalickiah did not come down himself to battle. And behold, his chief captains durst not attack the Nephites at the city of Ammonihah, for Moroni had altered the management of affairs among the Nephites, insomuch that the Lamanites were disappointed in their places of retreat, and they could not come upon them. Therefore, they retreated into the wilderness, and took their camp and marched towards the land of Noah, supposing that to be the next best place for them to come against the Nephites. For they knew not that Moroni had fortified or had built forts of security for every city in all the land round about. Therefore, they marched forward to the land of Noah with a firm determination. Yea, their chief captains came forward and took an oath that they would destroy the people of that city. But behold, to their astonishment, the city of Noah which had hitherto been a weak place, had now, by the means of Moroni, become strong, yea, even to exceed the strength of the city Ammonihah. And now, behold, this was wisdom in Moroni. For he had supposed that they would be frightened at the city Ammonihah. And as the city of Noah had hitherto been the weakest part of the land, therefore they would march thither to battle. And thus it was according to his desires. And behold, Moroni had appointed Lehi to be chief captain over the men of that city. And it was that same Lehi who fought with the Lamanites in the valley on the east of the river Sidon. And now behold, it came to pass that when the Lamanites had found that Lehi commanded the city, they were again disappointed, for they feared Lehi exceedingly. Nevertheless, their chief captains had sworn with an oath to attack the city. Therefore, they brought up their armies. Now behold, the Lamanites could not get into their forts of security by any other way, save by the entrance, because of the highness of the bank which had been thrown up, and the depth of the ditch which had been dug round about, save it were by the entrance. And thus were the Nephites prepared to destroy all such as should attempt to climb up to enter the fort by any other way, by casting over stones and arrows at them. Thus they were prepared, yea, a body of their strongest men, with their swords and their slings, 
to smite down all who should attempt to come into their place of security by the place of entrance. And thus were they prepared to defend themselves against the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the captains of the Lamanites brought up their armies before the place of entrance and began to contend with the Nephites to get into their place of security. But behold, they were driven back from time to time, insomuch that they were slain with an immense slaughter. Now when they found that they could not obtain power over the Nephites by the pass, they began to dig down their banks of earth, that they might obtain a pass to their armies, that they might have an equal chance to fight. But behold, in these attempts they were swept off by the stones and arrows which were thrown at them. And instead of filling up their ditches by pulling down the banks of earth, they were filled up in a measure with their dead and wounded bodies. Thus the Nephites had all power over their enemies. And thus the Lamanites did attempt to destroy the Nephites, until their chief captains were all slain. Yea, and more than a thousand of the Lamanites were slain. While on the other hand, there was not a single soul of the Nephites which was slain. There were about fifty who were wounded, who had been exposed to the arrows of the Lamanites through the pass, but they were shielded by their shields, and their breastplates, and their headplates, insomuch that their wounds were upon their legs, many of which were very severe. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites saw that their chief captains were all slain, they fled into the wilderness. And it came to pass that they returned to the land of Nephi to inform their king, Amalickiah, who was a Nephite by birth, concerning their great loss. And it came to pass that he was exceedingly angry with his people because he had not obtained his desire over the Nephites. He had not subjected them to the yoke of bondage. Yea, he was exceedingly wroth, and he did curse God, and also Moroni, swearing with an oath that he would drink his blood. And this, because Moroni had kept the commandments of God in preparing for the safety of his people. And it came to pass that on the other hand, the people of Nephi did thank the Lord their God, because of his matchless power in delivering them from the hands of their enemies. And thus ended the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Yea, and there was continual peace among them, and exceedingly great prosperity in the church because of their heed and diligence, which they gave unto the word of God, which was declared unto them by Helaman, and Shiblon, and Corianton, and Ammon, and his brethren. Yea, and by all those who had been ordained by the holy order of God, being baptized unto repentance, and sent forth to preach among the people. Chapter 50 Moroni fortifies the lands of the Nephites. They build many new cities. Wars and destructions befell the Nephites in the days of their wickedness and abominations. Morianton and his dissenters are defeated by Teancum. Nephiha dies, and his son Pahoran fills the judgment seat about 72 through 67 B.C. And now it came to pass that Moroni did not stop making preparations for war or to defend his people against the Lamanites, for he caused that his army should commence in the commencement of the twentieth year of the reign of the judges, that they should commence in digging up heaps of earth round about all the cities, throughout all the land which was possessed by the Nephites. And upon the top of these ridges of earth he caused that there should be timbers, yea, works of timbers built up to the height of a man, round about the cities. And he caused that upon those works of timbers there should be a frame of pickets built upon the timbers round about, and they were strong and high. And he caused towers to be erected that overlooked those works of pickets. And he caused places of security to be built upon those towers that the stones and the arrows of the Lamanites could not hurt them, and they were prepared that they could cast stones from the top thereof, according to their pleasure and their strength, and slay him who should attempt to approach near the walls of the city. Thus Moroni did prepare strongholds against the coming of their enemies, round about every city, in all the land. And it came to pass that Moroni caused that his army should go forth into the east wilderness, Yea, and they went forth 
and drove all the Lamanites who were in the east wilderness into their own lands, which were south of the land of Zarahemla. And the land of Nephi did run in a straight course from the east sea to the west. And it came to pass that when Moroni had driven all the Lamanites out of the east wilderness, which was north of the lands of their own possessions, he caused that the inhabitants who were in the land of Zarahemla and in the land round about should go forth into the east wilderness, even to the borders by the seashore, and possess the land. And he also placed armies on the south, in the borders of their possessions, and caused them to erect fortifications that they might secure their armies and their people from the hands of their enemies. And thus he cut off all the strongholds of the Lamanites in the east wilderness, yea, and also on the west, fortifying the line between the Nephites and the Lamanites, between the land of Zarahemla and the land of Nephi, from the west sea, running by the head of the river Sidon, the Nephites possessing all the land northward, yea, even all the land which was northward of the land bountiful, according to their pleasure. Thus Moroni, with his armies, which did increase daily because of the assurance of protection which his works did bring forth unto them, did seek to cut off the strength and the power of the Lamanites from off the lands of their possessions, that they should have no power upon the lands of their possession. And it came to pass that the Nephites began the foundation of a city, and they called the name of the city Moroni, and it was by the East Sea, and it was on the south by the line of the possessions of the Lamanites. And they also began a foundation for a city between the city of Moroni and the city of Aaron, joining the borders of Aaron and Moroni. And they called the name of the city, or the land, Nephiha. And they also began in that same year to build many cities on the north, one in a particular manner which they called Lehi, which was in the north, by the borders of the seashore. And thus ended the twentieth year. And in these prosperous circumstances were the people of Nephi in the commencement of the twenty and first year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And they did prosper exceedingly, and they became exceedingly rich, yea, and they did multiply and wax strong in the land. And thus we see how merciful and just are all the dealings of the Lord to the fulfilling of all his words unto the children of men. Yea, we can behold that his words are verified, even at this time, which he spake unto Lehi, saying, Blessed art thou and thy children, and they shall be blessed, inasmuch as they shall keep my commandments, they shall prosper in the land. But remember, inasmuch as they will not keep my commandments, they shall be cut off from the presence of the Lord. And we see that these promises have been verified to the people of Nephi. For it has been their quarrelings and their contentions, yea, their murderings and their plunderings, their idolatry, their whoredoms and their abominations, which were among themselves, which brought upon them their wars and their destructions. And those who were faithful in keeping the commandments of the Lord were delivered at all times, whilst thousands of their wicked brethren have been consigned to bondage, or to perish by the sword, or to dwindle in unbelief, and mingle with the Lamanites. But behold, there never was a happier time among the people of Nephi since the days of Nephi, than in the days of Moroni, yea, even at this time, in the twenty and first year of the reign of the judges. And it came to pass that the twenty and second year of the reign of the judges also ended in peace, yea, and also the twenty and third year. And it came to pass that in the commencement of the twenty and fourth year of the reign of the judges, there would also have been peace among the people of Nephi, had it not been for a contention which took place among them concerning the land of Lehi and the land of Morianton, which joined upon the borders of Lehi, both of which were on the borders by the seashore. For behold, the people who possessed the land of Morianton did claim a part of the land of Lehi. Therefore, there began to be a warm contention between them, insomuch that the people of Morianton took up arms against their brethren and they were determined by the sword to slay them. But behold, 
the people who possessed the land of Lehi fled to the camp of Moroni and appealed unto him for assistance. For behold, they were not in the wrong. And it came to pass that when the people of Morianton, who were led by a man whose name was Morianton, found that the people of Lehi had fled to the camp of Moroni, they were exceedingly fearful, lest the army of Moroni should come upon them and destroy them. Therefore, Morianton put it into their hearts that they should flee to the land which was northward, which was covered with large bodies of water, and take possession of the land which was northward. And behold, they would have carried this plan into effect, which would have been a cause to have been lamented. But behold, Morianton being a man of much passion, therefore he was angry with one of his maidservants, and he fell upon her and beat her much. And it came to pass that she fled, and came over to the camp of Moroni, and told Moroni all things concerning the matter, and also concerning their intentions to flee into the land northward. Now behold, the people who were in the land bountiful, or rather Moroni, feared that they would hearken to the words of Morianton and unite with his people, and thus he would obtain possession of those parts of the land which would lay a foundation for serious consequences among the people of Nephi, yea, which consequences would lead to the overthrow of their liberty. Therefore Moroni sent an army, with their camp, to head the people of Morianton, to stop their flight into the land northward. And it came to pass that they did not head them, until they had come to the borders of the land desolation. And there they did head them, by the narrow pass which led by the sea into the land northward, yea, by the sea, on the west and on the east. And it came to pass that the army which was sent by Moroni, which was led by a man whose name was Teancum, did meet the people of Morianton. And so stubborn were the people of Morianton, being inspired by his wickedness and his flattering words, that a battle commenced between them in the which Teancum did slay Morianton, and defeat his army, and took them prisoners, and returned to the camp of Moroni. And thus ended the twenty and fourth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus were the people of Morianton brought back, and upon their covenanting to keep the peace they were restored to the land of Morianton, and a union took place between them and the people of Lehi and they were also restored to their lands. And it came to pass that in the same year that the people of Nephi had peace restored unto them, that Nephihah, the second chief judge, died, having filled the judgment seat with perfect uprightness before God. Nevertheless, he had refused Alma to take possession of those records and those things which were esteemed by Alma and his fathers to be most sacred. Therefore, Alma had conferred them upon his son, Helaman. Behold, it came to pass that the son of Nephihah was appointed to fill the judgment seat in the stead of his father. Yea, he was appointed chief judge and governor over the people, with an oath and sacred ordinance to judge righteously, and to keep the peace and the freedom of the people, and to grant unto them their sacred privileges to worship the Lord their God. Yea, to support and maintain the cause of God all his days, and to bring the wicked to justice according to their crime. Now behold, his name was Pahoran. And Pahoran did fill the seat of his father, and did commence his reign in the end of the twenty and fourth year over the people of Nephi. Chapter 51 The king men seek to change the law and set up a king. Pahoran and the free men are supported by the voice of the people. Moroni compels the king men to defend their country or be put to death. Amalickiah and the Lamanites capture many fortified cities. Teancum repels the Lamanite invasion and slays Amalickiah in his tent. About 67 through 66 B.C. And now it came to pass in the commencement of the twenty and fifth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, they, having established peace between the people of Lehi and the people of Morianton concerning their lands, and having commenced the twenty and fifth year in peace, nevertheless, they did not long maintain an entire peace in the land. 
for there began to be a contention among the people concerning the chief judge Pahoran. For behold, there were a part of the people who desired that a few particular points of the law should be altered. But behold, Pahoran would not alter nor suffer the law to be altered. Therefore, he did not hearken to those who had sent in their voices with their petitions concerning the altering of the law. Therefore, those who were desirous that the law should be altered were angry with him, and desired that he should no longer be chief judge over the land. Therefore, there arose a warm dispute concerning the matter, but not unto bloodshed. And it came to pass that those who were desirous that Pahoran should be dethroned from the judgment seat were called kingmen, for they were desirous that the law should be altered in a manner to overthrow the free government and to establish a king over the land. And those who were desirous that Pahoran should remain chief judge over the land took upon them the name of freemen. And thus was the division among them. For the freemen had sworn or covenanted to maintain their rights and the privileges of their religion by a free government. And it came to pass that this matter of their contention was settled by the voice of the people. And it came to pass that the voice of the people came in favor of the freemen. And Pahoran retained the judgment seat, which caused much rejoicing among the brethren of Pahoran, and also many of the people of liberty, who also put the king men to silence, that they durst not oppose, but were obliged to maintain the cause of freedom. Now those who were in favor of kings were those of high birth, and they sought to be kings. And they were supported by those who sought power and authority over the people. But behold, this was a critical time for such contentions to be among the people of Nephi. For behold, Amalickiah had again stirred up the hearts of the people of the Lamanites against the people of the Nephites, and he was gathering together soldiers from all parts of his land and arming them and preparing for war with all diligence. For he had sworn to drink the blood of Moroni. But behold, we shall see that his promise which he made was rash. Nevertheless, he did prepare himself and his armies to come to battle against the Nephites. Now his armies were not so great as they had hitherto been, because of the many thousands who had been slain by the hand of the Nephites. But notwithstanding their great loss, Amalickiah had gathered together a wonderfully great army, insomuch that he feared not to come down to the land of Zarahemla. Yea, even Amalickiah did himself come down at the head of the Lamanites. And it was in the twenty and fifth year of the reign of the judges. And it was at the same time that they had begun to settle the affairs of their contentions concerning the chief judge, Pahoran. And it came to pass that when the men who were called king men had heard that the Lamanites were coming down to battle against them, they were glad in their hearts, and they refused to take up arms, for they were so wroth with the chief judge, and also with the people of liberty, that they would not take up arms to defend their country. And it came to pass that when Moroni saw this, and also saw that the Lamanites were coming into the borders of the land, he was exceedingly wroth because of the stubbornness of those people whom he had labored with so much diligence to preserve. Yea, he was exceedingly wroth. His soul was filled with anger against them. And it came to pass that he sent a petition with the voice of the people unto the governor of the land, desiring that he should read it and give him, Moroni, power to compel those dissenters to defend their country or to put them to death. For it was his first care to put an end to such contentions and dissensions among the people. For behold, this had been hitherto a cause of all their destruction. And it came to pass that it was granted according to the voice of the people. And it came to pass that Moroni commanded that his army should go against those kingmen to pull down their pride and their nobility and level them with the earth, or they should take up arms and support the cause of liberty. And it came to pass that the armies did march forth against them and they did pull down their pride and their nobility, insomuch that as they did lift their weapons of war to fight against the men of Moroni, they were hewn down 
and leveled to the earth. And it came to pass that there were four thousand of those dissenters who were hewn down by the sword. And those of their leaders, who were not slain in battle, were taken and cast into prison, for there was no time for their trials at this period. And the remainder of those dissenters, rather than be smitten down to the earth by the sword, yielded to the standard of liberty, and were compelled to hoist the title of liberty upon their towers and in their cities, and to take up arms in defense of their country. And thus Moroni put an end to those kingmen, that there were not any known by the appellation of kingmen. And thus he put an end to the stubbornness and the pride of those people who professed the blood of nobility. But they were brought down to humble themselves like unto their brethren, and to fight valiantly for their freedom from bondage. Behold, it came to pass that while Moroni was thus breaking down the wars and contentions among his own people, and subjecting them to peace and civilization, and making regulations to prepare for war against the Lamanites, behold, the Lamanites had come into the land of Moroni, which was in the borders by the seashore. And it came to pass that the Nephites were not sufficiently strong in the city of Moroni. Therefore Amalickiah did drive them, slaying many. And it came to pass that Amalickiah took possession of the city, yea, possession of all their fortifications. And those who fled out of the city of Moroni came to the city of Nephihah. And also the people of the city of Lehi gathered themselves together and made preparations and were ready to receive the Lamanites to battle. But it came to pass that Amalickiah would not suffer the Lamanites to go against the city of Nephihah to battle, but kept them down by the seashore, leaving men in every city to maintain and defend it. And thus he went on, taking possession of many cities, the city of Nephihah, and the city of Lehi, and the city of Morianton, and the city of Omner, and the city of Gid, and the city of Mulek, all of which were on the east borders by the seashore. And thus had the Lamanites obtained, by the cunning of Amalickiah, so many cities by their numberless hosts, all of which were strongly fortified after the manner of the fortifications of Moroni, all of which afforded strongholds for the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they marched to the borders of the land bountiful, driving the Nephites before them and slaying many. But it came to pass that they were met by Teancum, who had slain Morianton and had headed his people in his flight. And it came to pass that he headed Amalickiah also, as he was marching forth with his numerous army that he might take possession of the land bountiful, and also the land northward. But behold, he met with a disappointment by being repulsed by Teancum and his men, for they were great warriors. For every man of Teancum did exceed the Lamanites in their strength and in their skill of war, insomuch that they did gain advantage over the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they did harass them, insomuch that they did slay them, even until it was dark. And it came to pass that Teancum and his men did pitch their tents in the borders of the land bountiful. And Amalickiah did pitch his tents in the borders on the beach by the seashore. And after this manner were they driven. And it came to pass that when the night had come, Teancum and his servant stole forth and went out by night, and went into the camp of Amalickiah. And behold, sleep had overpowered them because of their much fatigue, which was caused by the labors and heat of the day. And it came to pass that Teancum stole privily into the tent of the king, and put a javelin to his heart and he did cause the death of the king immediately, that he did not awake his servants. And he returned again privily to his own camp. And behold, his men were asleep. And he awoke them, and told them all the things that he had done. And he caused that his army should stand in readiness, lest the Lamanites had awakened, and should come upon them. And thus endeth the twenty and fifth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus endeth the days of Amalickiah. Chapter 52 Amaron succeeds Amalickiah as king of the Lamanites. 
Moroni, Teancum, and Lehi lead the Nephites in a victorious war against the Lamanites. The city of Mulek is retaken, and Jacob the Zoramite is slain. About 66 through 64 B.C. And now it came to pass in the twenty and sixth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, behold, when the Lamanites awoke on the first morning of the first month, behold, they found Amalickiah was dead in his own tent. And they also saw that Teancum was ready to give them battle on that day. And now when the Lamanites saw this, they were affrighted. And they abandoned their design in marching into the land northward, and retreated with all their army into the city of Mulek, and sought protection in their fortifications. And it came to pass that the brother of Amalickiah was appointed king over the people, and his name was Amaron. Thus King Amaron, the brother of King Amalickiah, was appointed to reign in his stead. And it came to pass that he did command that his people should maintain those cities which they had taken by the shedding of blood. For they had not taken any cities, save they had lost much blood. And now Teancum saw that the Lamanites were determined to maintain those cities which they had taken, and those parts of the land which they had obtained possession of. And also, seeing the enormity of their number, Teancum thought it was not expedient that he should attempt to attack them in their forts, but he kept his men round about, as if making preparations for war. Yea, and truly he was preparing to defend himself against them, by casting up walls round about, and preparing places of resort. And it came to pass that he kept thus preparing for war until Moroni had sent a large number of men to strengthen his army. And Moroni also sent orders unto him that he should retain all the prisoners who fell into his hands. For as the Lamanites had taken many prisoners, that he should retain all the prisoners of the Lamanites as a ransom for those whom the Lamanites had taken. And he also sent orders unto him that he should fortify the land bountiful and secure the narrow pass which led into the land northward, lest the Lamanites should obtain that point, and should have power to harass them on every side. And Moroni also sent unto him, desiring him that he would be faithful in maintaining that quarter of the land, and that he would seek every opportunity to scourge the Lamanites in that quarter, as much as was in his power, that perhaps he might take again, by stratagem, or some other way, those cities which had been taken out of their hands, and that he also would fortify and strengthen the cities round about, which had not fallen into the hands of the Lamanites. And he also said unto him, I would come unto you. Behold, the Lamanites are upon us in the borders of the land by the West Sea. And behold, I go against them. Therefore, I cannot come unto you. Now the king, Amron, had departed out of the land of Zarahemla, and had made known unto the queen concerning the death of his brother, and had gathered together a large number of men, and had marched forth against the Nephites on the borders by the West Sea. And thus he was endeavoring to harass the Nephites, and to draw away a part of their forces to that part of the land, while he had commanded those whom he had left to possess the cities which he had taken, that they should also harass the Nephites on the borders by the East Sea and should take possession of their lands as much as it was in their power, according to the power of their armies. And thus were the Nephites in those dangerous circumstances in the ending of the twenty and sixth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. But behold, it came to pass in the twenty and seventh year of the reign of the judges that Teancum, by the command of Moroni, who had established armies to protect the south and the west borders of the land, and had begun his march towards the land bountiful, that he might assist Teancum with his men in retaking the cities which they had lost. And it came to pass that Teancum had received orders to make an attack upon the city of Mulek, and retake it if it were possible. And it came to pass that Teancum made preparations to make an attack upon the city of Mulek, and march forth with his army against the Lamanites, but he saw that it was impossible that he could overpower them while they were in their fortifications. Therefore, he abandoned his designs and returned again to the city Bountiful to wait for the coming of Moroni. 
that he might receive strength to his army. And it came to pass that Moroni did arrive with his army at the land of Bountiful, in the latter end of the twenty and seventh year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And in the commencement of the twenty and eighth year, Moroni and Teancum and many of the chief captains held a council of war, what they should do to cause the Lamanites to come out against them to battle, or that they might, by some means, flatter them out of their strongholds, that they might gain advantage over them, and take again the city of Mulek. And it came to pass they sent embassies to the army of the Lamanites, which protected the city of Mulek, to their leader, whose name was Jacob, desiring him that he would come out with his armies to meet them upon the plains between the two cities. But behold, Jacob, who was a Zoramite, would not come out with his army to meet them upon the plains. And it came to pass that Moroni, having no hopes of meeting them upon fair grounds, therefore he resolved upon a plan that he might decoy the Lamanites out of their strongholds. Therefore he caused that Teancum should take a small number of men and march down near the seashore. And Moroni and his army by night marched in the wilderness, on the west of the city Mulek. And thus, on the morrow, when the guards of the Lamanites had discovered Teancum, they ran and told it unto Jacob, their leader. And it came to pass that the armies of the Lamanites did march forth against Teancum, supposing by their numbers to overpower Teancum because of the smallness of his numbers. And as Teancum saw the armies of the Lamanites coming out against him, he began to retreat down by the seashore northward. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites saw that he began to flee, they took courage and pursued them with vigor. And while Teancum was thus leading away the Lamanites who were pursuing them in vain, behold, Moroni commanded that a part of his army who were with them should march forth into the city and take possession of it. And thus they did, and slew all those who had been left to protect the city, yea, all those who would not yield up their weapons of war. And thus Moroni had obtained possession of the city Mulek with a part of his army, while he marched with the remainder to meet the Lamanites when they should return from the pursuit of Teancum. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did pursue Teancum until they came near the city Bountiful. And then they were met by Lehi and a small army, which had been left to protect the city Bountiful. And now behold, when the chief captains of the Lamanites had beheld Lehi with his army coming against them, they fled in much confusion, lest perhaps they should not obtain the city Mulek before Lehi should overtake them for they were wearied because of their march, and the men of Lehi were fresh. Now the Lamanites did not know that Moroni had been in their rear with his army, and all they feared was Lehi and his men. Now Lehi was not desirous to overtake them till they should meet Moroni and his army. And it came to pass that before the Lamanites had retreated far, they were surrounded by the Nephites, by the men of Moroni on one hand, and the men of Lehi on the other all of whom were fresh and full of strength. But the Lamanites were wearied because of their long march. And Moroni commanded his men that they should fall upon them until they had given up their weapons of war. And it came to pass that Jacob, being their leader, being also a Zoramite, and having an unconquerable spirit, he led the Lamanites forth to battle with exceeding fury against Moroni. Moroni, being in their course of march, Therefore Jacob was determined to slay them and cut his way through to the city of Mulek. But behold, Moroni and his men were more powerful. Therefore they did not give way before the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they fought on both hands with exceeding fury. And there were many slain on both sides. Yea, and Moroni was wounded, and Jacob was killed. And Lehi pressed upon their rear with such fury with his strong men, that the Lamanites in the rear delivered up their weapons of war. And the remainder of them, being much confused, knew not whither to go or to strike. Now Moroni, seeing their confusion, he said unto them, If ye will bring forth your weapons of war and deliver them up, behold, 
we will forbear shedding your blood. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites had heard these words, their chief captains, all those who were not slain, came forth and threw down their weapons of war at the feet of Moroni, and also commanded their men that they should do the same. But behold, there were many that would not. And those who would not deliver up their swords were taken and bound, and their weapons of war were taken from them. And they were compelled to march with their brethren forth into the land bountiful. And now the number of prisoners who were taken exceeded more than the number of those who had been slain. Yea, more than those who had been slain on both sides. Chapter 53 The Lamanite prisoners are used to fortify the city bountiful. Dissensions among the Nephites give rise to Lamanite victories. Helaman takes command of the two thousand stripling sons of the people of Ammon, about sixty-four through sixty-three B.C. And it came to pass that they did set guards over the prisoners of the Lamanites, and did compel them to go forth and bury their dead, yea, and also the dead of the Nephites who were slain. And Moroni placed men over them to guard them while they should perform their labors. And Moroni went to the city of Mulek with Lehi, and took command of the city, and gave it unto Lehi. Now behold, this Lehi was a man who had been with Moroni in the more part of all his battles. And he was a man like unto Moroni. And they rejoiced in each other's safety. Yea, they were beloved by each other, and also beloved by all the people of Nephi. And it came to pass that after the Lamanites had finished burying their dead, and also the dead of the Nephites, they were marched back into the land bountiful. And Teancum, by the orders of Moroni, caused that they should commence laboring in digging a ditch round about the land, or the city, bountiful. And he caused that they should build a breastwork of timbers upon the inner bank of the ditch, and they cast up dirt out of the ditch against the breastwork of timbers. And thus they did cause the Lamanites to labor until they had encircled the city of Bountiful round about with a strong wall of timbers and earth to an exceeding height. And this city became an exceeding stronghold ever after. And in this city they did guard the prisoners of the Lamanites, yea, even within a wall which they had caused them to build with their own hands. Now Moroni was compelled to cause the Lamanites to labor, because it was easy to guard them while at their labor. And he desired all his forces when he should make an attack upon the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Moroni had thus gained a victory over one of the greatest of the armies of the Lamanites, and had obtained possession of the city of Mulek, which was one of the strongest holds of the Lamanites in the land of Nephi. And thus he had also built a stronghold to retain his prisoners. And it came to pass that he did no more attempt a battle with the Lamanites in that year. But he did employ his men in preparing for war, yea, and in making fortifications to guard against the Lamanites, yea, and also delivering their women and their children from famine and affliction, and providing food for their armies. And now it came to pass that the armies of the Lamanites on the west sea south, while in the absence of Moroni, on account of some intrigue amongst the Nephites, which caused dissensions amongst them, had gained some ground over the Nephites, yea, insomuch that they had obtained possession of a number of their cities in that part of the land. And thus, because of iniquity amongst themselves, yea, because of dissensions and intrigue among themselves, they were placed in the most dangerous circumstances. And now, behold, I have somewhat to say concerning the people of Ammon, who, in the beginning, were Lamanites. But by Ammon and his brethren, or rather by the power and word of God, they had been converted unto the Lord, and they had been brought down into the land of Zarahemla, and had ever since been protected by the Nephites. And because of their oath, they had been kept from taking up arms against their brethren. For they had taken an oath that they never would shed blood more. And according to their oath, they would have perished. Yea, they would have suffered themselves to have fallen into the hands of their brethren. 
had it not been for the pity and the exceeding love which Ammon and his brethren had had for them. And for this cause they were brought down into the land of Zarahemla. And they ever had been protected by the Nephites. But it came to pass that when they saw the danger, and the many afflictions and tribulations which the Nephites bore for them, they were moved with compassion, and were desirous to take up arms in the defense of their country. But behold, as they were about to take their weapons of war, they were overpowered by the persuasions of Helaman and his brethren. For they were about to break the oath which they had made, and Helaman feared, lest by so doing they should lose their souls. Therefore, all those who had entered into this covenant were compelled to behold their brethren wade through their afflictions in their dangerous circumstances at this time. But behold, it came to pass they had many sons who had not entered into a covenant that they would not take their weapons of war to defend themselves against their enemies. Therefore, they did assemble themselves together at this time, as many as were able to take up arms, and they called themselves Nephites, and they entered into a covenant to fight for the liberty of the Nephites, yea, to protect the land unto the laying down of their lives, yea, even they covenanted that they never would give up their liberty, but they would fight in all cases to protect the Nephites and themselves from bondage. Now behold, there were two thousand of those young men who entered into this covenant and took their weapons of war to defend their country. And now behold, as they never had hitherto been a disadvantage to the Nephites, they became now at this period of time also a great support. For they took their weapons of war, and they would that Helaman should be their leader, and they were all young men. And they were exceedingly valiant for courage, and also for strength and activity. But behold, this was not all. They were men who were true at all times in whatsoever thing they were entrusted. Yea, they were men of truth and soberness, for they had been taught to keep the commandments of God and to walk uprightly before him. And now it came to pass that Helaman did march at the head of his two thousand stripling soldiers to the support of the people in the borders of the land on the south, by the West Sea. And thus ended the twenty and eighth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Chapter 54 Amaron and Moroni negotiate for the exchange of prisoners. Moroni demands that the Lamanites withdraw and cease their murderous attacks. Amaron demands that the Nephites lay down their arms and become subject to the Lamanites. About 63 B.C. And now it came to pass, in the commencement of the twenty and ninth year of the judges, that Amaron sent unto Moroni, desiring that he would exchange prisoners. And it came to pass that Moroni felt to rejoice exceedingly at this request, for he desired the provisions which were imparted for the support of the Lamanite prisoners, for the support of his own people. And he also desired his own people for the strengthening of his army. Now the Lamanites had taken many women and children, and there was not a woman nor a child among all the prisoners of Moroni, or the prisoners whom Moroni had taken. Therefore, Moroni resolved upon a stratagem to obtain as many prisoners of the Nephites from the Lamanites as it were possible. Therefore he wrote an epistle, and sent it by the servant of Amaron, the same who had brought an epistle to Moroni. Now these are the words which he wrote unto Amaron, saying, Behold, Amaron, I have written unto you somewhat concerning this war which ye have waged against my people, or rather which thy brother hath waged against them, and which ye are still determined to carry on after his death. Behold, I would tell you somewhat concerning the justice of God, and the sword of his almighty wrath, which doth hang over you, except ye repent and withdraw your armies into your own lands, or the land of your possessions, which is the land of Nephi. Yea, I would tell you these things, if ye were capable of hearkening unto them. Yea, I would tell you concerning that awful hell that awaits to receive such murderers as thou and thy brother have been, except ye repent 
and withdraw your murderous purposes, and return with your armies to your own lands. But as ye have once rejected these things, and have fought against the people of the Lord, even so I may expect ye will do it again. And now behold, we are prepared to receive you. Yea, and except you withdraw your purposes, behold, ye will pull down the wrath of that God whom you have rejected upon you, even to your utter destruction. But as the Lord liveth, our army shall come upon you, except ye withdraw, and ye shall soon be visited with death. For we will retain our cities and our lands, yea, and we will maintain our religion and the cause of our God. But behold, it supposeth me that I talk to you concerning these things in vain, or it supposeth me that thou art a child of hell. Therefore, I will close my epistle by telling you that I will not exchange prisoners, save it be on conditions that ye will deliver up a man and his wife and his children for one prisoner. If this be the case that ye will do it, I will exchange. And behold, if ye do not this, I will come against you with my armies. Yea, even I will arm my women and my children, and I will come against you and I will follow you even into your own land, which is the land of our first inheritance. Yea, and it shall be blood for blood, yea, life for life, and I will give you battle even until you are destroyed from off the face of the earth. Behold, I am in my anger, and also my people. Ye have sought to murder us, and we have only sought to defend ourselves. But behold, if ye seek to destroy us more, we will seek to destroy you. Yea, and we will seek our land, the land of our first inheritance. Now I close my epistle. I am Moroni. I am a leader of the people of the Nephites. Now it came to pass that Amaron, when he had received this epistle, was angry. And he wrote another epistle unto Moroni. And these are the words which he wrote, saying, I am Amaron, the king of the Lamanites. I am the brother of Amalickiah, whom ye have murdered. Behold, I will avenge his blood upon you, yea, and I will come upon you with my armies, for I fear not your threatenings. For behold, your fathers did wrong their brethren, insomuch that they did rob them of their right to the government when it rightly belonged unto them. And now behold, if ye will lay down your arms, and subject yourselves to be governed by those to whom the government doth rightly belong, then will I cause that my people shall lay down their weapons, and shall be at war no more. Behold, ye have breathed out many threatenings against me and my people. But behold, we fear not your threatenings. Nevertheless, I will grant to exchange prisoners according to your request, gladly, that I may preserve my food for my men of war. And we will wage a war which shall be eternal, either to the subjecting the Nephites to our authority or to their eternal extinction. And as concerning that God whom ye say we have rejected, behold, we know not such a being, neither do ye. But if it so be that there is such a being, we know not but that he hath made us as well as you. And if it so be that there is a devil and a hell, behold, will he not send you there to dwell with my brother whom ye have murdered, whom ye have hinted that he hath gone to such a place? But behold, these things matter not. I am Amaron, and a descendant of Zoram, whom your fathers pressed and brought out of Jerusalem. And behold now, I am a bold Lamanite. Behold, this war hath been waged to avenge their wrongs and to maintain and to obtain their rights to the government. And I close my epistle to Moroni. Chapter 55 Moroni Refuses to Exchange Prisoners The Lamanite guards are enticed to become drunk and the Nephite prisoners are freed. The city of Gid is taken without bloodshed. About 63 through 62 B.C.
Now it came to pass that when Moroni had received this epistle, he was more angry, because he knew that Amaron had a perfect knowledge of his fraud. Yea, he knew that Amaron knew that it was not a just cause that had caused him to wage a war against the people of Nephi. And he said, Behold, I will not exchange prisoners with Amaron, save he will withdraw his purpose, as I have stated in my epistle. For I will not grant unto him that he shall have any more power than what he hath got. Behold, I know the place where the Lamanites do guard my people, whom they have taken prisoners. And as Amaron would not grant unto me mine epistle, behold, I will give unto him according to my words. Yea, I will seek death among them, until they shall sue for peace. And now it came to pass, that when Moroni had said these words, he caused that a search should be made among his men, that perhaps he might find a man who was a descendant of Laman among them. And it came to pass that they found one, whose name was Laman. And he was one of the servants of the king who was murdered by Amalickiah. Now Moroni caused that Laman and a small number of his men should go forth under the guards who were over the Nephites. Now the Nephites were guarded in the city of Gid. Therefore, Moroni appointed Laman and caused that a small number of men should go with him. And when it was evening, Laman went to the guards who were over the Nephites, and behold, they saw him coming, and they hailed him. But he saith unto them, Fear not, behold, I am a Lamanite. Behold, we have escaped from the Nephites, and they sleep. And behold, we have taken of their wine and brought with us. Now when the Lamanites heard these words, they received him with joy. And they said unto him, Give us of your wine, that we may drink. We are glad that ye have thus taken wine with you, for we are weary. But Laman said unto them, Let us keep of our wine till we go against the Nephites to battle. But this saying only made them more desirous to drink of the wine, for said they, We are weary, therefore let us take of the wine, and by and by we shall receive wine for our rations, which will strengthen us to go against the Nephites. And Laman said unto them, You may do according to your desires. And it came to pass that they did take of the wine freely, and it was pleasant to their taste. Therefore they took of it more freely, and it was strong, having been prepared in its strength. And it came to pass they did drink and were merry, and by and by they were all drunken. And now when Laman and his men saw that they were all drunken and were in a deep sleep, they returned to Moroni and told him all the things that had happened. And now this was according to the design of Moroni. And Moroni had prepared his men with weapons of war, and he went to the city Gid, while the Lamanites were in a deep sleep and drunken, and cast in weapons of war unto the prisoners, insomuch that they were all armed, yea, even to their women and all those of their children as many as were able to use a weapon of war, when Moroni had armed all those prisoners. And all those things were done in a profound silence. But had they awakened the Lamanites, behold, they were drunken, and the Nephites could have slain them. But behold, this was not the desire of Moroni. He did not delight in murder or bloodshed, but he delighted in the saving of his people from destruction. And for this cause, he might not bring upon him injustice. He would not fall upon the Lamanites and destroy them in their drunkenness. But he had obtained his desires, for he had armed those prisoners of the Nephites who were within the wall of the city, and had given them power to gain possession of those parts which were within the walls. And then he caused the men who were with him to withdraw a pace from them, and surround the armies of the Lamanites. Now behold, this was done in the nighttime, so that when the Lamanites awoke in the morning, they beheld that they were surrounded by the Nephites without, and that their prisoners were armed within, and thus they saw that the Nephites had power over them. And in these circumstances, they found that it was not expedient that they should fight with the Nephites. Therefore, their chief captains demanded their weapons of war, and they brought them forth 
and cast them at the feet of the Nephites, pleading for mercy. Now behold, this was the desire of Moroni. He took them prisoners of war, and took possession of the city, and caused that all the prisoners should be liberated, who were Nephites. And they did join the army of Moroni, and were a great strength to his army. And it came to pass that he did cause the Lamanites, whom he had taken prisoners, that they should commence a labor in strengthening the fortifications round about the city Gid. And it came to pass that when he had fortified the city Gid, according to his desires, he caused that his prisoners should be taken to the city Bountiful. And he also guarded that city with an exceedingly strong force. And it came to pass that they did, notwithstanding all the intrigues of the Lamanites, keep and protect all the prisoners whom they had taken, and also maintain all the ground and the advantage which they had retaken. And it came to pass that the Nephites began again to be victorious, and to reclaim their rights and their privileges. Many times did the Lamanites attempt to encircle them about by night, but in these attempts they did lose many prisoners, and many times did they attempt to administer of their wine to the Nephites, that they might destroy them with poison or with drunkenness. But behold, the Nephites were not slow to remember the Lord their God in this, their time of affliction. They could not be taken in their snares. Yea, they would not partake of their wine, save they had first given to some of the Lamanite prisoners, and they were thus cautious that no poison should be administered among them. For if their wine would poison a Lamanite, it would also poison a Nephite. And thus they did try all their liquors. And now it came to pass that it was expedient for Moroni to make preparations to attack the city Morianton. For behold, the Lamanites had, by their labors, fortified the city Morianton until it had become an exceeding stronghold, and they were continually bringing new forces into that city, and also new supplies of provisions. And thus ended the twenty and ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Chapter 56 Helaman sends an epistle to Moroni, recounting the state of the war with the Lamanites. Antipas and Helaman gain a great victory over the Lamanites. Helaman's two thousand stripling sons fight with miraculous power, and none of them are slain. Verse 1, about 62 B.C. Verses 2 through 19, about 66 B.C. And verses 20 through 57, about 65 through 64 B.C. And now it came to pass in the commencement of the thirtieth year of the reign of the judges, on the second day in the first month, Moroni received an epistle from Helaman, stating the affairs of the people in that quarter of the land. And these are the words which he wrote, saying, My dearly beloved brother Moroni, as well in the Lord as in the tribulations of our warfare, behold, my beloved brother, I have somewhat to tell you concerning our warfare in this part of the land. Behold, two thousand of the sons of those men whom Ammon brought down out of the land of Nephi. Now ye have known that these were descendants of Laman, who was the eldest son of our father Lehi. Now I need not rehearse unto you concerning their traditions or their unbelief, for thou knowest concerning all these things. Therefore, it sufficeth me that I tell you that two thousand of these young men have taken their weapons of war, and would that I should be their leader. And we have come forth to defend our country. And now ye also know concerning the covenant which their fathers made, that they would not take up their weapons of war against their brethren to shed blood. But in the twenty and sixth year, when they saw our afflictions and our tribulations for them, they were about to break the covenant which they had made, and take up their weapons of war in our defense. But I would not suffer them that they should break this covenant which they had made, supposing that God would strengthen us, insomuch that we should not suffer more because of the fulfilling the oath which they had taken. But behold, here is one thing in which we may have great joy. For behold, in the twenty and sixth year, I, Helaman, did march at the head of these two thousand young men 
to the city of Judea, to assist Antipas, whom ye had appointed a leader over the people of that part of the land. And I did join my two thousand sons, for they are worthy to be called sons, to the army of Antipas, in which strength Antipas did rejoice exceedingly. For behold, his army had been reduced by the Lamanites because their forces had slain a vast number of our men, for which cause we have to mourn. Nevertheless, we may console ourselves in this point, that they have died in the cause of their country and of their God. Yea, and they are happy. And the Lamanites had also retained many prisoners, all of whom are chief captains, for none other have they spared alive. And we suppose that they are now at this time in the land of Nephi. It is so if they are not slain. And now these are the cities of which the Lamanites have obtained possession by the shedding of the blood of so many of our valiant men. The land of Manti, or the city of Manti, and the city of Zeezrom, and the city of Cumani, and the city of Antipara. And these are the cities which they possessed when I arrived at the city of Judea. And I found Antipas and his men toiling with their might to fortify the city. Yea, and they were depressed in body as well as in spirit, for they had fought valiantly by day and toiled by night to maintain their cities. And thus they had suffered great afflictions of every kind. And now they were determined to conquer in this place or die. Therefore, you may well suppose that this little force which I brought with me, yea, those sons of mine, gave them great hopes and much joy. And now it came to pass that when the Lamanites saw that Antipas had received a greater strength to his army, they were compelled by the orders of Amaron to not come against the city of Judea, or against us, to battle. And thus were we favored of the Lord. For had they come upon us in this our weakness, they might have perhaps destroyed our little army. But thus were we preserved. They were commanded by Amaron to maintain those cities which they had taken. And thus ended the twenty and sixth year. And in the commencement of the twenty and seventh year, we had prepared our city and ourselves for defense. Now we were desirous that the Lamanites should come upon us, for we were not desirous to make an attack upon them in their strongholds. And it came to pass that we kept spies out round about to watch the movements of the Lamanites, that they might not pass us by night nor by day to make an attack upon our other cities which were on the northward. For we knew in those cities they were not sufficiently strong to meet them. Therefore, we were desirous, if they should pass by us, to fall upon them in their rear, and thus bring them up in the rear at the same time they were met in the front. We supposed that we could overpower them. But behold, we were disappointed in this our desire. They durst not pass by us with their whole army, neither durst they with a part lest they should not be sufficiently strong, and they should fall. Neither durst they march down against the city of Zarahemla, neither durst they cross the head of Sidon over to the city of Nephiha, and thus, with their forces, they were determined to maintain those cities which they had taken. And now it came to pass, in the second month of this year, there was brought unto us many provisions from the fathers of those my two thousand sons. And also there were sent two thousand men unto us from the land of Zarahemla. And thus we were prepared with ten thousand men, and provisions for them, and also for their wives and their children, and the Lamanites, thus seeing our forces increase daily, and provisions arrive for our support, they began to be fearful, and began to sally forth, if it were possible to put an end to our receiving provisions and strength. Now when we saw that the Lamanites began to grow uneasy on this wise, we were desirous to bring a stratagem into effect upon them. Therefore, Antipas ordered that I should march forth with my little sons to a neighboring city, as if we were carrying provisions to a neighboring city. And we were to march near the city of Antipara, as if we were going to the city beyond, in the borders by the seashore. And it came to pass that we did march forth, as if with our provisions, to go to that city.
And it came to pass that Antipas did march forth with a part of his army, leaving the remainder to maintain the city. But he did not march forth until I had gone forth with my little army, and came near the city Antipara. And now, in the city Antipara, were stationed the strongest army of the Lamanites, yea, the most numerous. And it came to pass that when they had been informed by their spies, they came forth with their army and marched against us. And it came to pass that we did flee before them northward. And thus we did lead away the most powerful army of the Lamanites, yea, even to a considerable distance, insomuch that when they saw the army of Antipas pursuing them with their might, they did not turn to the right nor to the left, but pursued their march in a straight course after us. And, as we suppose, it was their intent to slay us before Antipas should overtake them, and this that they might not be surrounded by our people. And now Antipas, beholding our danger, did speed the march of his army. But behold, it was night. Therefore they did not overtake us, neither did Antipas overtake them. Therefore we did camp for the night, and it came to pass that before the dawn of the morning, behold, the Lamanites were pursuing us. Now we were not sufficiently strong to contend with them. Yea, I would not suffer that my little sons should fall into their hands. Therefore we did continue our march, and we took our march into the wilderness. Now they durst not turn to the right nor to the left, lest they should be surrounded. Neither would I turn to the right nor to the left, lest they should overtake me, and we could not stand against them, but be slain, and they would make their escape. And thus we did flee all that day into the wilderness, even until it was dark. And it came to pass that again, when the light of the morning came, we saw the Lamanites upon us, and we did flee before them. But it came to pass that they did not pursue us far before they halted. And it was in the morning of the third day of the seventh month. And now, whether they were overtaken by Antipas, we knew not. But I said unto my men, Behold, we know not, but they have halted for the purpose that we should come against them, that they might catch us in their snare. Therefore, what say ye, my sons? Will ye go against them to battle? And now I say unto you, my beloved brother Moroni, that never had I seen so great courage, nay, not amongst all the Nephites. For as I had ever called them my sons, for they were all of them very young, even so they said unto me, Father, behold, our God is with us, and he will not suffer that we should fall. Then let us go forth. We would not slay our brethren if they would let us alone. Therefore, let us go, lest they should overpower the army of Antipas. Now they had never fought, yet they did not fear death. And they did think more upon the liberty of their fathers than they did upon their lives. Yea, they had been taught by their mothers that if they did not doubt, God would deliver them. And they rehearsed unto me the words of their mothers, saying, We do not doubt our mothers knew it. And it came to pass that I did return with my two thousand against these Lamanites who had pursued us. And now behold, the armies of Antipas had overtaken them, and a terrible battle had commenced. The army of Antipas, being weary, because of their long march in so short a space of time, were about to fall into the hands of the Lamanites. And had I not returned with my two thousand, they would have obtained their purpose. For Antipas had fallen by the sword, and many of his leaders, because of their weariness, which was occasioned by the speed of their march. Therefore the men of Antipas, being confused because of the fall of their leaders, began to give way before the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the Lamanites took courage and began to pursue them. And thus were the Lamanites pursuing them with great vigor when Helaman came upon their rear with his two thousand and began to slay them exceedingly, insomuch that the whole army of the Lamanites halted and turned upon Helaman. 
Now when the people of Antipas saw that the Lamanites had turned them about, they gathered together their men and came again upon the rear of the Lamanites. And now it came to pass that we, the people of Nephi, the people of Antipas, and I with my two thousand, did surround the Lamanites, and did slay them. Yea, insomuch that they were compelled to deliver up their weapons of war, and also themselves as prisoners of war. And now it came to pass that when they had surrendered themselves up unto us, behold, I numbered those young men who had fought with me, fearing lest there were many of them slain. But behold, to my great joy, there had not one soul of them fallen to the earth. Yea, and they had fought as if with the strength of God. Yea, never were men known to have fought with such miraculous strength. And with such mighty power did they fall upon the Lamanites, that they did frighten them. And for this cause did the Lamanites deliver themselves up as prisoners of war. And as we had no place for our prisoners, that we could guard them to keep them from the armies of the Lamanites. Therefore, we sent them to the land of Zarahemla, and a part of those men who were not slain of Antipas with them. And the remainder I took and joined them to my stripling Ammonites, and took our march back to the city of Judea. Chapter 57 Helaman recounts the taking of Antipara, and the surrender and later the defense of Cumani. His Ammonite striplings fight valiantly. All are wounded, but none are slain. Gid reports the slaying and the escape of the Lamanite prisoners, about 63 B.C. And now it came to pass that I received an epistle from Amaron, the king, stating that if I would deliver up those prisoners of war whom we had taken, that he would deliver up the city of Antipara unto us. But I sent an epistle unto the king, that we were sure our forces were sufficient to take the city of Antipara by our force. And by delivering up the prisoners for that city, we should suppose ourselves unwise, and that we would only deliver up our prisoners on exchange. And Amaron refused mine epistle, for he would not exchange prisoners. Therefore, we began to make preparations to go against the city of Antipara. But the people of Antipara did leave the city, and fled to their other cities, which they had possession of, to fortify them. And thus the city of Antipara fell into our hands, and thus ended the twenty and eighth year of the reign of the judges. And it came to pass that in the commencement of the twenty and ninth year, we received a supply of provisions, and also an addition to our army, from the land of Zarahemla, and from the land round about, to the number of six thousand men, besides sixty of the sons of the Ammonites who had come to join their brethren, my little band of two thousand. And now behold, we were strong. Yea, and we had also plenty of provisions brought unto us. And it came to pass that it was our desire to wage a battle with the army which was placed to protect the city Cumani. And now behold, I will show unto you that we soon accomplished our desire. Yea, with our strong force, or with a part of our strong force, we did surround by night the city Cumani, a little before they were to receive a supply of provisions. And it came to pass that we did camp round about the city for many nights. But we did sleep upon our swords, and keep guards, that the Lamanites could not come upon us by night and slay us, which they attempted many times. But as many times as they attempted this, their blood was spilt. At length their provisions did arrive, and they were about to enter the city by night. And we, instead of being Lamanites, were Nephites. Therefore, we did take them and their provisions. And notwithstanding the Lamanites being cut off from their support after this manner, they were still determined to maintain the city. Therefore, it became expedient that we should take those provisions and send them to Judea, and our prisoners to the land of Zarahemla. And it came to pass that not many days had passed away before the Lamanites began to lose all hopes of succor. Therefore, they yielded up the city unto our hands. 
and thus we had accomplished our designs in obtaining the city Cumani. But it came to pass that our prisoners were so numerous that notwithstanding the enormity of our numbers, we were obliged to employ all our force to keep them, or to put them to death. For behold, they would break out in great numbers, and would fight with stones and with clubs, or whatsoever thing they could get into their hands, insomuch that we did slay upwards of two thousand of them after they had surrendered themselves prisoners of war. Therefore, it became expedient for us that we should put an end to their lives or guard them, sword in hand, down to the land of Zarahemla. And also our provisions were not any more than sufficient for our own people, notwithstanding that which we had taken from the Lamanites. And now, in those critical circumstances, it became a very serious matter to determine concerning these prisoners of war. Nevertheless, we did resolve to send them down to the land of Zarahemla. Therefore, we selected a part of our men and gave them charge over our prisoners to go down to the land of Zarahemla. But it came to pass that on the morrow they did return. And now behold, we did not inquire of them concerning the prisoners. For behold, the Lamanites were upon us, and they returned in season to save us from falling into their hands. For behold, Amaron had sent to their support a new supply of provisions, and also a numerous army of men. And it came to pass that those men whom we sent with the prisoners did arrive in season to check them, as they were about to overpower us. But behold, my little band of two thousand and sixty fought most desperately. Yea, they were firm before the Lamanites, and did administer death unto all those who opposed them. And as the remainder of our army were about to give way before the Lamanites, behold, those two thousand and sixty were firm and undaunted. Yea, and they did obey and observe to perform every word of command with exactness. Yea, and even according to their faith it was done unto them. And I did remember the words which they said unto me that their mothers had taught them. And now behold, it was these my sons, and those men who had been selected to convey the prisoners, to whom we owe this great victory. For it was they who did beat the Lamanites. Therefore, they were driven back to the city of Manti, and we retained our city Cumani, and were not all destroyed by the sword. Nevertheless, we had suffered great loss, and it came to pass that after the Lamanites had fled, I immediately gave orders that my men who had been wounded should be taken from among the dead, and caused that their wounds should be dressed. And it came to pass that there were two hundred out of my two thousand and sixty who had fainted because of the loss of blood. Nevertheless, according to the goodness of God, and to our great astonishment, and also the joy of our whole army, there was not one soul of them who did perish. Yea, and neither was there one soul among them who had not received many wounds. And now their preservation was astonishing to our whole army. Yea, that they should be spared while there was a thousand of our brethren who were slain. And we do justly ascribe it to the miraculous power of God, because of their exceeding faith in that which they had been taught to believe that there was a just God, and whosoever did not doubt, that they should be preserved by his marvelous power. Now this was the faith of these of whom I have spoken. They are young, and their minds are firm, and they do put their trust in God continually. And now it came to pass that after we had thus taken care of our wounded men, and had buried our dead and also the dead of the Lamanites, who were many, behold, we did inquire of Gid concerning the prisoners whom they had started to go down to the land of Zarahemla with. Now Gid was the chief captain over the band who was appointed to guard them down to the land. And now, these are the words which Gid said unto me. Behold, we did start to go down to the land of Zarahemla with our prisoners. And it came to pass that we did meet the spies of our armies, who had been sent out to watch the camp of the Lamanites. And they cried unto us, saying, Behold, the armies of the Lamanites are marching towards the city of Cumani. 
and behold, they will fall upon them, yea, and will destroy our people. And it came to pass that our prisoners did hear their cries, which caused them to take courage, and they did rise up in rebellion against us. And it came to pass, because of their rebellion, we did cause that our sword should come upon them. And it came to pass that they did in a body run upon our swords, in the which the greater number of them were slain. And the remainder of them broke through and fled from us. And behold, when they had fled, and we could not overtake them, we took our march with speed towards the city Cumani. And behold, we did arrive in time that we might assist our brethren in preserving the city. And behold, we are again delivered out of the hands of our enemies. And blessed is the name of our God. For behold, it is he that has delivered us. Yea, that has done this great thing for us. Now it came to pass that when I, Helaman, had heard these words of Gid, I was filled with exceeding joy because of the goodness of God in preserving us, that we might not all perish. Yea, and I trust that the souls of them who have been slain have entered into the rest of their God. Chapter 58 Helaman, Gid, and Teomner take the city of Manti by a stratagem. The Lamanites withdraw. The sons of the people of Ammon are preserved as they stand fast in defense of their liberty and faith. About 63 through 62 B.C. And behold, now it came to pass that our next object was to obtain the city of Manti. But behold, there was no way that we could lead them out of the city by our small bands. For behold, they remembered that which we had hitherto done. Therefore, we could not decoy them away from their strongholds. And they were so much more numerous than was our army, that we durst not go forth and attack them in their strongholds. Yea, and it became expedient that we should employ our men to the maintaining those parts of the land which we had regained of our possessions. Therefore, it became expedient that we should wait that we might receive more strength from the land of Zarahemla, and also a new supply of provisions. And it came to pass that I thus did send an embassy to the governor of our land, to acquaint him concerning the affairs of our people. And it came to pass that we did wait to receive provisions and strength from the land of Zarahemla. But behold, this did profit us but little, for the Lamanites were also receiving great strength from day to day, and also many provisions. And thus were our circumstances at this period of time, and the Lamanites were sallying forth against us from time to time, resolving by stratagem to destroy us. Nevertheless, we could not come to battle with them, because of their retreats and their strongholds. And it came to pass that we did wait in these difficult circumstances for the space of many months, even until we were about to perish for the want of food. But it came to pass that we did receive food, which was guarded to us by an army of two thousand men to our assistance. And this is all the assistance which we did receive, to defend ourselves and our country from falling into the hands of our enemies, yea, to contend with an enemy which was innumerable. And now, the cause of these, our embarrassments, or the cause why they did not send more strength unto us, we knew not. Therefore we were grieved, and also filled with fear, lest by any means the judgments of God should come upon our land, to our overthrow and utter destruction. Therefore we did pour out our souls in prayer to God, that he would strengthen us and deliver us out of the hands of our enemies, yea, and also give us strength that we might retain our cities, and our lands, and our possessions, for the support of our people. Yea, and it came to pass that the Lord our God did visit us with assurances that he would deliver us. Yea, insomuch that he did speak peace to our souls, and did grant unto us great faith, and did cause us that we should hope for our deliverance in him. And we did take courage with our small force which we had received, and were fixed with a determination to conquer our enemies, and to maintain our lands, and our possessions, 
and our wives, and our children, and the cause of our liberty. And thus we did go forth with all our might against the Lamanites, who were in the city of Manti. And we did pitch our tents by the wilderness side, which was near to the city. And it came to pass that on the morrow, that when the Lamanites saw that we were in the borders by the wilderness which was near the city, that they sent out their spies round about us, that they might discover the number and the strength of our army. And it came to pass that when they saw that we were not strong, according to our numbers, and fearing that we should cut them off from their support, except they should come out to battle against us and kill us, and also supposing that they could easily destroy us with their numerous hosts. Therefore, they began to make preparations to come out against us to battle. And when we saw that they were making preparations to come out against us, behold, I caused that Gid, with a small number of men, should secrete himself in the wilderness, and also that Teomner and a small number of men should secrete themselves also in the wilderness. Now Gid and his men were on the right, and the others on the left. And when they had thus secreted themselves, behold, I remained with the remainder of my army in that same place where we had first pitched our tents against the time that the Lamanites should come out to battle. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did come out with their numerous army against us. And when they had come, and were about to fall upon us with the sword, I caused that my men, those who were with me, should retreat into the wilderness. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did follow after us with great speed, for they were exceedingly desirous to overtake us that they might slay us. Therefore, they did follow us into the wilderness. And we did pass by in the midst of Gid and Teomner, insomuch that they were not discovered by the Lamanites. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites had passed by, or when the army had passed by, Gid and Teomner did rise up from their secret places and did cut off the spies of the Lamanites, that they should not return to the city. And it came to pass that when they had cut them off, they ran to the city and fell upon the guards who were left to guard the city, insomuch that they did destroy them and did take possession of the city. Now this was done because the Lamanites did suffer their whole army save a few guards only, to be led away into the wilderness. And it came to pass that Gid and Teomner by this means had obtained possession of their strongholds. And it came to pass that we took our course, after having traveled much in the wilderness, towards the land of Zarahemla. And when the Lamanites saw that they were marching towards the land of Zarahemla, they were exceedingly afraid lest there was a plan laid to lead them on to destruction. Therefore, they began to retreat into the wilderness again, yea, even back by the same way which they had come. And behold, it was night, and they did pitch their tents. For the chief captains of the Lamanites had supposed that the Nephites were weary because of their march, and supposing that they had driven their whole army, therefore, they took no thought concerning the city of Manti. Now it came to pass that when it was night, I caused that my men should not sleep, but that they should march forward by another way towards the land of Manti. And because of this, our march in the nighttime, behold, on the morrow we were beyond the Lamanites, insomuch that we did arrive before them at the city of Manti. And thus it came to pass that by this stratagem we did take possession of the city of Manti without the shedding of blood. And it came to pass that when the armies of the Lamanites did arrive near the city and saw that we were prepared to meet them, they were astonished exceedingly and struck with great fear, insomuch that they did flee into the wilderness. Yea, and it came to pass that the armies of the Lamanites did flee out of all this quarter of the land. But behold, they have carried with them many women and children out of the land, and those cities which had been taken by the Lamanites. All of them are at this period of time in our possession, and our fathers and our women and our children are returning to their homes.
all save it be those who have been taken prisoners and carried off by the Lamanites. But behold, our armies are small to maintain so great a number of cities and so great possessions. But behold, we trust in our God who has given us victory over those lands, insomuch that we have obtained those cities and those lands which were our own. Now we do not know the cause that the government does not grant us more strength. Neither do those men who came up unto us know why we have not received greater strength. Behold, we do not know but what ye are unsuccessful, and ye have drawn away the forces into that quarter of the land. If so, we do not desire to murmur. And if it is not so, behold, we fear that there is some faction in the government, that they do not send more men to our assistance. For we know that they are more numerous than that which they have sent. But behold, it mattereth not. We trust God will deliver us, notwithstanding the weakness of our armies, yea, and deliver us out of the hands of our enemies. Behold, this is the twenty and ninth year, in the latter end, and we are in the possession of our lands. And the Lamanites have fled to the land of Nephi, and those sons of the people of Ammon, of whom I have so highly spoken, are with me in the city of Manti. And the Lord has supported them, yea, and kept them from falling by the sword, insomuch that even one soul has not been slain. But behold, they have received many wounds. Nevertheless, they stand fast in that liberty wherewith God has made them free. And they are strict to remember the Lord their God from day to day. Yea, they do observe to keep his statutes and his judgments and his commandments continually. And their faith is strong in the prophecies concerning that which is to come. And now, my beloved brother Moroni, may the Lord our God, who has redeemed us and made us free, keep you continually in his presence. Yea, and may he favor this people, even that ye may have success in obtaining the possession of all that which the Lamanites have taken from us, which was for our support. And now behold, I close mine epistle. I am Helaman, the son of Alma. Chapter 59 Moroni asks Pahoran to strengthen the forces of Helaman. The Lamanites take the city of Nephiha. Moroni is angry with the government. About 62 B.C. Now it came to pass in the thirtieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, after Moroni had received and had read Helaman's epistle, he was exceedingly rejoiced because of the welfare, yea, the exceeding success which Helaman had had in obtaining those lands which were lost. Yea, and he did make it known unto all his people in all the land round about in that part where he was, that they might rejoice also. And it came to pass that he immediately sent an epistle to Pahoran, desiring that he should cause men to be gathered together to strengthen Helaman, or the armies of Helaman, insomuch that he might with ease maintain that part of the land which he had been so miraculously prospered in regaining. And it came to pass, when Moroni had sent this epistle to the land of Zarahemla, he began again to lay a plan that he might obtain the remainder of those possessions and cities which the Lamanites had taken from them. And it came to pass that while Moroni was thus making preparations to go against the Lamanites to battle, Behold, the people of Nephiha, who were gathered together from the city of Moroni, and the city of Lehi, and the city of Morianton, were attacked by the Lamanites. Yea, even those who had been compelled to flee from the land of Manti, and from the land round about, had come over and joined the Lamanites in this part of the land, and thus being exceedingly numerous, yea, and receiving strength from day to day, by the command of Ammaron, they came forth against the people of Nephiha, and they did begin to slay them with an exceedingly great slaughter. And their armies were so numerous that the remainder of the people of Nephiha were obliged to flee before them. And they came even and joined the army of Moroni, 
And now, as Moroni had supposed that there should be men sent to the city of Nephiha, to the assistance of the people to maintain that city, and knowing that it was easier to keep the city from falling into the hands of the Lamanites than to retake it from them, he supposed that they would easily maintain that city. Therefore, he retained all his force to maintain those places which he had recovered. And now, when Moroni saw that the city of Nephi Hall was lost, he was exceedingly sorrowful, and began to doubt, because of the wickedness of the people, whether they should not fall into the hands of their brethren. Now this was the case with all his chief captains. They doubted and marveled also because of the wickedness of the people, and this because of the success of the Lamanites over them. And it came to pass that Moroni was angry with the government because of their indifference concerning the freedom of their country. Chapter 60 Moroni complains to Pahoran of the government's neglect of the armies. The Lord suffers the righteous to be slain. The Nephites must use all of their power and means to deliver themselves from their enemies. Moroni threatens to fight against the government unless help is supplied to his armies. About 62 B.C. And it came to pass that he wrote again to the governor of the land, who was Pahoran. And these are the words which he wrote, saying, Behold, I direct mine epistle to Pahoran, in the city of Zarahemla, who was the chief judge and the governor over the land, and also to all those who have been chosen by this people to govern and manage the affairs of this war. For behold, I have somewhat to say unto them by the way of condemnation. For behold, ye yourselves know that ye have been appointed to gather together men, and arm them with swords and with scimitars, and all manner of weapons of war of every kind, and send forth against the Lamanites, in whatsoever parts they should come into our land. And now behold, I say unto you that myself, and also my men, and also Helaman and his men, have suffered exceedingly great sufferings, yea, even hunger, thirst, and fatigue, and all manner of afflictions of every kind. But behold, were this all we had suffered, we would not murmur nor complain. But behold, great has been the slaughter among our people. Yea, thousands have fallen by the sword, while it might have otherwise been, if ye had rendered unto our armies sufficient strength and succor for them. Yea, great has been your neglect towards us. And now behold, we desire to know the cause of this exceedingly great neglect. Yea, we desire to know the cause of your thoughtless state. Can you think to sit upon your thrones in a state of thoughtless stupor, while your enemies are spreading the work of death around you? Yea, while they are murdering thousands of your brethren. Yea, even they who have looked up to you for protection. Yea, have placed you in a situation that ye might have succored them. Yea, ye might have sent armies unto them, to have strengthened them, and have saved thousands of them from falling by the sword. But behold, this is not all. Ye have withheld your provisions from them, insomuch that many have fought and bled out their lives because of their great desires which they had for the welfare of this people. Yea, and this they have done when they were about to perish with hunger, because of your exceedingly great neglect towards them. And now, my beloved brethren, for ye ought to be beloved, yea, and ye ought to have stirred yourselves more diligently for the welfare and the freedom of this people. But behold, ye have neglected them insomuch that the blood of thousands shall come upon your heads for vengeance. Yea, for known unto God were all their cries and all their sufferings. Behold, could ye suppose that ye could sit upon your thrones, and because of the exceeding goodness of God, ye could do nothing, and he would deliver you? Behold, if ye have supposed this, ye have supposed in vain, do ye suppose that because so many of your brethren have been killed, it is because of their wickedness, I say unto you, if ye have supposed this, ye have supposed in vain. 
For I say unto you, there are many who have fallen by the sword. And behold, it is to your condemnation, for the Lord suffereth the righteous to be slain, that his justice and judgment may come upon the wicked. Therefore, ye need not suppose that the righteous are lost because they are slain. But behold, they do enter into the rest of the Lord their God. And now behold, I say unto you, I fear exceedingly that the judgments of God will come upon this people because of their exceeding slothfulness, yea, even the slothfulness of our government, and their exceedingly great neglect towards their brethren, yea, towards those who have been slain. For were it not for the wickedness which first commenced at our head, we could have withstood our enemies, that they could have gained no power over us, yea, had it not been for the war which broke out among ourselves, yea, were it not for these kingmen, who caused so much bloodshed among ourselves, yea, at the time we were contending among ourselves, if we had united our strength as we hitherto have done, yea, had it not been for the desire of power and authority which those king men had over us, had they been true to the cause of our freedom, and united with us, and gone forth against our enemies, instead of taking up their swords against us, which was the cause of so much bloodshed among ourselves. Yea, if we had gone forth against them in the strength of the Lord, we should have dispersed our enemies, for it would have been done according to the fulfilling of his word. But behold, now the Lamanites are coming upon us, taking possession of our lands, and they are murdering our people with the sword, yea, our women and our children, and also carrying them away captive, causing them that they should suffer all manner of afflictions. And this because of the great wickedness of those who were seeking for power and authority, yea, even those kingmen. But why should I say much concerning this matter? For we know not but what ye yourselves are seeking for authority. We know not but what ye are also traitors to your country. Or is it that ye have neglected us, because ye are in the heart of our country, and ye are surrounded by security, that ye do not cause food to be sent unto us, and also men to strengthen our armies? Have ye forgotten the commandments of the Lord your God? Yea, have ye forgotten the captivity of our fathers? Have ye forgotten the many times we have been delivered out of the hands of our enemies? Or do ye suppose that the Lord will still deliver us while we sit upon our thrones and do not make use of the means which the Lord has provided for us? Yea, will ye sit in idleness while ye are surrounded with thousands of those, yea, and tens of thousands, who do also sit in idleness, while there are thousands round about in the borders of the land who are falling by the sword, yea, wounded? and bleeding, do ye suppose that God will look upon you as guiltless, while ye sit still and behold these things? Behold, I say unto you, Nay. Now I would that ye should remember that God has said that the inward vessel shall be cleansed first, and then shall the outer vessel be cleansed also. And now, except ye do repent of that which ye have done, and begin to be up and doing, and send forth food and men unto us, and also unto Helaman, that he may support those parts of our country which he has regained, and that we may also recover the remainder of our possessions in these parts. Behold, it will be expedient that we contend no more with the Lamanites until we have first cleansed our inward vessel, yea, even the great head of our government and accept ye grant mine epistle, and come out and show unto me a true spirit of freedom, and strive to strengthen and fortify our armies, and grant unto them food for their support. Behold, I will leave a part of my freemen to maintain this part of our land, and I will leave the strength and the blessings of God upon them, that none other power can operate against them and this because of their exceeding faith and their patience in their tribulations. And I will come unto you, 
And if there be any among you that has a desire for freedom, yea, if there be even a spark of freedom remaining, behold, I will stir up insurrections among you, even until those who have desires to usurp power and authority shall become extinct. Yea, behold, I do not fear your power nor your authority, but it is my God whom I fear. And it is according to his commandments that I do take my sword to defend the cause of my country. And it is because of your iniquity that we have suffered so much loss. Behold, it is time, yea, the time is now at hand, that except ye do bestir yourselves in the defense of your country and your little ones, the sword of justice doth hang over you. Yea, and it shall fall upon you and visit you even to your utter destruction. Behold, I wait for assistance from you. And except ye do administer unto our relief, behold, I come unto you, even in the land of Zarahemla, and smite you with the sword, insomuch that ye can have no more power to impede the progress of this people in the cause of our freedom. For behold, the Lord will not suffer that ye shall live and wax strong in your iniquities to destroy his righteous people. Behold, can you suppose that the Lord will spare you and come out in judgment against the Lamanites, when it is the tradition of their fathers that has caused their hatred? Yea, and it has been redoubled by those who have dissented from us, while your iniquity is for the cause of your love of glory and the vain things of the world. Ye know that ye do transgress the laws of God, and ye do know that ye do trample them under your feet. Behold, the Lord saith unto me, If those whom ye have appointed your governors do not repent of their sins and iniquities, ye shall go up to battle against them. And now behold, I, Moroni, am constrained according to the covenant which I have made to keep the commandments of my God. Therefore, I would that ye should adhere to the word of God, and send speedily unto me of your provisions and of your men, and also to Helaman. And behold, if ye will not do this, I come unto you speedily. For behold, God will not suffer that we should perish with hunger. Therefore, he will give unto us of your food, even if it must be by the sword. Now see that ye fulfill the word of God. Behold, I am Moroni, your chief captain. I seek not for power, but to pull it down. I seek not for honor of the world, but for the glory of my God, and the freedom and welfare of my country. And thus I close mine epistle. Chapter 61 Pahoran tells Moroni of the insurrection and rebellion against the government. The kingmen take Zarahemla and are in league with the Lamanites. Pahoran asks for military aid against the rebels. About 62 B.C. Behold, now it came to pass that soon after Moroni had sent his epistle unto the chief governor, he received an epistle from Pahoran, the chief governor. And these are the words which he received. I, Pahoran, who am the chief governor of this land, do send these words unto Moroni, the chief captain over the army. Behold, I say unto you, Moroni, that I do not joy in your great afflictions, yea, it grieves my soul. But behold, there are those who do joy in your afflictions, yea, insomuch that they have risen up in rebellion against me, and also those of my people who are freemen. Yea, and those who have risen up are exceedingly numerous. And it is those who have sought to take away the judgment seat from me that have been the cause of this great iniquity. For they have used great flattery, and they have led away the hearts of many people, which will be the cause of sore affliction among us. They have withheld our provisions, and have daunted our freemen that they have not come unto you. And behold, they have driven me out before them, and I have fled to the land of Gideon, with as many men as it were possible that I could get. And behold, 
I have sent a proclamation throughout this part of the land, and behold, they are flocking to us daily, to their arms, in the defense of their country and their freedom, and to avenge our wrongs. And they have come unto us, insomuch that those who have risen up in rebellion against us are set at defiance, yea, insomuch that they do fear us, and durst not come out against us to battle. They have got possession of the land, or the city of Zarahemla. They have appointed a king over them, and he hath written unto the king of the Lamanites, in the which he hath joined an alliance with him, in the which alliance he hath agreed to maintain the city of Zarahemla, which maintenance he supposeth will enable the Lamanites to conquer the remainder of the land. And he shall be placed king over this people, when they shall be conquered under the Lamanites. And now, in your epistle you have censured me. But it mattereth not. I am not angry, but do rejoice in the greatness of your heart. I, Pahoran, do not seek for power, save only to retain my judgment seat, that I may preserve the rights and the liberty of my people. My soul standeth fast in that liberty in the which God hath made us free. And now behold, we will resist wickedness even unto bloodshed. We would not shed the blood of the Lamanites if they would stay in their own land. We would not shed the blood of our brethren if they would not rise up in rebellion and take the sword against us. We would subject ourselves to the yoke of bondage if it were requisite with the justice of God, or if he should command us so to do. But behold, he doth not command us that we shall subject ourselves to our enemies, but that we should put our trust in him, and he will deliver us. Therefore, my beloved brother Moroni, let us resist evil, and whatsoever evil we cannot resist with our words, yea, such as rebellions and dissensions, let us resist them with our swords, that we may retain our freedom, that we may rejoice in the great privilege of our church and in the cause of our Redeemer and our God. Therefore, come unto me speedily with a few of your men and leave the remainder in the charge of Lehi and Teancum. Give unto them power to conduct the war in that part of the land according to the Spirit of God which is also the spirit of freedom which is in them. Behold, I have sent a few provisions unto them, that they may not perish until ye can come unto me. Gather together whatsoever force ye can upon your march hither, and we will go speedily against those dissenters, in the strength of our God, according to the faith which is in us. And we will take possession of the city of Zarahemla that we may obtain more food to send forth unto Lehi and Teancum. Yea, we will go forth against them in the strength of the Lord, and we will put an end to this great iniquity. And now, Moroni, I do joy in receiving your epistle, for I was somewhat worried concerning what we should do, whether it should be just in us to go against our brethren. But ye have said, Except they repent, the Lord hath commanded you that ye should go against them. See that ye strengthen Lehi and Teancum in the Lord. Tell them to fear not, for God will deliver them. Yea, and also all those who stand fast in that liberty wherewith God hath made them free. And now I close mine epistle to my beloved brother, Moroni. Chapter 62 Moroni marches to the aid of Pahoran in the land of Gideon. The kingmen who refuse to defend their country are put to death. Pahoran and Moroni retake Nephiha. Many Lamanites join the people of Ammon. Teancum slays Amaron and is in turn slain. The Lamanites are driven from the land and peace is established. Elaman returns to the ministry and builds up the church. About 62 through 57 B.C. And now it came to pass that when Moroni had received this epistle, his heart did take courage, and was filled with exceedingly great joy because of the faithfulness of Pahoran, that he was not also a traitor to the freedom and cause of his country. But he did also mourn exceedingly because of the iniquity of those who had driven Pahoran from the judgment seat, yea, in fine, because of those who had rebelled against their country, 
and also their God. And it came to pass that Moroni took a small number of men, according to the desire of Pahoran, and gave Lehi and Teancum command over the remainder of his army, and took his march towards the land of Gideon. And he did raise the standard of liberty in whatsoever place he did enter, and gained whatsoever force he could in all his march towards the land of Gideon. And it came to pass that thousands did flock unto his standard, and did take up their swords in the defense of their freedom, that they might not come into bondage. And thus, when Moroni had gathered together whatsoever men he could in all his march, he came to the land of Gideon, and uniting his forces with those of Pahoran, they became exceedingly strong, even stronger than the men of Pecos, who was the king of those dissenters who had driven the free men out of the land of Zarahemla, and had taken possession of the land. And it came to pass that Moroni and Pahoran went down with their armies into the land of Zarahemla, and went forth against the city, and did meet the men of Pecos, insomuch that they did come to battle. And behold, Pecos was slain, and his men were taken prisoners, and Pahoran was restored to his judgment seat, and the men of Pecos received their trial according to the law, and also those king men who had been taken and cast into prison. And they were executed according to the law. Yea, those men of Pecos and those king men, whosoever would not take up arms in the defense of their country, but would fight against it, were put to death. And thus it became expedient that this law should be strictly observed for the safety of their country. Yea, and whosoever was found denying their freedom was speedily executed according to the law. And thus ended the thirtieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Moroni and Pahoran, having restored peace to the land of Zarahemla among their own people, having inflicted death upon all those who were not true to the cause of freedom. And it came to pass in the commencement of the thirty and first year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, Moroni immediately caused that provision should be sent. And also an army of six thousand men should be sent unto Helaman to assist him in preserving that part of the land. And he also caused that an army of six thousand men with a sufficient quantity of food, should be sent to the armies of Lehi and Teancum. And it came to pass that this was done to fortify the land against the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Moroni and Pahoran, leaving a large body of men in the land of Zarahemla, took their march with a large body of men towards the land of Nephiha, being determined to overthrow the Lamanites in that city. And it came to pass that as they were marching towards the land, they took a large body of men of the Lamanites, and slew many of them, and took their provisions and their weapons of war. And it came to pass after they had taken them, they caused them to enter into a covenant that they would no more take up their weapons of war against the Nephites. And when they had entered into this covenant, they sent them to dwell with the people of Ammon, and they were in number, about four thousand who had not been slain. And it came to pass that when they had sent them away, they pursued their march towards the land of Nephiha. And it came to pass that when they had come to the city of Nephiha, they did pitch their tents in the plains of Nephiha, which is near the city of Nephiha. Now Moroni was desirous that the Lamanites should come out to battle against them upon the plains. But the Lamanites knowing of their exceedingly great courage, and beholding the greatness of their numbers. Therefore, they durst not come out against them. Therefore, they did not come to battle in that day. And when the night came, Moroni went forth in the darkness of the night, and came upon the top of the wall to spy out in what part of the city the Lamanites did camp with their army. And it came to pass that they were on the east by the entrance and they were all asleep. And now Moroni returned to his army, and caused that they should prepare in haste strong cords and ladders to be let down from the top of the wall into the inner part of the wall. And it came to pass that Moroni caused that his men should march forth, and come upon the top of the wall, 
and let themselves down into that part of the city, yea, even on the west, where the Lamanites did not camp with their armies. And it came to pass that they were all let down into the city by night, by the means of their strong cords and their ladders. Thus, when the morning came, they were all within the walls of the city. And now, when the Lamanites awoke and saw that the armies of Moroni were within the walls, they were affrighted exceedingly, insomuch that they did flee out by the pass. And now, when Moroni saw that they were fleeing before him, he did cause that his men should march forth against them, and slew many, and surrounded many others, and took them prisoners. And the remainder of them fled into the land of Moroni, which was in the borders by the seashore. Thus had Moroni and Pahoran obtained the possession of the city of Nephiha without the loss of one soul. And there were many of the Lamanites who were slain. Now it came to pass that many of the Lamanites that were prisoners were desirous to join the people of Ammon and become a free people. And it came to pass that as many as were desirous, unto them it was granted according to their desires. Therefore, all the prisoners of the Lamanites did join the people of Ammon and did begin to labor exceedingly, tilling the ground, raising all manner of grain and flocks and herds of every kind. And thus were the Nephites relieved from a great burden. Yea, insomuch that they were relieved from all the prisoners of the Lamanites. Now it came to pass that Moroni, after he had obtained possession of the city of Nephiha, having taken many prisoners, which did reduce the armies of the Lamanites exceedingly, and having regained many of the Nephites who had been taken prisoners, which did strengthen the army of Moroni exceedingly. Therefore, Moroni went forth from the land of Nephiha to the land of Lehi. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites saw that Moroni was coming against them, they were again frightened and fled before the army of Moroni. And it came to pass that Moroni and his army did pursue them from city to city until they were met by Lehi and Teancum. And the Lamanites fled from Lehi and Teancum, even down upon the borders by the seashore, until they came to the land of Moroni. And the armies of the Lamanites were all gathered together, insomuch that they were all in one body in the land of Moroni. Now Amaron, the king of the Lamanites, was also with them. And it came to pass that Moroni and Lehi and Teancum did encamp with their armies round about in the borders of the land of Moroni, insomuch that the Lamanites were encircled about in the borders by the wilderness on the south, and in the borders by the wilderness on the east. And thus they did encamp for the night. For behold, the Nephites and the Lamanites also were weary because of the greatness of the march. Therefore, they did not resolve upon any stratagem in the nighttime, save it were Teancum. For he was exceedingly angry with Amaron, insomuch that he considered that Amaron and Amalickiah his brother had been the cause of this great and lasting war between them and the Lamanites, which had been the cause of so much war and bloodshed, yea, and so much famine. And it came to pass that Teancum, in his anger, did go forth into the camp of the Lamanites, and did let himself down over the walls of the city. And he went forth with a cord from place to place, insomuch that he did find the king. And he did cast a javelin at him, which did pierce him near the heart. But behold, the king did awaken his servants before he died, insomuch that they did pursue Teancum, and slew him. Now it came to pass that when Lehi and Moroni knew that Teancum was dead, they were exceedingly sorrowful. For behold, he had been a man who had fought valiantly for his country, yea, a true friend to liberty and he had suffered very many exceedingly sore afflictions. But behold, he was dead, and had gone the way of all the earth. Now it came to pass that Moroni marched forth on the morrow, and came upon the Lamanites, insomuch that they did slay them with a great slaughter, and they did drive them out of the land, and they did flee, even that they did not return at that time against the Nephites.
And thus ended the thirty and first year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus they had had wars, and bloodsheds, and famine, and affliction, for the space of many years. And there had been murders, and contentions, and dissensions, and all manner of iniquity among the people of Nephi. Nevertheless, for the righteous' sake, yea, because of the prayers of the righteous, they were spared. But behold, because of the exceedingly great length of the war between the Nephites and the Lamanites, many had become hardened, because of the exceedingly great length of the war. And many were softened, because of their afflictions, insomuch that they did humble themselves before God, even in the depth of humility. And it came to pass that after Moroni had fortified those parts of the land which were most exposed to the Lamanites, until they were sufficiently strong, he returned to the city of Zarahemla. And also Helaman returned to the place of his inheritance. And there was once more peace established among the people of Nephi. And Moroni yielded up the command of his armies into the hands of his son, whose name was Moronihah. And he retired to his own house, that he might spend the remainder of his days in peace. And Behoran did return to his judgment seat. And Helaman did take upon him again to preach unto the people the word of God. For because of so many wars and contentions, it had become expedient that a regulation should be made again in the church. Therefore Helaman and his brethren went forth and did declare the word of God with much power unto the convincing of many people of their wickedness, which did cause them to repent of their sins, and to be baptized unto the Lord their God. And it came to pass that they did establish again the church of God throughout all the land. Yea, and regulations were made concerning the law, and their judges and their chief judges were chosen. And the people of Nephi began to prosper again in the land, and began to multiply and to wax exceedingly strong again in the land. And they began to grow exceedingly rich, but notwithstanding their riches, or their strength, or their prosperity, they were not lifted up in the pride of their eyes. Neither were they slow to remember the Lord their God, but they did humble themselves exceedingly before him. Yea, they did remember how great things the Lord had done for them, that he had delivered them from death, and from bonds, and from prisons, and from all manner of afflictions, and he had delivered them out of the hands of their enemies. And they did pray unto the Lord their God continually, insomuch that the Lord did bless them according to his word, so that they did wax strong and prosper in the land. And it came to pass that all these things were done. And Helaman died in the thirty and fifth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Chapter 63 Shiblon and later Helaman take possession of the sacred records. Many Nephites travel to the land northward. Hagoth builds ships which sail forth in the West Sea. Moronihah defeats the Lamanites in battle about 56 through 52 B.C. And it came to pass, in the commencement of the thirty and sixth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, that Shiblon took possession of those sacred things which had been delivered unto Helaman by Alma. And he was a just man, and he did walk uprightly before God. And he did observe to do good continually, to keep the commandments of the Lord his God, and also did his brother. And it came to pass that Moroni died also. And thus ended the thirty and sixth year of the reign of the judges. And it came to pass that in the thirty and seventh year of the reign of the judges, there was a large company of men, even to the amount of five thousand and four hundred men, with their wives and their children, departed out of the land of Zarahemla into the land which was northward, and it came to pass that Hagoth, he being an exceedingly curious man, therefore he went forth and built him an exceedingly large ship on the borders of the land bountiful by the land desolation, and launched it forth into the West Sea by the narrow neck which led into the land northward. 
And behold, there were many of the Nephites who did enter therein, and did sail forth with much provisions, and also many women and children. And they took their course northward. And thus ended the thirty and seventh year. And in the thirty and eighth year, this man built other ships. And the first ship did also return, and many more people did enter into it. And they also took much provisions, and set out again to the land northward. And it came to pass that they were never heard of more. And we suppose that they were drowned in the depths of the sea. And it came to pass that one other ship also did sail forth. And whither she did go, we know not. And it came to pass that in this year there were many people who went forth into the land northward. And thus ended the thirty and eighth year. And it came to pass in the thirty and ninth year of the reign of the judges, Shiblin died also. And Coriantan had gone forth to the land northward in a ship, to carry forth provisions unto the people who had gone forth into that land. Therefore, it became expedient for Shiblin to confer those sacred things before his death upon the son of Helaman, who was called Helaman, being called after the name of his father. Now behold, all those engravings which were in the possession of Helaman were written and sent forth among the children of men throughout all the land, save it were those parts which had been commanded by Alma should not go forth. Nevertheless, these things were to be kept sacred and handed down from one generation to another. Therefore, in this year, they had been conferred upon Helaman before the death of Shiblon. And it came to pass also in this year that there were some dissenters who had gone forth unto the Lamanites, and they were stirred up again to anger against the Nephites. And also, in this same year, they came down with a numerous army to war against the people of Moronihah, or against the army of Moronihah, in the which they were beaten and driven back again to their own lands, suffering great loss. And thus ended the thirty and ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus ended the account of Alma, and Helaman his son, and also Shiblon, who was his son.